them are virtual, of course, but um, it, it, it's been so awesome. My name is Paulie Hype. I am your host here on the day, and we have some amazing collegiate action set up for all of you to watch from right in the comfort of your own homes. So today we have Valorant, Rocket League, Overwatch, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, four of the biggest and best games in esports, and personally, four of my favorites. So we have some amazing schools as well here um, to showcase for you in our Southwest Invitational, of course. So these teams are going to be competing on the day. And there's some exciting stuff planned for that. So but without further ado, let's take a look at the teams that will be competing today. It's Kayla Pinson, and I am the tank at SFA. We are located in Texas and have been a club for about two and a half years. We are excited to be competing in Overwatch for the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup in the Southwest region. This past semester has been pretty good. We brought on a majority of more new people than old people for returning, and so it's been a pretty good learning experience. Uh, it, it's been it's been competitive, but it's been fun. Well, I know we have this one DPS player, his name is Ryan, who we have recruited this season, and He's a bit harsh when it comes to some stuff he talks about, but overall, I think he was a good addition to the team, and he brings um, an element of realness to the team that is kind of needed in this new competitive environment. We have this small little side room in our campus's student center. It only has about 12 stations at it, and it's not very uh, roomy, but it gets the job done, and it's more it's better than playing at home, and it allows a lot of players on the Overwatch team especially to play, f to actually play on PC, because um, some of them are unable to play from home, or don't have stable internet connection. In the house. It, it means a lot, because it's a pretty new, we were recently signed to NACE, so it's a pretty new um, esports program. I'm glad that I am able to represent it in the way I can, and I really hope that this can help put esports on the map, not only at our college, but at other colleges in Texas to help people realize that it's more than just uh, uh, simple games or games they see go mainstream. It's something that can actually go mainstream and be on the third of Specifically this weekend, we're looking forward to go against UT Arlington. Um, they're another school in Texas, and, and we're looking to try to make uh, SFA known as one of the top esports teams in Texas if we can, and so we're just looking to put our names on the map if we if it's possible. All right, so we just heard that was actually the interview that we had first. That was with Stefan F. Austin. Uh, and that was an amazing interview. He's from the Overwatch team at Austin Overwatch team. Um, but without further ado, let's update everybody on what the brackets are going to look like for our Overwatch competition to start off the day. Let's take a look at those brackets now. Okay. Kansas Wesleyan. They also have received a buy and will be moving on. Number three, we have Rebel Gaming, UNLV. Number four seat, we have Texas A&M, San Antonio, prestigious school there. Really top colleges here, ladies and gentlemen. Really excited for this Overwatch action. At number five, we have the University of North Texas. And number six was Stephen F. Austin, who we just heard the interview with their coach, uh, one of the players, excuse me, from their team, we just heard that in that past interview. So those are the six teams that are going to be rounding out the Overwatch action on the day. And let's take a look now at the Valorant teams. Name each school. So let's take a look at those. Let's pull up that bracket and see how these Valorant teams are going to shape out on the day. Really exciting game here. Loving some Valorant action, of course. <clears throat> Let's get it over there and take a look at the Valorant action. <clears throat> oh, okay. So sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Getting word from production here. Okay. So the teams for Valorant 
trying to pull up this thing here. We have Colorado State, University of Arkansas. We have Arizona State. We have Houston. We have Colorado State, University of Oklahoma, University of New Mexico, Texas State, Grand Canyon. And those will be the eight different schools that will round out our Valorant team, uh, our Valorant bracket here for the day. And without further ado, let's throw it over to a Valorant interview and hear some words from Arizona State University Valorant team. Take it away. This is Corinne. I'm the Valorant manager at Arizona State University. We are located in Arizona. We've been a club for around 10 years. We're excited to be competing in Valorant for the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup Southwest Regional. Competition has looked like a lot of ups and downs. It's kind of like a hill, in a sense, a rolling hill. Uh, we're facing a lot of challenges, but we're also overcoming those challenges every day. And our competition is going to be the same way. They're going to bring us some challenges, and we're going to have to either overcome them or we're going to have to take some falls every once in a while. So we actually did recently pick up a new player, Garrett the Kite. Uh, I was actually really excited to bring him on. Um, I We did a thing where we asked for interest of people. Uh, that wanted to play in the club, we obviously like had like get to be diamond or higher, and he just happened to be immortal three. And I remember I was looking through and I was like, I kind of want to give this guy a shot. Like, I mean, I'm not an, an expert at the game, but when I see someone high rank, I'm like, they have to be, you know, they, they're bringing something to the table. Uh, super excited to bring him on. He was very responsive when I first talked to him and very like reciprocated the energy that we needed as a team. And he's really bringing like a new light to the team, which I'm super excited for. The guys. The comms were like kind of quiet the past year. And like now I'm seeing it like being lifted up because Garrett's here and he's like always talking, always giving good communication to his teammates and he's always there for them. And he just knows what to say at the right time. And it's a really good vibe that he's bringing to the team. So the club does host like kind of like monthly lands, which we are very grateful for. We basically all get together and we like do activities and stuff. One time we did like a League of Legends tournament and they were like randomized teams and everyone got was able to like play in. Uh, we've done an Overcooked tournament. We're also doing, I think in a couple weeks we're doing a Pokemon tournament, but it's all gonna be online just because it's easier to do it online now because of COVID and stuff. But uh, that's one way that we keep together as a community. And we're also very active in our Discord. We have a round, I wanna say like 1200 members in the Discord. And I wanna say at least like 800 are active within the day. Like constantly and this includes staff and this also just includes pe uh, people from all the teams and also just like regular community people who just want to be there just because they like video games and we just always like connect and we're always talking and i've built a good group of friends just from the discord alone like i want to say like some of my good friends are from this discord our biggest rival is gcu i am super excited to play them um i know the coach and i know a couple of players on the team and a lot of the guys on uh, ASU Maroon also know a lot of the players on the team as well and it's just gonna it's a good rivalry that we have like every year it's like any all our teams we all end up facing each other because we're all in the same region and usually we join the same leagues and we're always put in the like at least for example for Valorant West we're always there I think we're super excited to play GCU just because we also know they picked up two brand new players and we know they're good so we're ready for a challenge Oh, amazing. And that was Arizona State University Valorant team. Great interview there. As we go through the different games, let's check out game number three, which is going to be Rocket League. Let's take a look at the competitors in our Southwest Invitational for some Rocket League. As we take a look here, we have number one, going to be Grand Canyon. Number two, UT Arlington. Number three, we have Arizona State. Number four, we have Utah State. At number five seed, we have Coog Sports of Houston. At the number six seed, we have Stephen F. Austin. At the seventh seed, it's Abilene Christian. And number eight seed, we have Missouri Baptiste. That's going to be your eight different schools, colleges that round out the Rocket League competition. And without further ado, let's take a look at the Rocket League interview with the Stephen F. Austin Rocket League team. Let's hear from them now. My name is Jacob Lee, and I am the coach and also player at uh, Stephen F. Austin State University. We are located in Nacogdoches, Texas, and have been a program for about two years now. We're excited to be competing in the Rocket League and Rocket League for the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. Competition for us this past semester has kind of been, it's been fun. We, we've had a lot of fun, me and my teammates, we've been uh, in the lab a lot, and we have been trying really hard to be connected and not, because uh, usually we play from home, 
And since COVID has been lax a lot recent, more recently, we've been able to be in the lab a lot more and been able to have like a lower, more coalition and be able to like fist bump and, you know, have like good morale. Because morale is a really big thing in Rocket League. If you don't have good morale, it can really get your team down. So I think competition has been very fun. Even though like we've had some losses, we've had some tough, pretty tough losses. Like it's, it's been fun. So uh, for our varsity team, we have me, which is I am currently, my current rank in Rocket League is, is SSL, which is the top rank. Uh, then we have Banji, who is around GC2, GC3. And then we have uh, Blast, who's about GC1. And then Kiffin, who's GC1. We all, uh, actually, I'm the one who really started the Rocket League team at my school. Because before we didn't have a esports organization, and I kind of just got the guys together, and then we, the club ended up founding, and we all got together. It's like, hey, why don't we start competing? So that's how it all originated. Really, it was really because of me. And I mean, I don't mean to take like all the <laughs> all the fame for that, but I, I just kind of like found people, and it was kind of cool because coming into a, such a small school, because Stephen Boston was very big. I didn't really expect to find Rocket League people there, but finding people that played it really made me feel like I wasn't alone because I kind of felt like I was. So ironically, uh, we we used to be a part of Southwest uh, Conference, South South Southland Conference, my bad, Southland Conference, uh, before we joined the Western Athletic Conference back in 2020, I think. And there was a tournament held by Mainline that was the Southland Conference Championship for Rocket League and for other uh, esports. And it was between us and Abilene Christian because there wasn't many other schools that really had Rocket League teams in the Southland Conference. And we were competing for a thousand dollars. Like this was like this was pretty important for both of the schools because I mean I, I know that Abilene Christian is very known for many things. Neither is SFA, so it was really important for both me and I. I know it was important for them as well. Uh, we ended up meeting in the finals because we were ironically on opposite sides of the bracket, and it went to game five. We had to reverse sweep them, which was crazy. Like that was an, an exciting experience for us, but uh. We've, it's always been a running joke because I'm pretty good friends with one of their players and it's, it's a running joke that like they can never, they can never beat us because we always have to prefer sweeping them. They always end up winning the first two games or the first game and we end up sweeping whatever uh, best of series it is. So it's always fun playing. Well, thank you so much. That was Jacob from Stephen F. Austin. That was a great interview. A little bit of rivalry there. Uh, I love these interview segments. They really just show a next layer of the players and schools themselves and hopefully more of those to move forward. But now let's take a look at our fourth and final game, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. These will be the eight teams that will be competing in SSBU. As they come up on the screen here, we have number one, University of Texas Austin. We have number two, UT Arlington. Number three is Arizona State. Number four, we have Colorado. Number five, we have Nevada. Number six, we have Concordia. Number seven is Dixie State in the seventh seat. And in the eighth seed, we have Abilene Christian. So without further ado, let's hear from the SSB interview with Colorado State University. Take it away. All right. All right. So... Can you give me a brief introduction of yourself, your school, and your program? My name is Brendan, and I am the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Coordinator at CSU. We are located in Colorado, and we have been club for about a year now, specifically the Smash team. We're excited to be competing in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Collegiate Esports National Championship in the Southwest Regional. Last semester, we finally got the the local backup, which is essentially an open tournament where anybody can like come and, you know, enter a traditional bracket and play for money. Uh, and the esports team specifically has been getting like we've been meeting alongside that to try to help each of our players go through their bracket runs each week, break it down, see what they did wrong, improve a lot. And like not to brag a little bit, but I think the people specifically on the esports team have improved more than like. People who haven't been, yeah. So essentially what these open brackets are is that you can get anybody to sign up. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we get about 30 to 50 people a week. And these are people from all over Fort Collins, not just CSU. And that's important because we get like some of the best skill around to train and practice with. And so essentially in a double elimination bracket, you play one-on-one -on -one and you, you get two losses before you're out of the bracket. And you just 
you if you win you keep going until the winner's decided and at the end of the day there's only one winner and i think that's super beneficial for the team because it helps you practice your mindset and your and like break it down to essentially the single match in the set of what could go wrong and you can like focus on individual things from there and improve like that Ooh, i would say this past semester which was the fall semester I I think the most interesting thing is about Yeeks. Yeeks is um is a freshman who just started this year and <laughs> he's already one of our top players. Insanely good wolf. Um knows incredibly well. Insane combo tree and insane just like plethora of characters he can play. And the thing about Yeeks too <laughs> is you will not find anybody taller than that man. He is a giant and and he is still a freshman. It's kind of insane. So he's gonna he'll beat you in bracket, and then he'll look down on you as you're walking away. Um. Well, last semester we hope we hosted them in this big uh biology room on campus, which was super nice because they had tables for everything. You could kind of like go and sit in the middle while you're kind of waiting for your match, and then I would call you up at the front, and then I would tell you where to go, and you go and play your match kind of on the sides. And people would, like, line up on the sides of the room and watch the matches, kind of walk around as you see that, uh, which is super nice. And then this semester, we're in a different room, which, like, isn't quite as big, isn't quite as nice. But the big thing with that room is that there's a projector. And so normally every week we have a stream set up, which is where everything is streamed. You know, you can watch your matches on the, from the stream later. Uh, but this semester, we have it so that the stream setup is hooked up to a projector. So everybody in the room can watch the projector. And then that just creates so incredibly hype matches where something – happens and you know the entire room pops off at once and you can see the players playing on stream freaking out and it gets so intense and it's one of my favorite things about it um my role in the club is i kind of arrange i i first of all i organize the tournaments help run them you know call the bracket matches and then for the esports team specifically i facilitate practices and decide the tryouts and kind of do all the coordination for all the leagues and things like that smash is grassroots meaning that there isn't really an organization sponsoring it or like funding everything everything that like smash has done has come from within smash all the tournaments are created by people who play the game all the pots for the tournaments um all the facilities everything is run by somebody who just does it because they love smash and i think that creates kind of like an incredibly unique experience because there's so much passion behind it. And it, I think that passion is kind of self-propagating and the fact that it's been going on for so many years and it's going to keep on going. And I think that's my favorite thing about Smash. That's a good question. Smash is obviously a one-on-one, -on -one, three-stock, you know, that kind of format. Uh, and how that has been developed for a team-based kind of competition is something called a crew battle. And essentially a crew battle is where... Each team has a set amount of players, and each of those players has a set amount of stocks. And essentially, the two teams fight each other in the, you know, the traditional 1v1, except you lose stocks. And when the team loses all of their stocks, they lose. But what makes a crew battle different is that you can kind of counterpick players and stocks. So, like, if you have a player that you know is going to, like, destroy another player, you can kind of choose to send them in against that. Or, like, choose to send them in to take this one stock, and hopefully you don't lose your stock. And then, you know, there comes in a whole other meta that develops around that. And I think that's, like, an incredibly hype format that is kind of utilized in, you know, the traditional Smash scene, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm super excited to be Keaton. This is going to be one of the biggest things of our season as a team. I know everybody on the team is looking forward to it. And honestly, I think that's because we have a shot at taking it. Uh, we've been putting in a ton of work last semester. The teams have been getting great results. Haven't heard much about the other teams. Uh, so I think I think we have a very solid shot of taking it. That was SSBU interview with Colorado State University. So that, that was fantastic stuff. And I am so excited to watch all the games today. All these amazing schools and universities. I just want to say thank you to all of you for competing in today's CECC Commissioner's Cup. Southwest Invitational, and let's just take a moment because normally, you know, they have a moment of silence, but when Paulie hypes on the desk and the host, we got to have a moment of hype. So let's get a little moment of hype going. Let's get the energy flowing. The juice is moving because we're about to kick off day one 
of the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. So without further ado, if you're watching on Esports U, it's going to be Overwatch, and you'll be uh, joined by casters Septilins and Dan Dryad. If you're watching over on Esports U2, it's going to be Valorant, and you will be taken care of by the handsome pair of Sparky Gamer Dog and Chad Lantis. So without further ado, take it away, guys. Good luck to everyone and all the participants, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the CECC Southwest Invitational. I am so happy working with everybody at Esports U once again. Of course, I am Cy, being joined by the homie Cadence Pika. Hello, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited to see some good crew league action taking place. Yes, uh, we're enthused about this, of course. Uh, we are just huge fans of the crew battle format in general. We have played in, with, against, and around so many crew battles. <laughs> just like in the years we've known each other. So Sometimes we just hang out casually and do crew battles. It's just for fun. <laughs> Literally just for fun. It, I think it's my favorite format ever. But uh, enough about us. We're going to be co um, kicking back into some more action. So first off, we're going to have uh, Abilene Christian University coming up against UT. And um, I'm excited to see how this goes down. I was doing some research on the players from UT, and they all look... Very strong. Everybody on the UT team definitely uh, seems to be very active in their local scene. They seem to mm -hmm. be competing at some of the same weeklies, and they have results like over each other. So they definitely seem yeah. to be very much on the grind. I couldn't find much for Abilene. That doesn't mean that they don't compete, but I just saw a lot of the data for UT. So we should be uh, definitely getting some fire matches one way or the other. But uh, they're going to be starting us off in just a moment uh, as soon as their players are ready. Yeah, we saw a lot of top eight placements, a lot of these players over one another a lot of first placings mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to be roy versus ness to start out uh traditionally sorties kind of give ness the business a little bit but you know he's got the frame data to contest them so we'll see how it goes yeah it's, it's one of those things where roy could be a little bit less scary than the other sorties not because he doesn't have disjoints but he's just he's so much more in your face like i feel like a lucina is like optimally trying to like space you out even without yeah. the tipper because martha's not worth um, but even without like the need of the tipper, Roy's just kind of in your face anyway. Right. Um, Ooh, going for the dare immediately, just Jesus trying to Christ. kill this man right off the bat. Right. And then Rusky Nerd is just like, yo, I'm not going to hold that. Now, Rusky was one of the players I was looking at, and some pretty impressive results. Third out of 73 at Smashmania 33. First out of 71 at a. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. He's dead. Stock. That's actually a stock. That's the first stock. Yeah. And that's one of those knowledge checks. Like, well, honestly, it's hard to even call it a knowledge check because even when you know what Ness is going to do, you still have to like live with it. It's just a checkmate situation if your recovery is not the best. Yeah. Okay. We uh we see Yeet throwing some some haymakers out there, yeah. kind of trying to find some early F smashes, but uh, Rusky Nerd being pretty comfortable in the pressure. And... This is a scrappy match, honestly. Like 30 seconds in, and we we're down a stock and a half. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nearly getting a jab lock, too. Also, if anyone is not familiar with how a crew battle format works, so these teams, there are three players with three stocks each. And as soon as the first match here concludes, whoever wins is going to go into that next match with the same number of stocks. So the down smash again here, probably. Oh, no, going for a PK fire instead. All right, being a little bit more cautious, trying to give him a little bit of room with the ledge and trying to trap him. Nothing coming out of it just yet, but Rusky is definitely playing a more uh, patient game. And smash attack. Yeah, Rusky's playing a really patient game, but just kind of like waiting to see what Yeet's going to do. And... Yeet has not failed to not press a button. So Rusky just kind of gets in his face and waits and then just gets like these really high damage punishes. Yeah, Rusky's going for a lot of PK fires here. A lot of tech chase situations with them. Just throwing them off stage and looking for the smash tech checkmate option again. Yeah, Yeet definitely needs to make sure he takes a stock because this format is going to be best of one. So mm -hmm. all of those stocks are even more vital. Uh, previously, we had done best of three, but I think this is a bigger series. So we're doing best of one for right now, which is, you know, of course, totally fine. But uh, going down three stocks at the start of a crew battle is a horrible way oh, to get yeah. things going. And again, it looked like the talent pool from UT was pretty evenly spread out. They're all around this. It looks like, at least from the outside, they're all around the same skill level as Rusky. This is a but... bad spot. We might die here. Ooh! Yeah. Three smash attacks at ledge, three stocks. <laughs> yeah, every single time. Uh, Rusky's going to take that first game with a quick three stock under, I think it was like, what, two, two and a half minutes maybe? Let me check. Not a long match at all. Not a long match. And, yeah, that's going to send Abilene into a pretty severe deficit. So now they have, you know, six stocks to nine. Um, they're coming in un 
unscathed and they have a lot of figuring out to do. Yeah, from I mean, here. all that percent on Rusky doesn't matter at all because in a crew battle, if you don't take the stock, it does not matter. It literally doesn't matter. Yeah. So um ideally looking around, maybe they have somebody to counterpick. Um, although Roy is a solid counterpick. I but. was gonna say, I think that it's already a sortie versus Ness. How much harder can you CP him at that point? Yeah. True. Yeah, you kind of got a good point. But who knows? Um, and again, I couldn't find that much data on the Abilene team, so I'm sure they could have some um, some sleepers in there. Um, who knows? But right now it's looking really good for UT Austin. Um, just look at some of the other people where I did get data. Uh, on their team, they have another player named Studs, who's a Yoshi main, and I see some results where he's gotten third out of 26 at an esports cave. He's gotten first out of 32 at a Smash Mania. Uh, too big is a Steve player, and he had like a laundry list of results, both online and offline. Um, so, yeah, the UT team definitely grinds this game hard. Oh yeah. Um, I saw some of them were competing in like Coinbox as well, which is just a, a fairly recent uh, online series. Catch me there soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I don't know what Abilene's gonna throw at them. It's just gonna kind of be a mystery for us as well as you the viewer but hey hopefully they figure something out because it's looking real good for ut right now right they're definitely going to have to think this one out because you don't want to be an entire three stocks down to start this out yeah now i also don't know if that meant that this was like their captain or anything either because typically the most common method is that you have like your first person just kind of goes just to see what they can do somebody in the middle to kind of do a little bit of cleanup and then the anchor to like Mm -hmm. you know essentially handle everything that's remaining in the battle right you're ace in the whole player yeah 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 you're ace in the whole player and i really don't know what the abilene team looks like so i don't know their thinking i don't know if that was their some people do start with their anchor first i've seen i've seen um in the e- esports U battles i've seen so far i've seen teams go down to their anchor and their anchor kind of like brings it back and then they just mm-hmm. start with their anchor and their anchor just like sweeps the entire other team uh, I was saying earlier off mic, I've seen like three different situations where one player just like nine stocks the entire other crew. Right. Um, I'm not putting that out there right yeah, now. I really don't want to see that. Let's try and keep it competitive here. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not putting that out there right now, but I'm just, I have seen it three separate times so far. Mm-hmm. Um, UT's had to do that. Who knows? But uh, hopefully their other player joins us in just a moment. Um, and yeah, we can see how they're going from there. Jake, how you feeling today? Pretty solid. I'm definitely excited for a day of crew battles, you know what I mean? It's yeah. It's going to be a lot of variety in characters, skill level. be interesting to see. Yeah, that is a, that is kind of the cool thing about crew battles is, like, if you watch, like, top 16 of a tournament, there'll probably be, like, a decent amount of character overlap. But crews, people generally try to do a pretty good job of making their teams as diverse as possible. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot more about counterpicking in specific matchups rather than tier lists because, you know, some mid-tier characters beat up on some top tiers mm-hmm. so we could see like you were mentioning a steve player come out and just be a complete matchup check people usually have no clue what's going on versus steve right even if you have a clue what's going on versus steve you really have no clue what's going on versus steve. right exactly that character is just that is one of the most unique top tiers i think i've ever seen mm-hmm. like people would say oh you know all the snakes play different or all the diddies play different or all the whatevers even sometimes occasionally the robs but steve is just in such a weird tier he just has such an incalculable amount of options and things he can yeah. do that like if you watch jake and you watch like yanni for example they're doing completely different things they might be getting the same results but like they're, they're neutrals, both gonna draw an l on you before they beat you though. they're both gonna draw an l or something worse <laughs> than an l on the screen but yeah so and ut does have a steve player but mm-hmm. who knows um it looks like they are selecting their second character, though, so we should be getting into this in just a moment. Yeah. Of course, shout-outs to our sponsors, and of course, shout-out to Polly uh, for putting all this together for us once again. We love Polly. Follow his Twitter as well. I think it's, I believe it's at Polly Hype. Polly Hype. It's Polly Hype, yep, you know. Shout-outs to the homie there. Okay, so if there ever is a CP for Ness, Palutena is one. Yeah. Invincible moves all over the place, dash attack and back air, huge disjoints. It's going to be very easy to catch nesting air, or nest air dodging to the ledge with down tilt, who mm-hmm. is active for 30 years. So I bet we see that a lot. The main thing I can see here is, uh, why is he killing? Oh, he's he didn't lose a yeah, stock. Yeah, he didn't lose a stock. So I don't hey, know we can't communicate with him, but does he know he didn't lose a stock? Okay, they're they're just, just, maybe they're going to a different stage. Maybe it's tags or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the main thing here is that Rusky definitely has very much a wait and see play style, at least from the one game we saw. Um, 
So if Abilene's Palutena player goes like super ham and is like really aggressive, that could be bad for her. If she is comfortable playing that same wait and see game and just like countering his aerials with almost exclusively just back air mm-hmm. and like Nair if you get the read. At the same time, though, uh, he was going for a lot of PK fires, Rusky was. And mm-hmm. if you're just all up in the Nest player's face, then that startup isn't going to get to happen. You're not going to get those PK fires out. You can really just oppress Ness in this matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anytime you ever see a top eight with like a whole bunch of like lower high tier, upper mid tier characters, and there's not a Palutena, the ongoing joke on Twitter is that's why. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> people will say this region needs a Palu. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they'll do. Like, I saw something with three Croms the other day and no Palu. I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, Big surprise. The Palu player wanted to go to Battlefield. Maybe we'll see a lot of edge cancels taking place here. Good luck landing if you're the Ness. Yeah, for sure. But uh, once again, Rusky starting off strong. Uh, ooh. I like uh, that pressure he did with the uh, neutral B there. Yeah, she definitely seems to be uh, kind of struggling to react to Ness's buttons right now. Ooh, uh-oh. This is looking like a clean stock from Rusky so far. Yeah, only been All tagged right. by a single back air so far. All right. Oh, not getting the follow-up from that throw either. That's unfortunate because that's uh, it's not necessarily that's a bunch of damage, but like forcing Ness off stage and like trying to force him to air dodge through that extremely active follow mm-hmm. down tilt, you can get stocks way sooner than like mm-hmm. people would expect. Yeah, Rusky's just really committed to just throwing out these PK fires right now and just yeah. like controlling that space. And he's up 60%, so like I get it. Of course. Um the timer doesn't matter much in crew battles, of course, so oh, eventually have to No go punish in. on that charge smash attack, unfortunate there. Uh-oh, that's a stock. A little poor DI there. I think they could have survived, but that's okay. Let's try and get something going now. Yeah, I think they could have... I was going to say the same thing. I think they could have lived that as well. It looks like the pal is a little late to their reactions here. But, of course, it's Wi-Fi, so that's going to have a lot to do with it. Uh-oh, this is looking clean. Ooh. Oh, no. Almost another checkmate position right there. Yeah, just nearly able to make it back to the ledge. Um, the right angle of that down smash might have just like outright killed, even at the 50s. She just wouldn't have been able to like work back in time. Mm-hmm. Definitely seems like their reactions are a little bit delayed, whether that's player or, you know, in the hands of Nintendo. Mm-hmm. I can't really call it, but it's definitely working out for Rescue, who's still yet to lose a stock and already oh, taking... Here we go again. Oh. These smash attacks are fatal right now. Yeah, five stocks already taken off the Abilene team. This is looking like an incredible uphill battle. And again, this is best of one, yeah, uh, at least on the winner side. There is a loser's bracket. So if Abilene goes down, you know, they're not out of the bracket just yet. They have more matches to do. We're just streaming the winner's matches. But uh, yeah, Rusky is really We're a control. Running them over right now. Yeah. All these PK fires. It's like uh, Palutena doesn't really have the best out of shield. So once he's in on her, he can really just keep pressing buttons. Mm-hmm. And the best you can hope for is like Nair. And even then the startup's not great on that. Right. You go for another smash attack here, of course. Oh, there and it Eclipse. is. Going to survive, though. Yeah. Not going to kill just yet. She's got one last chance of this. She has to take at least one yeah. stock off. We got to get Rusky stocks out of here somehow. Yeah. Because um, a nine stock comeback, I have seen it, but it is extremely hard. All right. Back, back throw. throw. Not- this is a good situation. Looking for a down tilt ledge, okay? Oh, went for the up smash instead. That is a two frame option still. It is, it is. Oh, oh, that is unfortunate. I like the attempt going for the counter. I like, I respect the read, but Ness is in the whole yo yo pretty long, and even a counter as active as Palutena's wasn't yeah. going to cut the mustard right there. I think his idea was to land where the hitbox was still active, but he just ended up behind the Ness player there, mm-hmm. so that was kind of unfortunate. He had the right idea for sure. Yeah. And if any counter was going to do it, it would be that one. But uh, Rusky is taking six stocks. So yeah. mathematically, he is the guaranteed VIP of his team, no matter what happens at this point. Looking incredibly strong right now. Yeah. So Abilene's got one last player to send in. And uh, I'm going to keep it a bean. Everybody else on UT, the results look good for them too. Um, even if they are, even if their final player is, you know, able to overcome Rusky, uh, they're going to have to deal with a really experienced Steve slash Pac-Man. They're going to have to fight out a Yoshi. And Yoshi in a crew battle can be really annoying. Just Extremely generally toxic characters to fight, honestly. <laughs> honestly, yes. Um, I noticed over the years of this game that of all 946,000 characters that are in a Smash Ultimate, all of them have something that annoys me. <laughs> so, like, the balance team did a pretty good job. Um Actually, this is probably still the most balanced Smash game, period. Like, obviously, there's, like, the dis- a discernible top three, you know, in some combination of, like, Aegis, Joker, and Pika, which I think is the most common top three. Mm-hmm. But Even this then, is... people will still debate that, though. You know, there's no solidified yeah. top three, top five, top ten. People not even top one. 
20 characters that represent top 10. Yeah, it's it's tough, but Yoshi's definitely a character that I mean, one, they're really heavy. He's not actually lacking on kill power. His edge guard game is pretty solid. His combo game is good. I think he's honestly a pretty decent character. I think he's just underrepresented. Mm-hmm. Like you'll see like maybe like Suarez or somebody pop off, but like there's just not that many Yoshis. Yeah, is the um, Yoshi player even gonna get to the play though, or is the Rusky just gonna clean everything up? I don't know. Yeah, I can't really call it. Um, we've tried Palu, we've tried Roy. Okay, Bayonetta. Yeah, Bayonetta. I have a traditionally Bayonetta beats Ness, and Bayo is also a pretty good Wi Fi character, mm-hmm. has good out of shield options. I believe Ubby's frame four, so you're not going to be able to harass her shield nearly as hard as you could Palutena. Yeah, and then Rusky does tend to throw out a lot of like lingering like smash attacks or even like PK fire. So, uh, of course, Witch Time could come through and really uh, mess things up for them as well. So, um, Let's see if there's something they can come up with here. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but, uh, you know, here's open. You got nine stocks to go. Small Battlefield, traditionally a good stage for Bayo, too. It's good to land on the platforms with her aerial side views. Okay, good punish here. All right, Let's double with nice. Get. Okay, all right. This Bayo definitely knows what's, knows what's going on. 42% off that. It's a pretty good start. Oh, yeah. And um, using uh, the downwards angled uh, ABK is really good. Ness can't necessarily like respond to it out of shield just because she bounces so high from it. And it has a pretty decent amount of shield stun. So. Yeah, chasing Rusky in the air pretty well. Ooh, That's a good wait, no! no! I was just no! about to say, I was literally just about to say, you have to be careful with that game because the hitbox is still active. They ran straight into it, and that is just a destructive slow mo torpedo. Oh man, that's got to be so discouraging. Uh, yeah. You really got the right read, but that is not the move you want to witch time. Literally, a situation where you're in advantage and you end up dying for it. It's so tragic. Yeah, and it, it was a choice because, like, you got it, but like, I mean, it's pretty active normally in slow mo. That thing, it's just a truck, exactly. it's just a moving truck. And then also hitting it at like the worst possible. That's just really, really unfortunate stuff. But Ethro should do it. Not no. quite yet. Gonna set up the edge guard though. Okay, opting to just ledge trap here, go for some back airs. I don't blame them really playing safe after the thing that just happened. <laughs> right, exactly. Because they were in the driver's seat. Like they definitely had yeah. uh, the percent lead at the time. Definitely can't let Ness come back to stage for free every time that you're going to have to jump out there eventually and contest it. Yeah, and she has all the tools and so many more. Just one neutral. All right, hello, it's good to be back, ready for some more crew action here. I think we have UT Arlington versus Dixie State, right? That's right, Dixie State versus UT Arlington. So um, we did see some fire matches from um, the other UT team, University of Texas. Uh, I forget. Um, so I don't know, Texas is uh, just a pretty strong area in general. I think I was looking at... Um, I think I was looking at the uh, UT and... I think some of their players were playing down at like a local called Freaks, which is like 
a pretty popular local uh like cheeks is down there a lot a lot of pretty prominent texas players like in that area mm-hmm. um so hey you know it could be pretty good but either way uh welcome back of course this is Sai and cadence we're gonna be hopping back into this in a moment we did not have we had a little bit of a break we were gonna have um nevada play but they uh unfortunately something happened they weren't able to make it so we had like a little bit of a lull there but we are back we're gonna get them some more crew battles just to recap we did start this off with one player taking nine stocks so it was the one seed versus the eight seed so it was a little bit to be expected but man was that a dominant performance yeah yeah for sure it was and then of course um well, this is the third match in the bracket, so it should be a little closer seeding wise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I think this is the two seed versus seven seed. Good, is it two and seven? Before it was four and five, and Nevada dropped out. Yep, you're right. The two seed versus the seven seed. So we could be we could experience something else once again. Um, could be another blowout. Perhaps it'll be a bit closer this time, though. Yeah, who knows? But UT Arlington is coming in as the second seed. Um, so they're definitely going to have some dominant players. And the thing about these teams, like, I mean, obviously, if you're seated well, you're going to do well. But, like, none of these teams that are seated well are seated well because, like, they know, like, one guy. It's, like, a full team of people that all, like, grind and compete against each other that mm-hmm. are all, like, probably worthy of being the anchor on some of the other teams. And then, you know, the power balance is normally pretty, like, well divided. So, right. who knows? Um, not sure who we're going to get in the first match. I think it's, uh, it's a men man named Zer- Zarek. Zarek the Min Min versus uh, Curry the Incineroar. So we do have a little bit of a disparity in tiers here. Uh, <laughs> More than a little bit, I would yeah, say. Min Min going to be quite a top tier character. Incineroar, not exactly known for being the best in the game, but can pull out some random upsets, can be a matchup check. A lot of people don't really know what's going on. But he is very slow, prone to getting zoned. And who else likes to zone? Min Min. Yeah. Now, for what is worth, the way that she zones, all of her strongest zoning tools would all get eaten by revenge. So, like, if he's really on the ball, he can make this really scary for Min Min because, like, it gets to a point where it's like, all right, cool, you're at 85, 90, Min Min's barely been touched, but you revenge, like, two megawatt moves. And I just wonder if he'll ever get close enough to take advantage of the revenge, though, because if you keep revenging and you're still... 30 yards away does it matter if you're in center or yeah it really doesn't um he's just gonna have to play a really really smart grounded game because off stage that just has to be a night a oh, nightmare yeah. honestly Mimmin doesn't even have to put her feet off the ground to edge guard you he literally stays on the stage exactly like his his offstage game is or his i shouldn't say his offstage game but his recovery is already pretty lackluster as it is but ram ram kind of wrecks most of the recoveries in the entire cast so i don't know but who knows i mean he could also be a god i mean we've seen sky j mm-hmm. uh make incredible waves, beat a ton of top players with Incineroar. So, like, Magister in the early lifespan of Ultimate. I don't really think he needs as much anymore, but he was definitely a noteworthy player when he did. Oh, yeah. So, like, I've seen Min Min pop off. But just the on-paper matchup is... Or not Min Min. I've seen Incineroar pop off. The on-paper matchup is way in Zeger's favor. But who cares? We're going to get into it right now. Mm-hmm. So, I think the positioning on that was already pretty good. Staying not only far away, but also below the platform. Um, Min Min's like to do that where, like, they have the top of them covered on either PS2 or SBF and they just kind of like hide under the platform and just kind of create like a hallway of like smash attacks and tilts. And it's just really hard for most of the, most of the like higher tier characters to deal with. So yeah, Incineroar's definitely got his work cut out. Looking pretty even so far, honestly, I even say in the Incineroar's favor and um, the Incineroar is representing the two seed college here and the Min Min is going to be the seven seed. So, Mm. you know, perhaps it is a little bit more skilled on the other end. We'll see though. Who knows? Well, pff, that seven seed ain't playing like a seven seed right now. This is right. still relatively even. Um, and I will say that this is Inter has really good movement. Like this is this is tough to navigate for a lot of people. He's already big. He's already kind of slow. You know his. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. See, there's that too. You can go to revenge, but then Nimmin can just charge a little bit longer and it won't matter at all. Yeah, you definitely have to make sure you're like on the ball with that read. Um, same thing we saw happen earlier, actually, with uh, with Ness and Politana's uh, mm-hmm. counter. Because, like, yeah, her counter is super active and it's good, but, like, it's literally a smash tag. They can just control when they release it. So, you know, if you throw it out too early, then you're just eating, like, a massive punish. Right. I think you can see, too, that Curry isn't really pushing that many buttons. Like, he's just moving around a lot, not actually doing any moves because they're pretty slow frame data-wise. He's going to want to make sure that they're going to connect, like, that up smash right there. He had the roll read scouted out. 
Well, at least stocks even so far. And again, we saw a nine stock last time. So I'm very happy <laughs> to see that uh, no matter what happens here, there's at least, you know, nobody getting, you know, wiped clean. Yeah, not a complete wash this time. And it's like, you know, you see the Min Min player is able to <gasps> push every button in her kit, but Incineroar really has to pick his moments here. Yeah. And this is this is the exact zone we've been talking about, just like fully committed to staying away. She's got Megawatt at the ready, which means if she's right, she's getting bigger punishes like we just saw. Mm -hmm. uh, if he gets a revenge, this could be really strong, but yeah. Yeah, Incineroar has definitely got to make the most out of moments like that, getting a grab into a juggle here. Now, one thing that's left on, Incineroar's up air is phenomenally oh, good. Very like, good move, yeah. In it's, a vacuum, it's one of the better ones of the game, honestly. Incineroar's frame data actually isn't even that bad either. It's just how dang slow he is. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Have a great recovery, though, and really can't even contest that without losing your own stock. That's super unfortunate. Yeah, Curry really overextended there, and he was in a pretty solid position. I don't even know if uh, Zarek was ready to, like, DI that appropriately, because that was a pretty rough angle, but mm -hmm. that SD is definitely going to cost him, especially in a crew battle. Best of one crew battle, no less, so yeah, this is Curry's final counts. stop. It's not like you can make the comeback, and it still matters as much because you lost that stock regardless. Ooh, uh -oh, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this is a really bad spot. I don't even know if he put his feet back on the ground. Ram oh, Ram's here. Jump. Yeah, this is brutal. Oh, wow, that Strong dash attack. dash attack. Really connecting out of nowhere, catching her mid air, trying to kill with that forward air. Mm -hmm. uh, extremely important stuff. Again, as a reminder, uh, Curry is playing for the two seed team, so um, they could be starting this off with a deficit. And um, we're already getting, like, I would say light upset territory from Zarek just based on what we saw earlier in the mm -hmm. day. And I think the Dixie was the team that had the roster of five as well, too. So they're going to have a little bit more counter pick options in their pocket. Ooh, another SD. You hate to see somebody throw those stocks away in any format, but especially here in Cruise. I mean, it's kind of forced, too, though, when Min Min is covering the space that you want to recover. True. Yeah. I really don't know what Incineroar's game plan is around Ram Ram, or really 80 other characters' game plan is around Ram Ram, right. but Incineroar is especially susceptible to uh, dropping those stocks early there. But that all right. like a pretty brutal matchup all around. I'm curious to see who they'll throw in for the counter pick here. Yeah, I'm curious about that, too. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of matchups better for it than uh, Incineroar. But, yeah, so uh, UT is actually down a stock and, and a little bit of a – at least a start of an upset. Uh, mm -hmm. I also think Min Min is a really strong character for Cruz. Like, she's so polarizing, like, her matchup spread, like, who she can just, like, completely body bag. Oh, yeah. Like, like certain matchups, there just almost is no counterplay. Incineroar mm -hmm. is – Maybe one of those matchups. Yeah, I mean, you don't really hear seven, three, eight, two tossed around a lot in this game, but Min Min might have a couple of those. She, matchups. yeah, she really is the one. And of course, um, sort of a meme, but sort of not. She is uh, even harder to deal with on Wi-Fi. It takes a lot of like um, careful reaction time to kind of like weave through uh, her moves as it is offline with that little bit of delay, or occasionally a lot of delay. We're hoping a little bit of delay uh, that comes added into smash online it's so much tougher mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like the next person we're getting in is davy and they're going to be a pokemon trainer user. a pokemon so trainer okay squirtle is going to be able to get in and really oppress you with that frame that uh the good edge guards too on a tethered character so i imagine we'll see a lot of squirtle probably not so much charizard he's probably going to get zoned very hard like what we just saw mm -hmm. really i don't have an idea of how the Ivysaur Min Min matchup would go, but Ivysaur might, might kind of get clapped up too. Because that like, was my thought. Because like up close, yeah, Ivysaur is really careful, but thank God his ground speed is like mediocre. Right. Um, Plus, but, Ivysaur known for relying on a handful of moves. You know, Razor Leaf, Nair, not Vinyl. Oh, yeah, like Razor Leaf is going to be your main ranged option, and I'm pretty sure that she's just going to punch straight through that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no concern. I mean, if she was extremely pressed she could re reflect it but like that's a pretty big commitment for maybe 10 percent if you're right i don't know she definitely doesn't need to but she is coming in with just one stock starting off with squirtle is i mean pokemon trainer is just such a good crew battle character too yeah you get to just choose which matchup you're going into at any time and honestly taking one stock isn't going to be that tall of an order i don't think they're the main thing is going to be can they hang on to all three of their stocks before getting the one yeah 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 that's really going to be important back out if so and it, it's one of those things where, like, let's say Squirtle ended up off stage. Of course, you can switch around. You have, like, a decent chance of coming back. But Ram Ram, if it ends up to where they don't – let's say – let's theoretically say Squirtle gets knocked off stage. They switch to Ivysaur, and they're still trying to Vine Whip and find their way back. As soon as it's Charizard, they are dead. Mm -hmm. Dead, did it, dead, 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 dead. 
trying to come back and get some I think that Ivysaur will have the best time navigating off stage, probably because with the tether, you're able to kind of hang at that angle where Min Min can't really reach with their arms. Mm -hmm. So I imagine we'll see a lot of switching to Ivysaur in the off stage situations. But who knows? I don't know. I mean, we can, we can only you know we can only predict the future right. so hard. UTA saying, please, please enter, enter the, the ring. ring. <laughs> please enter the ring. I feel less intimate. Step into my way. I feel like I do not know the name of any Kirby character that is not in Smash Ultimate. Like there's like I know that little uh, chef somebody. Oh wait. Oh. Yeah, yo, 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 he's in the ring. Okay, okay. Yo, chill, yo, chill. Ain't nothing to spectate. Now let's hope that um the Mimin player does not forget to SD their stocks at the start. Yeah, let's really hope because, um, I mean, I don't know if they've been in the crew battle format before. I mean, some of these people have been in like multiple seasons of this, so who knows? But I definitely tunnel vision sometimes and I'm like, get it on. All right, they remember. <laughs> right, you just go straight to it. Now, how are they in the same room here? No, so I don't know how they're going to know when to start. I don't know either. I guess just kind of immediately. Kinda... All right, go for it. Well, there it is, yeah. And normally it'd be fine. You could see, you could react to somebody running across the screen, but right. Midman specifically doesn't have to do that. The crowd will chant, you know, three, two, one, but there is no crowd for this. Right. All right. Plant of the Ledge, a little bit of a risky game. I would say that is the number one place that uh, Squirtle could uh, steal that stock early. Yeah, he switched to Ivysaur very early. Oof. Typically, you wait until mid percent to see that. So I'm kind of surprised, but maybe we'll see why. Well, so far, pretty well. Yeah, doing a really good job of zone breaking, which is yeah. I'm gonna main... guess that that dash attack out of the side B was a misinput. It was probably supposed to be something else. Ooh, Ooh. that's still caught. God, yeah. Ivysaur's hitboxes are just they're crimes. That's the yeah. best way to put it. Honestly. I think Ivysaur F smash can actually cover every option in the ledge, depending on how you space. And the sliding F tilt just gonna right and right in and even it back up. I do like that they are more than comfortable switching around. Because some people, like, they'll mostly commit to one into, like, a certain mm -hmm. percent window and then just go for it. But we did literally see all three Pokemon work together to take that one single That was, like, stock. a 30-second game. Mm -hmm. He used all three characters during it. Really knew when to just pick his moments for Charizard. Literally slid right into the DMs there. Yeah, yeah. You literally pick Charizard to throw out one two-kill moves max and yep. you just go back to somebody else. Um, and honestly, kudos to the Bravery because, like, of the three, that's definitely the toughest matchup. And she wasn't even in a percent window where, like you had to try to figure something out to kill. She was still like kind of upper mid percents, barely high percents. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess he was just really confident and yeah. didn't want to waste any time. Give the Min, Min a chance to get his own stocks off. You know what I mean? Really just kept it even quick, painless, simple. Yeah. It looked like he adapted really quickly because like the speed at which he was able to zone break with Ivysaur and not even Squirtle. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's, I think Squirtle was out for like maybe 15 seconds. And then he was like, okay, I think I figured out the patterns and just, went really aggressive with Ivysaur specifically. Right. And uh, I that's don't even really want to say that he's not comfortable with Squirtle because maybe he just knew that Ivysaur and Charizard were the play in that matchup. But now it looks like we're going to get a Pithra against PT. And of course, we see that matchup in Cincinnati a lot with Doorstop and Jin. That's true. And yeah, we, we do. saw Doorstop play MK and Leo in this matchup, I believe. He really likes Squirtle against Sorties, So Yes, he loves it. I mean, it's one of those things where like, of course, Aegis is, you know, terrifying, arguably top one in the game, depending on who you talk to. I think top one in the game. Um, but, you know, her recovery is very exploitable. Honestly, as the meta is continuing, we're finding more and more ways to, like, really punish her recovery. And Squirtle just has a... Actually, all three of the Pokemon have fantastic uh -huh. options for uh, stuffing out her recovery. If I had to guess, he's going to spend most of the time on Squirtle in this matchup, mainly because of the ledge trapping with down tilt. Oh, okay, actually switching to get out of his advantage there, though. Man, it's, it's like there's, some, there's something. He's built different. He's like, it's been 20 seconds. I have to switch. Yeah, like, so we can see a grand total of six matchups at any given time <laughs> in this game, right? Now. That's true. In a crew battle with so right. many more matchups already. So. Oh, no. Okay. Ooh. Scary. Oh, <gasps> but that move is just active for 30 years. Oh my gosh. Really unfortunate stock being dropped by the UTA squad, especially considering uh I know it's town and city, but Charizard is still yeah, that was one Charizard of the heavier characters like in the game. 90%. You typically don't see him dropping stocks that early at all. No. So all right. Um again, Dixie is uh really not acting like the seeds <laughs> that we're yeah. supposed to look at them as. They are they are here to scrap. I think that uh Gilla, I think Davey is going to want to get back to Squirtle as soon as he can. Here. Yeah. Can we talk about how he's only at like 50% in like a minute and some change here? Like he's barely really been touched. Oh, oh my God. He went for it. 
I respect that, but he might die. Ooh. Very clean edge guard there. He lined up that down air perfectly. My gosh. Did you did you say you caught the uh what is this player's name? Davy? Uh, yeah, Davy is backwards, I think. Gila's the pither. Oh, Gila's the pither? Okay, Gila Davies might be cracked because I'm seeing some phenomenal play. Only 68% between all three Pokemon. That is such a feat in itself. Yeah, Gila is definitely looking very well versed in this matchup. Uh, really, just able to take advantage of the slower frame data that Charizard and Ivy have. Mm -hmm. I feel like we really have seen Squirtle the least, and honestly, um, at ninety-seven percent, there's plenty of things you can do right now. Like you don't have to rely on like a big gamble, like we're seeing with Charizard. We're seeing a lot of like you know we've seen some kind of risky up bees out of Shield. We've seen some risky yeah. side bees, but like uh, he's just playing so patiently like none of these big gambles are really coming to fruition for him oh flame breath gonna cause problems there oh able to cover the roll that was nice all right that was a very important stock you definitely don't want to go down three stocks when there's only you know very I think there's interesting only there. he switched straight from charizard back to ivy didn't even want to bother with squirtle i think he might be thinking because he's close to kill percent but i really do think squirtle is the best of the three against mm -hmm. pithro because even if squirtle doesn't successfully get the edge guard he can switch into two pokemon that would definitely get the edge guard you know mm -hmm. and just neutral is much easier Squirtle, I think. Ooh, that pirate side B is making it really tough for him. Ivysaur likes to get comfortable and like throw out those, you know, razor leaves and just kind of zone for a little bit. Uh -oh. But Pyra oh, just Jamma? ignores all that. That could have been making some good call outs here. He put that back air where uh Gila was jumping at, but just didn't quite land. Yeah, let's see if Davy can find a way to maybe take the second stock and get this deficit a little bit closer. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. And as soon as I finish that sentence, gonna get that sweet spot F tilt once again. That might be <laughs> might be his signature move. Sliding F tilt giving Davy a lot of mileage for sure. Definitely a kill percent here. Probably not going to want to switch off of Charizard at this point because that's where you're going to get most of your money from now. Yeah, it's mandatory for your weight, but also he can take oh, a stock that's so a quickly. Stock. That's a stock. Okay, yeah. not too bad of a position though. Like it started off looking kind of rough for Davy, but he cleaned it back up. You know, only being one stock down is not terrible. We'll probably see this next person come in and just clean up this stock. Yeah, Later yeah. And, that, and, that, and that's not too bad. I mean, they definitely. Uh, he was definitely playing really well. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was very aware of like Davy's punish ideas too, like especially with that up tilt and to just up B immediately. Like, he snuffed out that if he wanted to grab him or try to fair him, I think up B would have beat both of those, right? Mm -hmm. So, up is a very fast out of shield option, very, 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 very big hitbox. So, mm -hmm. you can just kind of throw that thing out a little haphazardly. Yeah, Pyra gets to ooh, she really, <laughs> she really gets to remind everybody that you pay for her. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Pokemon Trainer plays like a character you paid for, but, you know, Pyra is, she is that girl. Full 599. She, she is that girl. She's swinging that cash around, <laughs> like, literally. Um, so then the question becomes, who do you send in to counterpick Pithra, though? Because she really does not have that many bad matchups. No, and Pokemon Trainer is a great choice to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Character-wise, I'm not sure. But I could definitely see... Um, I can definitely see him taking one or two more before he's out of here too, because he, I think he took the first two without, before he died once. Like he was uh -huh. almost in a position like three stock. I mean, the second stock, the Charizard player kind of gave up a little bit for going for that flare blitz. Mm -hmm. I respect going for it because it was a tech chase situation. Gila just stood up at the perfect time to avoid it. And then he lined up that down air perfectly. Okay. So Alomar is honestly a pretty smart choice. I think I yeah. approve of that. Um, small characters I know kind of give Pithro a little bit harder of a time. You have to space your moves a little bit more carefully. And Alomar definitely knows how to rack up damage extremely quickly. Yeah. I want to say that Pyra would actually have to like kind of respect having Pikmin latched onto her, but can Mithra just activate foresight for um, it? I don't think I've ever seen it play out. We're probably going to find out, though. I'm really curious because I don't, I don't, I actually don't think I've ever seen this matchup. It's very rare that I get to say that, you know, three years is a change in the game. But well, uh, let's think about it. I mean, Spargo and DeBuzz probably play each other a lot, right? Do we ever really see DeBuzz go Alomar in this matchup? No, we don't. I don't really think so. Like, Pithra doesn't scare me. It's just if Mithra can, like, Pithra, if Pyra doesn't really scare me, but if Mithra can just, like, activate foresight whenever she wants just for, mm -hmm. because of Olimar's neutral, that could be tough. Olimar's playing it very safe right now, though. Not even getting anywhere near the sword, just able to use those Pikmin to throw them. Oh, yeah. Barely been touched. In a really good spot right now. Oh, using the whistle armor there to get through that. That was scary. He could definitely do a lot of damage to recovery, too. I mean, Olimar's dare is already really good. If he catches a Mithra side B, it's pretty much going to be guaranteed. Yeah, oh, that was perfect. That was a perfect line. There's up. the dare. Oh, that's it. 
even though it didn't quite spike, that is still it. Yeah, that purple Pikmin sent at the perfect angle. There was just no chance for them to mm -hmm. recover. The chart was flowing right there. You <laughs> yeah. And then once they got to go for that side B, you just line up the down air. It literally didn't even spike, but it did not matter. I think it's actually really funny that when we first saw the trailer, my reaction and probably a lot of other people's reaction to seeing that side B was like, what in the name of DLC is this move? But right. now we see Mithra side B to the ledge. We're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, Here's my free like kill. He actually wound up being her worst move. Basically. It's literally her worst move. That's so funny. All right. Well, stocks are even. and um, Yeah, they've been doing a good job of keeping it manageable on both sides. Definitely not the blowout we saw before. No, this is much, much closer. Um, and also, Olimar, that's an interesting character to even think about counterpicking. Because, like, I feel like his matchup spread against the top tiers is probably not bad. Pretty good in general. Like, yeah, he just gets counterpicked by random characters. He's in that Diddy tier, mm -hmm. where, like, the character is very clearly good. But, like, there's just randos that just, like, kind of body bag. But they're characters you just don't see. And it can be another matchup check, too, where you just, like you said, really won't run into Olimar's very often. So mm -hmm. people don't tend to have an idea of how to deal with them. Olimar Diddy. I don't know that I'm confident in this counter pick. I'm gonna guess this is still pretty Alamore favor, but you don't send a DDD player in lightly. So maybe no, he's a god. And we did just see a DDD player get an upset over Leon today in a glitch. Actually, yeah. I just ended up finishing that clip. I think this it was a DDD D3 is Will. Poo. His name is Poo. Yeah. Poo. Oh, I thought you. Oh, Poo. But I thought you were just being rude. I'm like, bro, it's been like three <laughs> seconds. Like this DDD sucks. It's like he just got off the platform. <laughs> like let him cook. Oh, okay, using the inhale. I kind of wonder, I'm just really curious to know how inhale interacts with the Pikmin when they're being thrown. It seems like Whoa. Ordo is not going to be a good move in this matchup, though, since you can just kind of throw out Pikmin to hit it away. Yeah, you can throw out Pikmin, or you can throw out any aerial. Like, Olimar's pretty small. I mean, as long as your timing is tight. That time is, like, a little bit he early. He is doing the inhale to spit the Pikmin back out of uh, Army Ollie, but I don't know that it's working perfectly. Say Army Ali. I, think Army I, Ali. I swear I think I've heard that name before. I'm pretty sure I have on Twitter. Um, but uh, either way, relatively even so far. This is definitely an, an interesting neutral. This is one of the most unique neutrals I think I've seen in this game. That hit from behind and still killed. Oh yeah, it's a it's a huge hammer. It it's it's got a lot of disjoints. It's got a lot more disjoints than people. Think. Wait, did he just absorb an up smash? Uh, did he? Yeah, that was an up smash. Does he eat Olimar's smash attacks? There's no way. I assumed it would just be the B buttons. I I need a replay. Yeah, run that back. I really need a replay. But either way, um, so this is the final match of this crew battle, the final three socks for these two teams. And um, again, Dixie is really looking to make this upset. The issue I can see it being is that Alomar doesn't really have kill confirms per se. He kind of just looks for those stray hits with purple, you know, mm -hmm. and a big boy like DDD is not going to die to that for quite a while. I feel like inhale is messing up a lot of his neutral because like yeah one of the common punishes you're like oh you know maybe i'll just run in and try to get a grab or something but like how you know oh okay got the red to take it off i was gonna say red and white's not really what you want to see at kill percent but it worked out hey at 200 you gotta you got something oh whoa big dash I'm gonna get punished super hard not getting a fully optimal combo but definitely gonna send a reminder however i can see that being pretty disastrous just because dash tag is already scary but the fact that it's active hitbox would be extended on all the pikmin that olimar has around him that's going to be weird to deal with. Yeah, I think I'm being proven wrong, honestly, because I'm seeing a lot of ghosts of Pikmin fly right now. <laughs> yeah. I expected them to stick around a lot longer in this matchup, but DDD's putting in some work. I think the plan here is, like, you know he's going to inhale them, but once he's inhaling them and, like, kind of swallowing them, he is susceptible to a punish. So I think he's just got to figure out when they're going to be spit out and when they're going to be, like, swallowed. Yeah, it looks like Army Ali has decided to just be a little bit more disciplined and just commit harder to camping and there. so far it's working he's got himself a little bit of a lead here mm -hmm. now we see he's just throwing the pikmin at the gordo again this is some clean dd play though i will say that it really is yeah the gordo angles can be so disruptive to your neutral because it's like you want to dash in and out but you can't when it's just bouncing right in front of your face all right well armoring ollie takes that stock um gonna put their team back in the lead and also this is gonna decide the crew battle from here he cannot afford one more big mistake uh ddd still is a pretty heavy character he died a little early there but generally i mean we saw a survivability earlier he was somewhere in the 200s when he finally died so not out of this just yet and then of course on the inverse olimar is extremely light so he's gonna have to keep this really careful uh neutral at play and by really careful neutral i mean seven side b's in a row apparently well and then that happened okay okay well cleaning it up making it very even once again
I think Army Ali just got a little bit comfortable. Like, yeah, he's getting a lot of mileage from the side B, but um, that up smash is doing a lot of damage to him. And again, his smash that smash attack isn't very slow. It's going to extend on the Pikmin. He's just got to like really respect that range. Got a pretty good lead coming out from Army Ali right now. He's content to let his Pikmin die and just keep pulling more over. Mm -hmm. I think he's kind of looking for purples too, because the purples are wow. Never mind. I was gonna say the purples are kind of living on a little bit longer. Oh lord, Gordo doing a lot of work right there. This is a mess. It's really, it's really hard to commentate this actually. Right. Oh, big dash attack again. He's just going for these haymaker dash attacks. Oh! <laughs> Incredibly deep for that down air. Oh, that was fire. What an incredible way to end out that set. Army Ollie going way down to the blast zone for that down air. Um, he definitely wasn't ready for it. I wasn't been ready for that. No, but. you typically don't see DD to get edge guarded in that fashion. It's so hard to mess with five jumps plus an armor LP. But he right. said, I know where you're going to be. I know when you're going to be there. I know what to do about it. Here it is. Yeah, that was a phenomenal read. And again, I'm pretty sure, I'm 85% sure I know Army Ollie from Twitter. Um, but that was definitely a Twitter clip. So if they yeah. weren't Twitter fans before, put that up there, pin that clip. Right. That was a fantastic way to uh, take that round. So, um, yeah, congratulations to uh, UT after all. Dixie put up an incredible fight. It was really close. It was down to the very last stock. But UT being the two seed, they definitely proved their two seed right there. And they, they're going to continue on in the winter semis. But, man, really, really good play from both teams. So next we're going to have, I'm wondering... Haven't been told yet. Um, the next team should. Yes, so we're going to have Arizona State and Concordia. Uh, we are going to cut to a short break while we get those uh, lobbies together. But yeah, we'll be back for more action in just a few. The bracket, yet they are the closest that we have been feeling up to this point. And Kentucky, I mean, it'd be great to see them walk through. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again for some crew battle action here. We've got Concordia versus Arizona State started out. And it looks like it's going to be Kamlua, the Pithra, versus Icona, the Wolf. Okay, Pithra, Wolf. Now, that is a matchup I feel like I should see theoretically. That seems like two, like, you know, top tiers or very high tiers. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I haven't seen that much. Yeah, um, I feel like Wolf has fallen out of the meta a little bit, weirdly in favor of even other species like Falco starting to make a rise with players like Tilde, but I mean, Wolf's tops rep have all pretty much dropped him. There's Moxie, she's playing Wolf right Moxie, now. Moxie, I think Jackal is still Wolf, mm -hmm. I think. Those are like the only top Wolves that I can think of. I mean, at the beginning of the game, you know, MK Leo was playing Wolf, mm -hmm. Kamek had a really strong Wolf, and they both just kind of stopped using him. Yeah, I think Tilde... I think Light and Tilde are the two spaces getting the best results, and it's like a pretty big gap in between those two and then like mm -hmm. the next spacey, you know? But either way, it's one of the first top tier versus top tier matchups we've seen the whole time. It's true. It's true, actually. Yeah, every everything's been like, oh, I expect to see a mid mid, and then look at that Incineroar. Like it's mm -hmm. been right, you know, or even just now, you know, the uh, the nail biter of a final match we just had was between Omar and DDD. So yeah, that DDD put up a heck of a fight too. He, he was, was really good. Board. I think if that was, like, a traditional, like, three out of five set, it definitely would have been, like, a... I think it still would have been pretty down to the wire because his neutral was really solid against a neutral that it shouldn't have been against. Yeah. I mean, that's just another testament to the crew battle format, too, right? You have to make your adaptations much quicker because you're not getting a second game or a third game even to make them. You know, it all has to happen within those three stocks or even sometimes one stock if you're coming in with just enough stock. Yeah. But yeah, Pyro Wolf. This could be pretty interesting. I could definitely see. Um, I mean, they could definitely. Wolf could definitely, like, destroy Mither off Yeah, it can go either way. I think. Um, I remember seeing Jackal play this matchup actually and get some very clean edge guards. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Laser just interrupts Mithra's side B super well, and then you come in with that down air like we saw. It's going to be game. Yeah. Even F tilt, if that trades with side B, that's mm -hmm. still, like, a stop, you know? Yeah, Wolf has a lot of options at ledge between down smash, F tilt, laser, even if it's not spaced perfectly. But yeah, we're going to be getting into this in just a moment. Looks like both players are in the arena. It should happen any second now. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, uh, I mean, <laughs> we get some more great smash. 
Um, and it's definitely been – so the first one, a little bit of a blowout from what we saw. And then the second one, the two and the seven seed, extremely close down to the wire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is meeting the even more in the middle. Six. Yeah, the three and the six. So um, on paper, it should be pretty close. Like we've – who knows? It doesn't necessarily have to like follow that script. But, uh, yeah, if you're curious, Arizona State is the three seed to uh, Concordia six seed. But I think the team seeds don't really matter that much as we just yeah. saw. Interestingly, Concordia already put their entire lineup in here in the order they plan to use them in. They put their characters, the order, everything. So typically, there's a lot more on-the-fly counterpicking, so I'll be curious to see if they actually stick with that script. All right, here we go. Starting out on Stadium. Generally, you're going to see most matches start on Stadium. Is that tag in? Is that Russian? Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have no idea what that tag is. Can't really figure it out. Not going to okay. take the time. Kind of interesting switching to Pyro at 0%. Oh, you my typically Lord. don't see that. Yeah. Kind of the stock taker and Mithra's the neutral player. Yeah. And considering Wolf's like oh. very, very heavy, um, you know, fall speed, Mithra could do a lot. But right now we're just seeing a lot of these uh, kind of unnecessary uh, Haymaker Pyro yeah. smash attacks. Like, Can't granted. Is letting them rip. Ooh, going to get that reflected back at him. It's a lot of damage. Yeah. Now, granted, if one of those connects, sure, you really might get a stock at 46%, but Whoa. Wolf's neutral. Wow. Um, Some bold options coming out from Cam Lua here. He is just swinging for the fences at all times. Just running in with dash attack. Another F smash here. Yeah. Cam- oh, oh okay. and there it is. That's it actually, off. you're going to die to that. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> you know, yeah, at first I'm like, what's really the best strategy for throwing out these like huge punishable moves, especially when you have a character that doesn't what need to. What are these landing options? He's just coming down with all of me. This is crazy. They're working. I mean, I'm he, taking notes. He's choosing violence. Right. Now, I think if you have a little bit of the traditional pirate game, wow, that didn't kill a 201. Mithra has shown up for about three seconds this set. And is he going to come back off the angel platform and switch back to pirate? Oh, he did. This is a pirate player. Yes, this is a pirate player for sure. Mithra is just to recover, yeah. if that. Or get out of disadvantage sometimes if you need an air dodge. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> okay. I am clearly the fool for questioning these aggressive options because they are working very well right now. They're not even getting punished. I don't think I've seen a tilt yet. No. I think it has been neutral B. I think it has been B moves and smash attacks. This I... is the most aggressive pirate player I've ever seen. Just running in with dash attacks, smash attacks at all times. Is he going to land with Uppy again? Okay, what for a dare, which is more than something. He is going to land with oh. Uppy again. What the heck? And it's working. I... I'm shook. Consider me shook. Oh, my Lord. Dare into immediate Another smash. land with Uppy. Okay, it's actually getting punished this time. I get that it's a gigantic hitbox, hmm. but, man, this is a wild option. Yeah, it really is. Icon is just going to have to, like, respect that uh, Kamala is, like, committed to these big hitboxes and just make those punishes. And we're seeing a little bit more micro spacing. We're seeing them kind of, like, dash in and out and just kind of wait. Which is what you do, which is why you don't commit to these yeah. hashtags like this. It's already even. But still, two stocks down, no matter what happens, like, Camel was planned, it worked. Oh, I think Cam Lua's control stick is stuck perpetually in a forward direction. <laughs> yeah, definitely holding forward. Look at this. He just holds forward, and it's working. It worked well. I mean, that's, hey, that's three stocks already taken off the other team. I mean, it works. I'm so shook. This is the most aggressive player I've ever seen. Yeah, I have... That is more Pyro Smash attacks than I've seen. Like, we'll play doubles with your Pyro for hours. And that is more <laughs> that one game. Uh, I wow. mean, he literally just cast Mithra off to the side. People generally consider Mithra to be the better character between the two. And you just switch. For, to like, Pyro a lot of stars. reasons. But he does not care. Not at all. In Soviet Russia, Pyro is the top tier, I guess. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> clearly, we had it backwards. Uh, well, all right. Well. I don't know what to say to that. I mean, sometimes, you, sometimes you're playing a solid neutral. Sometimes your show gets broken at forty. Oh, our! <laughs> I just realized the homie Alex was making a face. He was watching that match in the background. <laughs> I think he's just yeah, as shook as we, we are. are. All shook right now. We'll just. <laughs> all right, viewers. The key to success with Pyra is just. That tilt stick, mumbo jumbo, throw it away. Have no regard for your own life. Land with up B every single time. Uh, when your feet are on the ground, you should be smash attacking. You I should am definitely be smash taking attacking. notes. Yeah, you should be smash attacking. Because either you're killing at 40 or you're taking 10. That's what it looked like. Those The punishes to those were so light. 
Like, I think I think if he got, like, a really solid combo from one of those big aggressive options, he would have, like, slowed down and be like, all right, you know, maybe rethink this. But if you're getting just a random dash attack and you're risking, you know, a stock for that, I would keep smash attacking too. I'm wondering if that's just, like, a play that way against Wolf because he doesn't have super hard punish options or if phasers are just never set to stun with this guy, you know? Maybe this person has, like, a traumatic uh, fear of wolves and saw one and decided that I need to kill it as soon as I right. can. Kill it immediately. Maybe it was like when you see a spider, you're like, oh my God, kill with fire. And Pyra's like, I will. Like, that's that's what that match looked like to me. Um, Maybe just every player in Concordia has this amount of confidence. Because like I said earlier, they did literally submit the order they're planning to send their players out in already. So maybe everyone's just going to come in and swing for the fences the whole time. Team full of chads, honestly, yes. you ask me. Team like, Chad. They said... This is who we're playing. We're not going to make any changes. Smash attacks only. Square up. Okay, it looks like we've got uh, Bowser19 playing Lucina. That's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now they're going to have to throw away those first two socks. Now, here's the thing. This exact play style, outside of counter, might not be that bad against Lucina. If she gets one counter... It's death, though. For a second, Lucina tried to SD, and then they are like, wait a second, no, I have three stocks. No, 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 no. So I think this is the first time we've seen Kalos come out the whole day. That is true, yeah. All right, it looks like they're ready. Uh, they don't have a way to communicate, but just the... Uh... So just go for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, he's playing Mitha. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see if a stock is lost at 34. Oh, my God. I think I would have jumped into that. I think that would have hit me. I just want to see someone force him to play a different play style like does he just swing the entire time okay yes i mean i mean really not that far off we're seeing a lot of swinging on the other side too honestly at this point and we did see a shield break last game too because of all the pressure from these crazy moves that are coming out Mm -hmm. so we'll see how much the shield gets pressured again but it looks like back air is just gonna take it yeah lucina's back air is so outrageously good like i know we have the top tiers and we think about how they are and we have some other characters that have like uh a more you could say gimmicky neutral and like steve for example but lucina is just all around just so solid there's not really any like discernible weaknesses to her game plan and even when you see something as explosive as pyra uh sometimes you just got to be reminded like a really solid neutral character can just kind of dominate too yeah i mean especially if the other player is just swinging the whole time you can really outspace take your time Mm -hmm. cam lua's shield button was mainly just for out of shield options you know (laughs) not ever (laughs) trying to actually shield any move i will say this that's the first time i've seen pyra land with up b only because like you're already trying to get down to the ground and then up b sends you up even higher and in a set angle so if someone is ready you'll get a hard punish but i think if you keep yeah. that in your pocketbook is like a one-time only trick it could be solid that's what i'm thinking i get it is like a every so often option because it is a quick get you back down with a gigantic hitbox that's going to kill super early mm-hmm. but man can you get punished hard if they're ready for it yeah i mean if that got countered if any of those moves got countered i don't think there's a percent even on Callus. Mm-hmm. You you're exploding yeah for free counter pirate f smash oh you lose two socks for that. Like, yeah. Like, you literally just, you automatically come in. You know, lose the whole crew battle if you get that move counter. <laughs> right, right. But uh, once again, these seeds are a lot closer together. So uh, I would expect this to be a little closer of a crew battle. Even mm-hmm. though we were uh, really accenting how many F smashes we saw from uh, Pyra. Um, we saw a lot from the senior too. Yeah, know? so if Concordia is sticking to the script here, the next player coming in is going to be Melting Taco. And they're a Jigglypuff. Ooh. And it looks like it is indeed Jigglypuff. Uh, not known to be great against sorties. No. Especially a big old no sour spot sword like Lucina's. But we'll see how this works out for him. Now, uh, refresh me. Was uh, was it Concordia that was the one that like locked their team order in? Or was that Arizona Yes, State? Concordia submitted their team before anything. All right. Well, they're committed to this buff. Even yeah. in, the, in a situation like this with like a hard counter fit. Especially considering... Shield break is super guaranteed and something you can honestly use in neutral. But so far, it's relatively even. Only 5% separating them. Great F smash on the air dodge read, too. Yeah, the edge guarding is going to be the one thing that Jigglypuff really has in mm-hmm. this matchup. Because you can't really float in on Lucina. She's just going to swat you away. 
Yeah, but like one runoff neutral air, like one drop zone, anything from Jigglypuff, and it, I think it's a stock guarantee. Oh, actually getting a lot of mileage off the Jigglypuff F Smash, kind of pulling it back a little bit, using it to almost outspace uh, Lucina somehow. Shout out to Chad Cordia because they are they are committed to these match attacks, man. These are the boldest group of players I've ever seen. Man, I would have a drink with them. <laughs> like that's all right. I'm gonna say. They look. Well, they, they probably party pretty well. Of course, if you're going to go out in edge guard with a character like Jigs, you got to be confident for those techs. Yeah, you really do. Are we going to see a reversal? No. There we go. Beautiful uh, drop zone back here, though. Going to come in, even the socks up. That could have been really rough. If she got tagged with anything with no jump down there, she definitely would have died. Like, percent would not matter. Yeah. I mean, Jigglypuff has a lot of aerial mobility out there and, of course, a lot of jumps, but she is kind of a sitting duck when she's pushed off stage. She has to just jump and make her way back. Can't really fight back because you're just going to get swatted away with a big sword. Yeah, the main thing I expected, uh, as you were saying, was for like Bowser nineteen to like really force um, Jigglypuff to like play Lucina's game. Oh, just big punish on that! Full oh, charge up smash, just about not quite a wow. Stop, I honestly did not expect Jigglypuff to live. Mm. Like I recognize that she can. I just at any percent a fully charged smash deck, I just assume would do it. Yeah, uh, this Jigglypuff is playing like weirdly grounded. You typically don't see that a lot from Jigs. They tend mm. to just stay in the air. But yeah, I mean, that's very clearly what the character is designed for. And as I was saying, that drop zone there, that's that's yep. a guaranteed stock against yeah. Lucina. One tap off stage is really all it takes. And uh, what else is working in... Oh, that's going to even things up, though. What was working in Melting Taco's favor is that, like, before that interaction right there, the only stock he lost was, like, from a reversal. And if you keep playing that game, Jigglypuff's going to come out on top nine times out of ten, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm very... Very impressed with this Jigglypuff so far. This is not an easy matchup by any stretch of the imagination, and they're really making it work. I think maybe playing grounded is so different than how we expect the matchup right. to go, but maybe that's what's doing it. A scary situation here. It's like oh, that's percent it. really doesn't matter. Not quite. Oh, wow. The Magnet has really came through. Perfect recovery. Oh, I don't know how the heck that clinked. Oh, man. Bowser 19... Um, honestly, he's got stage control. Pushing the advantage here. You yeah. don't want to go. Oh, that's oh, a flub. Oh, I thought that uh, I, there was an opportunity right there to kill with a uh, down smash because he was uh, forced to grab the ledge without invincibility. Oh, but no another attack. reversal aerial is actually going to do it, and Bowser Right Team is going to take that over Melting Taco. That's going to be hard to react to on Wi Fi. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a very small window to hit that tech button with the input delay compounded from Wi Fi. I definitely get why they missed that. Good for Bowser 19 to know to go for that option, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that move is... It's hard to react to that in any situation, but it's so much mm -hmm. harder now. But, yeah. Even though my advice is to play that offstage game against Lucina when you're puffed just because, like, you should be winning it, but Bowser yeah. 19 came out ahead twice. <laughs> I mean, that was the situation where the Jigs did get the stock in the past because they went for that drop zone there, mm -hmm. and it worked mm -hmm. that time. Bowser 19 was just able to slightly navigate around it and get the stock of their own from it. All right, well, here we are, four socks to three. Once again, another really close match uh, between these two crews. I kind of, I'm really curious to see who we're going to have come in next. Uh, I feel like Lucina is another character where, like, no matter who you throw at her, her bad matchup spread is pretty small. Mm -hmm. And she's got a pretty solid dog in the fight against most of the cast, honestly. Yeah, I would expect the Lucina to at least be able to get a stock off here before mm -hmm. they lose their own. But who knows? And again, we're seeing a lot of unique matchups. Like, this is my first time seeing Jigglypuff Lucina. Today was my first day seeing Olimar Dedede. Like, and I've been casting since since release. Like, the yeah. day the game came out, I was doing commentary for it. So, but sometimes you get a game this big, you just you see some stuff you're not expected to see. It looks like Concordia's third person in their lineup is Lando the Crom. Okay. And one thing I know about Crom, his up B is very counterable. And Lucina oh, has a counter, so you yeah. may see some cheesy stocks come out via that. Yeah, he's going to have to be really, really careful um, trying to make it back to the ledge. I think if he plays a really solid grounding game, it just... I don't know. This would go either way. It's probably a relatively even matchup, but uh, his recovery is the main thing that I think... I mean, it's normally Krom's weakness anyway, but Lucina's just like extra good at exploiting yeah. it. Yeah, like, if you force Krom to up B at a bad spacing and you get that counter, it's just going to be a stock. Yeah. But yeah, let's see what Lando's got going on. Lando probably got like the ethereal power up since Lavish did make it into Summit due to right. that Shout last minute spirit bomb, which will be unpacked later because that was a crazy amount of money. 
maybe money laundering. Who knows? But either way, um, shout outs to the Crom Nation. They don't really get a whole lot of representation at majors outside of like I want to say Mr. R if he feels like it, and a handful of others. So, yeah. You know. Good I'd be out of shield there from Orlando. Good 26.4 off of a single move. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Ooh, that Bad spot nice. to be in here. Air dodge is already burned. He's dead. That's it. Yeah, and the thing about it is, like, he didn't even have to risk the Oh, oh but he makes it! Excuse me for underestimating Mr. Crown's recovery. Yeah, I think what it is is, like, you know, his jump isn't that scary, and neither is the up B, but his aerial drift is really good. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, no, if you space it right, the counter is not a problem, but if you're ever so slightly above the ledge, you're going to get taken out by that. Mm. And maybe that is why Bowser 19 has just been going for the uh, more aggressive uh, drop zone forward air. I mean, it definitely works. There's no downside yeah. to it. He knows to just push him off stage here. Uh-oh. Oh, See Max what I mean? He was it. above the ledge there. Fair. He's Fair dead. again. Uh, yep. Yeah, he's, he's dead. dead. Wow. One stock remaining on Concordia. That's really unfortunate for Lando. Coming as their anchor and losing two stocks, both due to Crom's kind of lackluster know. recovery. Getting put in a bad spot again here. Oh, my Lord. Bowser 19 going off right now, actually. Right. It's tough when your anchor is such an exploitable character like yeah. Conley, you know, because he can really just <gasps> roll all over you, but then on the other end, this can happen where you just keep getting oh, pushed off stage. My oh. God. Bowser 19 coming through. MVP of the squad taking one, two, three, four, or five seed. And I think that's that seven? is the six seed over the three seed. Am I right? Uh, yeah, let's double check real quick. Concordia. Um, uh, no, no. Arizona State was the. Arizona State was the three seed, but yeah. I mean, shout out to Bowser 19, came through. Um, did he fight everybody? Did he take six or seven? Uh, I think Bowser 19 did fight everybody. He fought everybody. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's an MVP. I mean, seven yeah. sucks. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you see a crew and they just have like a really strong anchor and they just come through and just sweep stuff. But he cleaned it up. I really do think it was unfortunate to have to go Crom into Lucino. The counter did a lot of work. The mm -hmm. forward airs, like, She's just a very good edge guard, or always has been, you know. So I mean, we literally just saw her successfully edge guarding Puff. So right. like, we see her edge guarding somebody she's never supposed to edge guard, and then we see her edge guarding somebody that she's really good at edge guarding innately. So mm -hmm. that clearly had those edge guards down pat too. So, yeah, yeah. Good stuff to Bowser nineteen, honestly. All right. Well, that match actually sends us into semis. So we officially have our top four winner side now. We've got. Uh, coming up, we've got University of Texas Austin versus Colorado, then followed by um, the next match we're going to have University of Texas Arlington versus uh, Arizona State. But in the meantime, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with more CECC action. Stay tuned. Do not move a muscle. Welcome back once again to some more CECC Smash action. Right now, we are in our semifinals matches. We have our final four teams left. We have UT Austin, and we have Colorado coming up earlier. Uh, UT Austin put on an incredible showing. Took nine stocks with only their first player. Literally just with Rusky, and he is, again, the person that they're putting on point, Rusky Cord, and it actually looks like it's going to be the same matchup that he started in last time, too, because Lieutenant L is going to be a Roy player. So, once again, we're seeing Ness Roy to start it out, and we know that Rusky is pretty versed in that matchup. Yeah, we saw Rusky fight an entire other team made of only Ness's arguably worst matches mm -hmm. and just body bag. Colorado could be built different. We don't know. We actually didn't get to see them play earlier because uh, Nevada, I think, wasn't able to make it, so... Who knows? But, um, yeah, I mean, UT definitely is the one seed, and they're acting like it so far. So right. uh, I'm excited to see what Colorado has to throw at Rusky Nerd, though. This time it'll be the one seed versus the four instead of one versus eight. So perhaps it'll be a closer showing. But mm -hmm. like I said, we have already seen Rusky mess people up in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, he was absolutely never – letting Roy get back to the stage. Mm -hmm. and um, It was down smash and up smash at ledge for every single stock, and I'm sure we're going to see him go for that again here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's hop into this. So, Rusky Nerd, um, strong player on the strongest team versus L Lieutenant L. Okay, I was, looking yeah. at the, <laughs> I was looking at the Discord tag. I was like, how do I pronounce? And I, I realized it was Discord. Right. All right, so let's get into this winner semis. Again, this is also best of one. The winner this is going to go on into finals to play on the Sunday uh, block around the same time, I want to say like uh, 4 o'clock Mountain Time. So, yeah, let's see what's going to be different. Let's see if uh, Colorado... You know, Colorado had the opportunity to watch that match as well, too. So maybe they got a little bit of data, but who knows? Mm -hmm. 
And he did immediately just run up and get a nice grab there. Yeah. I don't think we saw many people go for a grab straight up on Ruski before. He was looking for a lot of out-of-shield options, and if you don't give them that stimuli of hitting their shield, then they're not going to press the button. You know. Now, Ruski, once again, just kind of staying in the mid-range and playing a wait-and-see game. Like We're seeing Lieutenant L sort of overextend a little bit. If that was a bait, that was really smart. I can't call that. Uh, um, oh, he oh, got around it. Got really lucky. And then died immediately anyway. Ruski has now taken 10 stocks in one day. <laughs> He gets a lot of mileage off his smash attacks and his PK fires. Like, he'll stand there and make you think, like, come hit me right here. Mm -hmm. And then he'll just dash back a little bit and PK fire and people run straight into it. And, of course, that's such a good combo starter for Ness. Gets so much damage. Now, okay. Lieutenant L's putting on a lot of pressure, making it really hard for Rusky to get back to the stage. Uh, of course, we did see the Jair. It wasn't enough to kill just yet, but it puts Rusky on notice. Rusky, yeah. however, trying to, like, kind of reverse the situation. I think if he got a magnet there, there, he could have taken yet another stock. So, mm -hmm. uh... L's got to be careful. And look at the damage he's oh, eating from no. these PK fires. He is doing a good job navigating around the yo-yo at ledge, though. And that's getting him a lot more mileage than we saw last time. He might actually even get a stock off of Rusky. Mm -hmm. Getting close to that time. I think he's really going to have to start grabbing him, though. Because, like, the previous team, they weren't really grabbing him. And Lieutenant L has gotten mileage that's out of his it. grabs. I think he just needs to commit to it a little bit harder. But he does take the first stock off Rusky with a side B. Now he just has to play very careful around these super strong, super fast aerials that Ness has. Ooh. That's unfortunate because he stood up before the move started, and at that point you can't really do much about it. If you know it's there, you can just get up attack and deal with it, but tough situation. There. Yeah, Rusky put it in a really smart spot, too. He didn't throw it at the ledge. He threw it a little bit past it because he's been doing a lot of conditioning with like charging Yo-Yo over the ledge. So, like... Giving the false sense of security right there into into Lieutenant L standing up into it was really smart. Yeah, and he is again just racking on a monstrous amount of damage with these PK fires. Yeah, PK fire is like Rusky's favorite move, I think. Yeah, and it, and it it should be. Ooh, Ooh. That, not quite a stock, but we are seeing Lieutenant L do some more ledge trapping and even going out there for edge guarding sometime to challenge Ness's recovery, which isn't really something that we saw last mm -hmm. time for Rusky playing. Look at that three PK Another fires Jared? in neutral. Mm -hmm. Back to back. He's got to respect PK Fire, and he's also got to be a little bit more careful with what he does to his shield. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that might be it, because I think he has no jump. Oh, barely oh. makes it. Yeah, one last chance. Hopefully he can take this stock and make sure there's no like crazy lead at the end of this. Okay. Yeah, using that air dodge. Rusky's really good about recovering, too. There's a lot of stuff that the Fire Little characters can this do in this recovery. Spot. Roll away, roll away. Oh. Okay. Or just hold shield. That works too. Oh. Wow. I don't think he was ready for that back air. No. It looked like he held with it a little bit. Um, I mean, it's strong, but we didn't see a kill screen or the sparks or anything. So Definitely I don't think he was ready. With some bad DI right there. But it's hard when you're trying to space around Ness's options. You know, you're weaving in and out a lot. He can just catch you dashing back, and then, you know, you get hit by the move you're already holding left. Mm hmm terrible di unfortunately yeah plus you're in like a little bit of a panic state like you're on your last stock you're kind of frantically trying to take the second stock more than normal because it's a crew battle but also your shield almost broke mm -hmm. so it's really hard to retain your composure in that no matter what level of player you're at um so you know totally understand it but you know still very well played from lieutenant l i think the neutral just kind of like got away from a little bit rusky definitely was racking on way more damage um and uh he was doing a really good job about not getting edge guarded too yeah, at least we were able to get a stock off of Rusky in the first game this time. You know, last time we saw him, it I think it took like the third two more games. Yeah, yeah. So once again, Rusky overcoming yet another bad matchup. <laughs> right. Now I wonder if they're just going to send in another Palu and then a Bayo, and it's just a total repeat of the other team. I mean, it 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 could. What more bad matchups can you throw at Ness? You know. Um, Throw Pithra in here, I guess. Byleth, maybe. Byleth is such... <laughs> it's so weird to think about Byleth being like somebody's counter, but I guess you're right, yeah. She's the distance demon, they said. That, they said it. That's true. And then immediately put Min Min in the next patch. Man. <laughs> they, just wanted to, they just wanted to warm us up to the term distance demon, and they are mm -hmm. like, all right, now we're really doing it for real. Y'all like that word? Okay. Devil. Yeah, and then like the very next character was just like the scariest zoner to ever do it. Mm-hmm. What if your zoner zone was smash tax? And we're like, no, nobody asked for that. And we're like, no, we made it. Yeah, speaking of Min-Min, that's probably a good option to counterpick Ness, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ram Ram would be super hard for Ness to get around. Like, it covers it covers that short hop height in such a way that, like, he really can't move through it. He would have to just, like, slow walk and, like... I, I, don't, I don't even want to say parry, because he doesn't even get that much extra movement from parrying it successfully, because she has, you know, two mm -hmm. arms. 
So right. like it would just be really hard. Huh. I guess that uh, the uh, Colorado team must not all be in the same room since they're having someone else join the lobby. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. That's what we typically see. Right. Having them all in the same room is mad convenient. But you know, it is what it is. Um, I would say it might be in our best interest to have Lieutenant L not spectate, though. Uh, let's, let's, is it his room? Is it Lieutenant L's room? Uh, I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Either way, though, I, we've been having a pretty good connection so far. Yeah. Really not even seeing much delay. No. And no DC, so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's awesome for us, you know. Okay, there's a bad that's, matchup for Ness. Yeah, Talk that's about a, a big decision. sword. This is the big sword. I think the very first time I saw this, it was Send versus uh, Sharp. And it was like right after Seth came out. So I was like, oh my God, is this the Ness answer? And selfishly, I'm like, is this my Ness answer? Right. But, and then Send ended up winning it. So who knows? Um, but obviously going to be able to keep Ness away pretty well. Huge hitboxes on Sephiroth here. Uh, but if Rusky's able to just get in, it really won't matter. And PK Fire has got a good distance on its own, you know? Here's the thing. So Bear is going to be really important, and Eftil can be really important. But Rusky, again, with that oh, no. wait-and-see play style, uh, if he catches on to, uh, these patterns, he might be okay. Let's see what Yeeks has to offer, though. Mm -hmm. Sephiroth's weight, of course, is going to be one thing that's a detriment to him in this matchup. Not going to take too much percent before Rusky starts looking for those kills. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that the smash attacks at ledge will give him much mileage here, though, because the hitbox on Sephiroth's up B is just gargantuan. Oh, yeah, it's it's huge. It, it'll, it might even just clank with it. He, he mm -hmm. might be okay. You're just asking to get reversal in that situation. Rusky's playing around it well, though. He's staying right out of, like, mm -hmm. fair and that F-tilt range. Kill. Yeah, that killed yep. pretty early. Only a jump on a very light character. And it was as wing activator too, so they didn't have to deal with like the comeback mechanic. Ooh, Rusky. Rusky! Oh my lord. The one thing that can be tough about Seth is that he's kind of a precise character with where you have to space everything. And I know Wi-Fi is not really conducive to being precise. No. And and again, like even that forward tool, let's look at that. Like it's really scary. It could do a lot to keep Ness at bay. But oh it has a decent God. amount of startup and it kind of loses a lot of trades. Rusky's trying to steal this man's soul with the PK fire into S smash. My lord. Wherever he goes, there is a PK fire. Okay, we saw a little bit of a hiccup right there, but looks like things are going to be okay still. Yeah, he, what he's doing is he's dancing around Yeeks' shield, and Sephiroth's out of shield is pretty lackluster. So he's going back and forth between like staying out of like Sephiroth's optimal range with like Fair Bear and F tilt, and then running in and pressuring only his shield. Um, so he's either too far away or too close. That's like the, the way he's playing neutral at this point. You know, it didn't occur to me until just now, but I feel like Wing is low-key cheating in a crew battle format because you start off down, right? Wait till you see Joker. True. You get Arson, like, <laughs> immediately. Once you're like, oh, oh there we go. Speaking of Wing, yeah, yep, there's the armor that's going to come through. It disappears after that stock. It mm -hmm. did its job. One day I'll fully understand Wing, but, like, when they say it's supposed to go away, when they say it's supposed to show up, they don't know each other. Right. Wing, Wing just be doing this thing. I don't know. Okay, back throw, back air. Ooh. Nice. Good read on the air dodge. Yeah, this would be really big. If Yeeks is able to take this stock, uh, only being one stock down would be incredible. We've yeah. also not seen the but rest of the it. UT team. Oh, back but Rusky. Back definitely going to kill. Rusky, once again, already going to be the MVP mathematically because he just took five stocks oh. off the next team. Yeah, I don't know about him putting himself at ledge here because Sephiroth's edge trapping is going to be pretty tough to get around. Mm -hmm. Manages to navigate it, though, into two PK fires and two forward airs. Oh, wow. 33% instantly. Yeah, good patience, too. Recognizing that Seph was, like, trying to get a counter out, trying to, like, put a Band-Aid on the bleeding, but it wasn't enough just yet. And once again, Rusky's in another position to just run through another team if he's able to take this game, stock right now. Yix is looking pretty clean, though. Hopefully he can just keep his percent around where it is because... 20 more percent smash attacks are going to start to kill you mm -hmm. 20 percent after that back throw is going to start to kill you he does that have hurts. wing though eating two pk fires from trying to dash back definitely hurts but now he does have armor online with wings so we'll see if he can abuse that like he did with the second stock oh yeah great recovery too recognizing that yo yo was coming and a down smash yep. with the wing knockback bonus added that was really smart if rusky had pressed anything the armor would have saved him uh, really great awareness by him because that was getting disastrous. Yeah, down smash took both of the stocks, actually. It was an armored down smash with wing for both of Rusky's stocks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for the first time all day, we get to see a second player 
on the UT team. Yeah, it's crazy thinking that uh, we've seen UT take 14 stocks and only one person's played on the squad so far. Right. And, and I think we said there was like a Yoshi lying in wait, a Steve. Yeah, there's a Steve slash Pac-Man. Two characters that most people don't really understand. And that are crazy on Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I kind of wonder who they're going to send in. Um, and again, as we said before, uh, all the results on their team were pretty strong. Mm-hmm. For my own curiosity, actually, I'm going to probably take a quick look at some of the players on Colorado's team. I'm just really curious for myself. Kind of want to see if there's any names that I recognize. Uh, and Colorado definitely seems like a strong team. Rusky's just Rusky's just kind of got the sauce right now. Dude's yeah. just kind of on fire. I mean, like I said earlier, Sephiroth kind of hard to pilot precisely on Wi-Fi, but Yeeks was really making it work there. Mm-hmm. That down smash was super clutch, though, because he was one mistake away from you know sending them into uh, um, an even greater deficit. It would have been like yeah. seven to three. That, that's 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 a hard day for anybody. Yeeks's advantage state was looking pretty clean too. I mean, at one point I saw him get the back throw, and I was like, back throw, back air, obviously. But then he just knew the air dodge was coming out and went for an up air instead to opt to just keep the juggle going. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't see any names that I recognize right off the top of my head. Kind of curious to see if something will pop up in the database. I did notice that all these players are... Um, you know, I was going to say, a lot of them have their Discord to handle, like, baked into their tag, which maybe that's kind of a sign of, like, where new players are going to be from here on out. It, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Like, this game and Discord really kind of popped off in, like, a similar time. Yeah. But, uh, let's see. Robber. I see a young link. I see a ton of results from this young link. So, uh, if this is him, and I'm not even necessarily sure which of these players is going to come in, but if it is Robber... And well, I'm looking at the right guy. Colorado got... is the one with Yeeks, so he's still chilling right now. It's, oh, that's okay. It's a right, UT right, player right. coming in next. Okay. If they do have to send in Robber, and it's the young link I'm looking at, this dude has like a ton of results. They only play one character. They have 557 games of young link on, on Smash EG and oh, nothing boy. else, <laughs> which is a lot. Um, but I'm seeing like third out of 112, ninth out of 122. I'm seeing some really crazy results. So. If this person is who I'm looking at, that's got to be the anchor because these are some scary results mm-hmm. here. Let's see who else we got. Let's see. Um, let's see. Pickles, please. That's a fun name. That is a funny tag. Pickles, please. We actually have like a full beef on the podcast over if Pickles should or shouldn't be on a chicken sandwich. I vote yes, but I mean, it's whatever. You don't want my take. You hate Pickles? I had the palate of a five-year-old, remember. Okay, that's true. All right. I mean, that I was the only one in the room supporting Pickles, I think, <laughs> as well. Team Pickles, but whatever. Oh, yeah. So who knows what they're going to send in? I mean, I'm sure they got a lot of... Um... <sighs> Seth is a weird character to try to counterpick. And then there's only one stock of the Sephiroth, too. So, like, right. if you hard counter Sephiroth with somebody, okay. But... So... I think the options to see are Steve Pack or like Steve slash Pack, Yoshi and Rob. Mm-hmm. I think the most likely candidate is going to be Steve, Yoshi, not fond of swords. That's just been a trend in all Smash games. Rob doesn't do terrible against Sephiroth, but I mean, it's not like it's a great matchup for him. You know, I'd probably mm-hmm. want to wait until it's a different character fighting. Now, I do remember when the controversy went up, and I shouldn't really say controversy, but there was like a pretty strong East Coast player that played Steve that beat Tweak uh, while it was Steve Diddy Kong. And everyone's saying, okay, well, Steve Diddy Kong is just really bad, blah, 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 blah. But then they played again that day, and it ended up being Seth Steve, and the Steve players still won. So, like, and he tweeted out, you know, take that, you guys. Like, Seth is, like, one of my worst matchups, right, yeah. worst matchups. They do say that Steve loses to Seth pretty hard, actually. And it looks like we're getting confirmation that the Rob player is coming in, LSOE. There okay. He is. Oh, gosh. I remember, yeah, I remember taking some notes on LSOE, and he is, he's got some very scary results. Yeah, so we're going to see Rob versus Sephiroth. Um, Rob, not exactly known for having, like, crazy range, but, you know, Laser and Gyro are full screen options. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Rob is, Rob is also a character that can really kill you at any percent, like, it's he's almost a controversial character because like people people overrate and underrate him and there's not a lot of middle ground. Um 
I would say at best I overrate him or I accur- accurately rate him. Right. But uh, plus, I mean, we've been talking about Wi-Fi characters all day, and who is a Wi-Fi character? Rob. Oh. Now my question is: Is he going to know to shoot his laser out here because he's got full laser right now? And that's yeah, let's see if he knows. No, he's keeping the full laser. Ooh, cheater, cheater, cheater! I am snitching. I'm telling the cops now. I would never do that. Oh, um, okay. Anyway, is he dead? here is he it is. Dead? He actually is dead. He's actually. Oh no! Oh, just I'm surprised that that wasn't able to combo because that was the string, and he did not drop it. Yeah, he just barely lived that. But look at Yeeks, already on notice, uh, just narrowly fighting for his life here. He does, of course, get the advantage of having Wing because he's coming in uh, in a disadvantage, both due to the crew battle and also that crazy combo. So mm-hmm. we can see something crazy. We can see him snatch a stock from LSOE pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but, boy, what a crazy way to start that off. Yeah, he's not really opting to play the mid-range game. He's just going to stay full screen where he has laser and gyro, like I said, to just outspace Seth, which is not a sentence Ooh. you hear very often. That armor down smash coming clutch again. And mm-hmm. he's also um, showing us he's got some pretty good gyro control himself. Ooh. Trying to roll in on Sephiroth there, it's going to be a little bit easy to react to. And Yeeks was just able to run away. But that unsafe Neron shield is going to get up smash. Probably smash, I believe, frame 9 or 10. Very, very fast, very strong option. Scoops on both sides. Yeah, I almost never get hit with a scoop hitbox and don't die with Rob. Like, it's mm-hmm. very, it happens very rarely. It's a pretty consistent move. But either way, good stuff to Yeast. Really good spacing on that sweet spot F tilt, especially once again with Wing. Um, Seth might be a better crew battle character than I initially thought. I didn't think he was bad. I just hadn't really, like, unpacked it. Yeah, I but... mean, if you're starting down, Wing comeback factor is going to show up online earlier, you know? Right, and the only way you don't start down is if you absolutely body the other yeah. person. So now we can speculate on what Colorado player they're going to send in next. Our options are Robber, mm-hmm. Pickles, please, or Sin Jammin. Let's see. Sin Jammin. Let me see if there's something I can find with Sin Jammin. Because Lieutenant L started, right? And that was just Yeeks. Mm-hmm. So now they're going to be down to their last player either way. That is true. And again, this is winner semi. So the winner, this is going to go on into fi- uh, winner's finals tomorrow. Um, you know, so they're very incentivized. Grand is actually going to give you a couple extra rounds, I think, uh, currently. That could change, but who knows? Um, oh, Robert the Young Link is coming in next. It year. is Robert the Young Link. Sai and I were literally just playing the Rob Young Link matchup while we were waiting for the next crew battle. So <laughs> yeah. we can speak to this one a little bit. Uh, I, as the Rob player, I find it extremely annoying. But if you get your opening, you might just kill Young Link off one hit. Yeah, that's really that's really what it comes down to. It's one of those things where, like, if you only know a little bit about the game, you're like, oh, how would he win neutral? You know, arrows annoying. All these things are annoying, and all of that is true. But Young Link is. Very susceptible to being edge guarded. It's really probably like his biggest flaw. It's not a huge flaw, but it's mm-hmm. his biggest flaw. But Rob can just do so much. Like yeah. um, Z drop gyro, uh, drop zone bear, fair, anything that takes his jump, side B. He has a ton of ways to kill this character uh, earlier than expected. Yeah, I mean, fire arrows are going to be the biggest issue for Rob because it just stops all your stuff so hard. But if you store up laser until it's big, then you're totally willing to take that trade because fire arrow hits me that's like what three or four mm-hmm. percent when a big laser hits you across the whole stage that's like 18 percent coming your way so that's a free trade that will take all of that yeah and that's 18 percent that's gonna like eat through the counter projectile you threw and if you're zoning zoning with young league you're probably pretty close to the ledge so mm-hmm. that's a good opportunity to like push you off stage too but traditionally it is agreed upon young link is the winner of this matchup oh yeah but sure. rob has quote unquote losing matchups right because he just has that rob factor the rob factor <laughs> the rob factor yeah rob fighting robber here honestly yeah honestly there should be a documentary about this character it's called the rob factor because it's just it's insane who's gonna be the real robber though Is i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll see we gonna see um but as i was saying earlier uh robber does have a lot of results it looks like the main thing that he competes in is called tuesday tourney and sometimes it's like top eight sometimes it's like um one out of top eight with like ninth um yeah lso he had super strong results like that too right consistently mm-hmm. top eighting winning some of the events in his region looked like one of the stronger players in ut honestly this is actually the first time i've seen somebody smash ug results and it's all the exact same tourney oh, so wow. like it is it is, it is an event called CSU, which I'm guessing is like Colorado Smash or something like that. Get my mans to some regionals, please. Right. <laughs> Homeboy does not leave campus. This campus must be like mad walk <laughs> Right. Because he's like, this is the tournament, right, you guys? This is the only one. 
well, at least he's got this crew battle opportunity to come in on stream, mm-hmm. get a new audience. And LSO is going to have to throw away that first stock. Yes. Uh-huh. But I was definitely impressed. I mean, he almost started off the last match by immediately zero to death in Sephiroth. It was just a miracle that the move didn't hit somehow. Right. And again, no real way to count down, so just kind of just getting started. Now, this is the position I'm talking about. He's got Gyro in hand. Youngling's at the ledge. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, but uh, one mistake definitely could have been that stock. Yeah, let the zoning war begin here. Mm-hmm. They got him on the platform. Not going to get a tech chase up there. Good avoidance, but that move is so active, so hard to dodge. Yeah, it really is. I think it's funny we have to commentate this match. We're, like, I know. we're gonna try to do it with as least bias as possible. We literally were just playing this matchup <laughs> like ten minutes. Ago. We play it every single week. Um, right now, it looks like LSOE is doing a really good job of like respecting uh, the out of shield from Young Link. Ooh, but that nice combo yeah. coming through. Tried to get the uh, try to get the double arrow ladder into the up B a little bit off on the spacing, and now he's off stage. Uh, this is gonna be death. This side is it. B. Oh, it actually beat it out. Wow! I'm surprised. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often. Nice. Uh, bear 1 and a Bear 1 and 2. Really nice stuff uh, from Robber. He's trying to get these conversions with these projectiles, but they're just kind of clanking with Rob's aerials. He's not down by any means, but he just can't get the kill confirmed he wants. LSOE is impressing me with his disadvantage state. He's doing a good job spacing around all of the options here. Just a nice air dodge earlier to react. Is he going to get this down here? No, it goes for it back here instead. Yeah, this feels like one of the more even matches we've seen so far tonight, mm-hmm. actually. Nice. Yeah. Seems Still. like both players know the matchup pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm, that unsafe nair going to get hit with a nair of Robert's own. Yeah. Both these characters have, like, insane nairs and for extremely different reasons. Right. <laughs> but they have to be respected on both sides. Mm. Could not punish that tether grab because Boomerang was coming in to keep him safe. There's what I'm talking about. Big laser. You're always going to take that trade mm-hmm. with whatever projectile you only just throwing out. Yeah, look at everything he got off. He's pushed off stage. He's getting tagged by these gyros. He's nearly surviving these ledge traps. He just, no, he died yeah. to that back air. One big laser, and it just sets so much momentum in Rob's favor. So it I was, think it it's was, imperative to respect uh-oh, that tool. Uh-oh. There it Double is. Toss, that's a that's stop. A stop. There uh, it how is. many seconds did that take? Three? Three seconds. <laughs> so imagine, we see this entire, we see the whole matchup. We see how Young Link can just bully Rob and all these things that Rob can't do in neutral, and then Rob gets a read at the ledge, and boom, it's totally even. And you know Rob is frustrated at getting hit by that of how course. can you not be is it about to happen again oh my lord he's got these down honestly. yeah i'm pretty impressed with the combos yeah so he definitely is lapping this out a lot makes me want to lap it actually loki <laughs> looks kind of fun yes i did say mm. how did that gyro not hit him it was tired i guess <laughs> it was like it's been a long week you know i didn't sleep much last night Ooh, Oof, trap the ledge again. Now, what we saw last time when uh, Robert was in that ed- edge trap position, he just chose to tether and hang down until Gyro despawned, which was a very smart way to avoid the mm-hmm, edge trap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Gyro is mostly there. Like, if it hits you, it's going to lead to a stock, but also if you immediately react, Robert oh, gets a free punish. Beautiful combo from Robert, though, showing us all that wonderful experience he has. He's just nearly going to take that over LSOE uh, with one stock remaining. It's going to have to be really careful. Uh, Robert was a second player, right? Robert is their final player. Robert is their anchor? Because it was Rusky, then Sephiroth. That's and right. Now Young Lee. All right. But so. I think that LSOE did what he needed to do. You know, he got one stock off for real, and mm-hmm. then he cheesed the stock real quick in about three seconds. Yeah. That's all you can really ask for in a crew battle. Rob definitely a menace in crew battles. For sure. And I think I've seen Rob every night I've done this, I've seen Rob and. Two of the nine stocks I saw were from Rob, actually. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the character's just scary. He's in my top five. Robert has, to, Robert has to deal with, I believe, a Steve Pack or a Yoshi now, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, it's going to be hard to not drop at least your one stock to those characters because they really just have kill moves they can kind of throw out. Mm-hmm. What, now, so Steve, Steve or Yoshi, both of them? Um, can be a little little trouble for Young Link. Like Yoshi can actually like ignore a lot of the projectile confirms that Young Link has, just because Nair just kind of like clanks with a lot of that, that stuff. So if you're like you know point blank or like a little bit further away, like not even mid range boomerang, you're trying to like look for a confirm. Mm-hmm. Like Yoshi's double jump armor can interrupt it. Uh, neutral air can beat it out and actually start advantage state for him. So it can be a little bit tricky. And then Steve, it's another Rob situation where like Steve loses. But there's like a big asterisk around and it. And he just know? runs at you with his pickaxe. And he's like, let me zero to death you. Let me zero to death you. Yeah. Right now. He's got a lot of ways to zero to death you. 
And if Steve is playing really, really defensively and is like committed to building like a wall, then like it can make it tough for Young Lee because of course your projectile, some of them are being wasted on it. The trickiest thing about Steve is like, let's say he, so he puts up like a three tier wall, right? And he's hiding behind it and he's mining. You, of course, are tasked with like trying to break it to make sure that he doesn't get to like diamond or gold or whatever he wants. But like nine times out of 10, when I see somebody like rush in towards the wall and try to like break it with like a dash attack or something up close, they just immediately do like short hop mine cart and they just get a ton of mileage. Out. Right. I mean, Steve still has his controller in his hand when that wall's built up. You know, he's able to see what you're doing and try and get through it and act accordingly. Yeah. And like when he has the wall, your goal as the opponent is extremely linear. It is super tunnel vision. Like a lot of the Yomi of, oh, will they try to grab me? Or, oh, are they trying to like, you know, play some footsies with me? Like, no, they're like, I have to break this wall or I physically cannot touch this character. Right. And then Steve is just like, I'm just going to wait for you to break it. Like it's super easy to react to you, like even trying to break it, let alone breaking it. The Steve win con is very clear. The win con against Steve is a calculus level puzzle. (laughs) It really is. And it it truly just depends on the Steve player and how they like to play. Uh, The main thing I could expect from a counter pick is definitely going to be somewhere like I would expect it's it's probably not going to be Kalos or FD. It'd probably be like either SBF or PS2 because um, when you're hiding under the platform and you build a wall that like cuts the, one of the sides of the platform off, it's that much harder to actually get in and get anything done. Um, so either way, if it's going to be Yoshi or Steve, Robert's going to have a, a heck of a night in front of him. If I remember looking at their results, I think that the Yoshi players' results were a little bit better than the Steve, but you know, it is a sortie versus Yoshi. Yoshi's kind of liable to get zoomed. Mm-hmm. So if they're thinking about matchups, they might send in the Steve instead, but really remains to be seen yeah oh nope it is the steve it is the steve okay Kubik is coming in to play steve and that's kind of the advantage when you have like a bigger collegiate team where you like of course it's three on three but if you have more players and you have a bigger pool of players to pick yeah. from counter pick wise especially if they're like this polarizingly diverse like steve yoshi sephiroth like you have this kind of diversity like it's really an it's really great to just have that many competent players. Mm-hmm. You can definitely cover all your bases, even if each player doesn't get to play each time. You mm-hmm, know, they're mm-hmm. there for security's sake. Right. Like, okay, we didn't pick Lucina for this one, but we might need her for that, you know? Like, we didn't pick Aegis for Pikachu, but she's still going to be solid against mostly everybody else. Right. I mean, in the last matchup, Rob Youngling, we saw Fire Arrow was the main thing to disrupt Rob's neutral, but what's Fire Arrow going to do against a wall? Literally nothing. Nothing. Absolutely He's just going to sit there and mine and get his resources mm-hmm. and have diamond as soon as possible and try to kill you at 50 with it. Now, one thing I'm learning, because uh, people, I think when some of the Steve controversy started popping off and like the band Steve meme hit Twitter, was a lot of people trying to post like anti-Steve tech. They're like, okay, maybe you guys really don't know this matchup, which is fair. Because like He's us understanding character. the matchup compared to the speed at which Steve's meta has progressed, mm-hmm. there's a huge discrepancy. Definitely. Huge discrepancy. But um, one of the main things I noticed is that if you break the bottom block, you can just kind of run through. Like, you'll actually ignore... If Again, if it's a three-tiered wall, you'll ignore the middle block and just kind of run through. It looks mm-hmm. weird, but, like, it's important to know that. Because if you're trying to, like, maybe you're throwing something at just the middle one and you're trying to, like, you know, play darts. Right. <laughs> like, throw uh, fire arrows through just the middle one or boomerang or whatever. You're just playing a weird, risky game that Steve just gets to ignore. Mm-hmm. And even then, Steve can just see, oh, the bottom block isn't there. Let me just run away mm-hmm. and build mm-hmm. elsewhere. Or even, you know, just throw my mine card at you that is a mix-up between hitbox, command grab, all of the above. High knockback. <laughs> uh... Yes, if you have the redstone, that, sh- that is going to kill you super early. Yeah. And here's the other thing, too. Steve is a character that can innately really succeed from being defensive. Like, just from his neutral. But his out-of-shield options are also crazy, too. Mm-hmm. Like, out-of-shield diamond bear is scary. Yes. Out-of-shield up tilt can lead to death. Like, there's a lot of stuff he gets from just kind of playing passive. So, who knows? I mean, I think Robert's just going to have to play, like, a really careful but aggressive game if he wants to take this. Especially if you build a wall right now. Wait, he's building already. I Hold on. Why is he killing himself? Uh, oh, they, they're going to have to start all the way over, I think. Yeah. Because he started building. <laughs> right, right. He's just like, well, while you're killing yourself, let me go ahead and mine. Yeah, force a habit. <laughs> right, let's, let's go ahead and get some diamonds. Like, no, 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 you, you have to start with wood tools. That's the other thing, too. Like, he starts with wood tools, and everyone's like, oh, it doesn't have that much knockback. Mm-hmm. That's good for us, right? And it's like, oh, now you're getting jabbed to hell because it doesn't have that much knockback. Right, but uh, yeah, as I was saying, if you choose to build your wall right
right next to a platform, then you have a wall and a roof over your head. And literally they have to go around the wall and then up and around that platform mm-hmm. to even get a chance to hit you in the first place. Every time I see a tweet that has Steve in it and Japanese characters, I know I'm going to see some math I'm not ready right. for. I know I'm going to see some crazy Rube Goldberg machine set up. All right. Hopefully Tuvik will remember, don't start mining until he's taking his stocks yet. Yes. Telling a Steve not to press B, that's tough. Right. <laughs> we'll see. Get back on the platform. Yeah, I mean, it'd be better if he was it next to the matter. platform. Yeah. All right. Three, They're going to count it one, down. Go. Oh, it started. All right. Here and here it is. So, yeah, you saw right there, he broke the bottom blocks and just ran through, ignored the one in the middle. And that was exactly what I was talking about. Like, how you're going to, like, make sure you're not, like, Ooh. suffering, trying to, like, play Steve's game. Uh-oh. And again, this is UT Austin's final stock. So uh, if Robert's able to do this, Colorado is actually going to get lucky. They get to get a buy, and then they get to run into winner's final. So this could be a really great I day. Think Colorado is the Steve. You're under, sorry, Colorado is the young one. Oh, sorry. I, I said it backwards. I said it backwards. I apologize. UT is the Steve. Okay, never mind. That's the storyline we're racing. So not looking at an upset unless Tubic's able to make this three stock come. Or uh, sorry, Robert is able to make this three stock comeback. Mm-hmm. Which he's not looking too bad so far, but he does have a lot of percent on him. Yeah, deep in the kill percent. And this is where it gets scary, because, like, of course Steve can combo you, but just mm-hmm. one burst option in that side B is just as scary. And he has a diamond right now. Oh, man. I'm sure he's going to go for that as soon as... Oh, my God, look at the setup there. No one ever knows. No, of course not. How do you? Steve might be the hardest character to lab against in the game, just because he just has such an insane number of options. And people just have so much diversity with their shoes. Steve is not a lightweight character either. He doesn't die early. No. It's pretty solid. Oh, and that's it. That was a really good read. Down smash right to the face. So, yeah, UT Austin. um, I did say it backwards earlier, but they were the one seed, and here they are uh, in one seed territory hanging out in the winner's finals. That was pretty clean stuff on Tubic's part. Seemed like he was able to navigate the matchup pretty well. Took some percent, but didn't really stress him. Mm -hmm. And then just looked for his opportunity and got that gigantic hitbox of a down smash to take the stock. God, yeah. Right in the face. Just lava. You see that TikTok of that dude cooking a steak with hot lava? No. It made no sense. It was like, where'd you get lava? But whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. But anyways, I guess that's going to be it for this match. We're probably going to go on a break for a bit. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you again soon for the next half of Winter Semis. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is going to be our final match of the night. The other half of Winter Semis uh, is going to be UT Arlington versus Arizona State. Uh, this is, I think it's a two of the three seed. Was that right? The yep, two of the three it seed? came exactly as projected in the bracket. One versus four seed was our first side of winter semis. Now we're looking at two versus three. Yeah, so it should definitely be a knockout drag down battle. If you're just tuning in, this is Cy and I'm being joined by Cadence. And uh, wow, it looks like we're ready to hop back into this. So yeah, not wasting any time. Starting out with Peach versus Incineroar. Uh, there were a couple matches early in the day where we saw two top tiers. Not going to be the case right now, though. No, no, no. no. You know, but it is what it is. So, yeah, Peach versus Incineroar. Now, earlier we saw, um, I think it was Incineroar versus Min Min. It was honestly a lot closer than I expected it to be. Peach is a different beast, uh, not necessarily because she would be zoning and, like, be, like keeping Incineroar out, but just because her combo game is really, really scary. This Peach looks really aggressive, too. Oh, not yeah. pulling any turnips, just running straight in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Icona's going hamsies right now. Um... And the, uh, the main thing I can see is, like, okay, so Incineroar's aerials actually aren't going to be that bad at contesting Peach if, like, her movement isn't clean. But this is some really clean Peach movement. Oh, man. And is he going to let him recover? Okay, this time, yes. Going for some ledge trapping, though. Uh-oh. Going to give up stage position with that side B. A little errant there. I think one thing that also can make this tough is, that, like, Incineroar eats all day off side B. Like, that's one of his best neutral tools. Oh, no. Ooh! We saw him hard read and... A, uh, a roll on the stage with an up smash just like that the last time he played. Yeah, he's really good about conditioning. He just moments. knows when you're going to roll. And I was literally just like praising the movement we were seeing from Icona, but I can't. Oh, no, no. Unfortunate time. position to be in. So was Incineroar the was down tilting ledge and uh, it like stage spike, but she teched it, but then just immediately air dodge. Oh, really bad spot to be in. Yeah, that's. But, Really you know, unfortunate. If you're Iconic, you take that all day, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, Curry, despite having a great start, is now down two stocks. And this is 
winner semis for the Curry. No, so, sorry, Curry is the incinerator. Oh, it's, oh, it must be back. Okay, my bad. Um, but yeah. Okay, well, got that one stuck off, but really he has no reason to approach. He's just going to sit there and wait for revenge. And Oh, my God, that is not going to kill. At okay. 21%. If that killed, I would have been so shook. Right, off like a turnip. Not even like a stitch or like a dotty, just like the regular, you know, Dollar Tree turnip. Yeah. This <laughs> like time, all that. I kind of elected to wait out the revenge and got a pretty good punish on it. Now we're sitting back in neutral here. It's going to be tough to come back from this death sit on Incineroar because the idea is to camp the character out, but he really doesn't care to be camped if he's got the lead. You know? Right, and and the crew battle format doesn't even like lend itself to camping in general anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, got that roll on, and Ooh, we know that Icon has been scouting that. Yep. Mm, just oh, that clothesline. When you see the clothesline hit the kill screen, it it is different. It's, it hurts. Oh my God, because like that's where my Adam's apples were. Right. To be. Like, you know, I will drive straight into the next game. <laughs> right. I can't believe how fast of a game that was. I know that second stock was really unfortunate. Just a little bit of bad luck, but man, that's... That was I mean, and Cinema doesn't seconds? mess around. He's not here for slow games. And that's true. Slow character, not here for slow games. Right. <laughs> actually, right. That'd be a slogan, actually. Incinero's projectile is fear, you know? Yes, exactly. He wants you to be afraid. Now, what I was going to say is that on paper, I feel like she could do a good job of navigating side B just because, like, whether she's grounded or floated, like, he has to choose one of those, like, zones to occupy with that move. Mm -hmm. But she got side beat a lot. I mean, Peach is also a super high execution character. Wi-Fi is going to come into play a little bit there and mess with your inputs a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they didn't want that immediate air dodge after the ugly situation on the right side of the stage there. <sighs> Hopefully the rest of their team can clean it up for him, though, you know. You know what I just thought about? I think the scenario where she should get side B, and maybe this is what's happening, if she's reacting to side B, it should never hit her because she can choose to float or she can choose to fall. But if she already committed to floating and sees a side B, like, then it can get tricky. Like, if she's floating near the ground, she's not going to be able to, like, it's going to be really weird for her to jump again, if she even can at all, to mm -hmm. get away from it. And maybe that could lend itself to incident or favor. Yeah, and honestly, when the low tier beats the top tier like that, it can kind of get you shook on where to counter pick from here because it's like, where do we go? Do we send in another top tier? I mean, it didn't work last time, you know? Right, right. Looks like, oh, we're getting Bowser 19 to Lucina. And we remember he put on a very dominant performance. Yeah, he took uh, seven stocks in, in that last match. Just totally just put the team on his back and really, uh, really showed everybody that he is a massive threat in this tournament. Mm hmm. So, you can't really stay super far away from Incineroar's Lucina, though. Of course, your hitboxes are only going to be the range of your sword. You know? <laughs> Shout out to the failed SD. <laughs> yeah, they tried. Yeah. Curry actually tried, actually successfully SD twice in bracket. And then he was like, oh, let me go kill myself. I was like, how do I do that again? <laughs> it's funny to see them go back and forth. But all right, so we're getting started in this. Uh, Bowser okay. 19 being a little bit over aggressive with that side B. Yeah, trying you can't to really finish out. all the hits of side B there because that's going to be a lot of lag coming. It got punished accordingly. And here we are again, Curry, with another really early revenge. He's really good about scouting those out. All right, but it's gone. That was a ton of damage to uh -oh. me, too. Oh, my uh -oh. goodness. Okay, good thing it's for Bowser 19 that it sent him back towards center stage, because I don't know if he had his jump right there. Right. Either way, that's still, you know, hey, I just got a combo. I'm getting lead trapped. Well, here's 30%, and let me get to back, <laughs> back to the stage. Right. Like, that's still a... You know, very good change for him. Oh, that was Ooh. smart, going above the ledge, because I was not expecting that. I'm sure Bowser 19 wasn't either. No, I think uh, he was just looking for the two-frame as you saw that down tilt. That was a little bit of a scramble situation right there. Going to be able to make it back. Oh, nice. Bro, taking a back air to the face. Yeah, Isenora's back air is it's honestly really good. It's just his movement is what makes it seem like it's not. Yeah, like, no. Incineroar's one glaring flaw is bad recovery and slow character. Not mm -hmm. slow frame data, but no. slow speed. Mm-hmm. He even has decent shield pressure. Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my Holy crap. god! UT Arlington is here to play. He just went for it, dude. He was like, "I know you're gonna recover from the same position you've been recovering in. I'm just gonna stop you." And look at that! Just from a straight aerial, gets revenge and actually combos the knockback from revenge into dash stack. I never seen anybody combo off that hit. That was super smart. Curry is way ahead of the game when it comes to yeah. his incineroar knowledge. If Bowser 19 really wanted to, I feel like he could have just reversed that up B off the edge there and just killed them both. He's probably shook. Oh, God. Oosh. 70%. He's got, like, one last exchange. Yeah, and Bowser 19 was low-key the MVP of his team last time, so 
they're going to be a little shook to see him go down like this. Oh, yeah, good tech there at nearly 200%. Still can't make it back, though. That's that bad recovery coming into play. Yeah. A lot of the rest of this battle is going to rest on this stock from Bowser 19. Right. Because that second stock was so explosive. And can we talk about, like, the way that Curry is able to get off the ledge? Oh, no. Revenge up smash definitely going to kill there. I'm so impressed by Curry's Incineroar. I'm, yes. I'm so impressed. He's, he's been in so many situations where he should get edge guarded, and he's getting so much free damage from it. He's consistently now getting combos off, like, landing revenge. Like, just him having it is already scary. He's like, oh, I need to watch out for the next thing he does. But he's like, no, you don't. It's already guaranteed. Like, I'm yeah. going to find a way. Revenge up smash. Like, you really have to be careful with your landings against Curry, it seems like, because if you're trying to land aggressively, he's just going to sit there and counter and murder you for it. Yeah, and... There's Arizona State with just three stocks left, and, you know, UT is still on their first, and Curry is looking extremely unfazed. Right. Is the low-tier Incineroar about to just clean up this whole part of the crew battle? Mm. You know what? Honestly, we see a little bit more of this. We see Sky J get one or two more upsets. We, we might have to move him to mid. Right. Bottom of mid. You know, <laughs> let's not get crazy. Because, like, let's look at this. Like, Wii Fit Trainer is allegedly a mid-tier. Let's look <laughs> at all that. You know what I mean? So, I don't say that lightly. Right. I mean, assuming whoever they send in next beats Curry without losing a stock, you're still staring at two more players on their team with six stocks remaining. Yeah. That is a tall order. You need a character, Rob, that like can like consistently zero death Rob or like survive for a long time Rob. Um, someone Jason, like Rob, for example. Perhaps Rob. Perhaps Rob. Maybe Steve would be a good idea, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have a Rob, but if they do, call them right now. Right. Get them on the line. Rush them in. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Uh, no, no Rob, no Rob, but I see who uh, is left on their roster. Do you know? Uh, let me check. Let me check on here. Who is left on the okay? Yeah, so... Arlington is the incinerator, mm -hmm. so we're looking at Arizona State. Arizona State, oh man, we're gonna find it. Sorry, we actually have a pretty chunky document with all these people, which very uh, thankful to WBB for hooking us up with that. That's very nice. You know, takes a little bit of a load off us as far as like the research. Oh, so man, I don't see it. Do I? Let's see. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Okay, Arizona State. State so they still have. Smash. Um, Icon is the Incineroar. Mm -hmm. Captain Remix is. Now, that player, I remember specifically saying that, like, I've heard that person's name before. Mm -hmm. A lot. And I think I remember hearing this person's name all the way back in, like, Smash 4, I want to say. Um, so that's going to be a huge threat, even if they're able to deal with Icona. But who knows? I mean, I've, I've seen bigger miracles, but this is the, if you have a miracle in your pocket, this is the time. If Icona steamrolls through this whole team by himself, I will be very shook. Same. Let me look at Captain Remix. So I'm pulling up his data right now. Now, for a moment, I had Captain Remix confused with Captain Awesome, who is <laughs> not so much. But, uh, um, I don't know. I guess I can't find it right now. But who knows? This app is a little buggy. Anyway, we're going to be getting into this in just a moment. But yeah, seven stocks to three in the last, uh, potentially last set of uh, this winter semis. Oh, it's oh, going to be ice, ice climbers. climbers. Ooh. Now, that is interesting. Now, I just want to know how Incineroar Side B interacts with him because I imagine that has a pretty active hitbox, right? Uh, yes, but every move in that Ice Climbers have is fairly active too, considering it's swinging twice, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they might be doing a little bit of like a button check or maybe like a lap. I kind of also sure. needs to, to, to kill himself twice. Oh, yes. I think he might not remember. <laughs> yeah. If I were an Ice, I want to hand one or two because you really. Yeah, need that is pretty shot. fair. But they're showing us that they have they have their these things ready. Like they're definitely going to show us some sauce. Yeah, I mean we've talked about matchup checks a lot today, but if there is a matchup check, it's Icy's. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you can't separate that character and kill Nana and get to Sopo territory, you're just going to get zero to death. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, immediately. Where are we going? I think it was just a bunch. Okay, I guess we're just going to start a fresh yeah. match. That's fair. That's fair. So yeah, so uh, is it is going to be Captain. Coming in. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna say this. I think it's Twitter clips that I've seen from Remix too. So ICs are prone to posting Twitter clips. I mean, that's <laughs> that's their thing. The other day, I was playing Ferb the ICs, and mm -hmm. he was hitting me with like footstool with Popo and try to jab block leaving me with Nana. It was insane. Okay, uh, right. Let's let's look at some of these results. 
first out of 113. Oh, uh, that's all you need to say, honestly. 13th out of 512 at a juice box. Um, oh, are they a Wi-Fi warrior primarily? I don't know. It looks like a lot of this is Wi-Fi. Uh, but there's definitely some stuff in their local region. I'm 17th out of 238 in person. I mean, those are very, very good results. First out of 113, Wi-Fi or not. is a Yeah, period. That's a long result. freaking day. But maybe uh, Curry is just going to clean it up. We'll see. I mean, honestly, if you need somebody, I would I would argue that Remix is probably the scariest person on the team. But if you need somebody to take one stock real quick, Look, see, can do it. they just do this. Oh, run at you! Oh my is god, is he dead? No, not okay. quite. I think a lot of characters did die there. Actually, yes. But they want to do Blizzard. They want to do I don't even know what the side B is called. Squall or something. Squall like that. hammer. Oh no. But you, um, again, Curry is so smart about sneaking these revenges in. And a character like Ices is going to have an active hitbox out all the time. Yes. He's going to find him. You can pretty much just spam revenge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But speaking of spam and revenge, as we just saw right there, it looks like Remix is... He kind of took oh. notice pretty quickly. Okay. Oh, well, but... what's your Sopo got? Let's see. Okay, Sopo Icy. Sopo is in Roar's extreme. I mean, it, it won't really matter that he's so if he can get this stock off. You know, he technically won't have lost the stock. Mm-hmm. And again, he's got seven to take. So this is an extremely crucial stock. Oh, the oh, jab lock might have done got it. the jab lock, yeah. He's going to just play it out super safe. He knows he doesn't want to lose this stock. Yeah. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, that neutral B. That was really smart. That move's already strong enough on its own, but revenge boost is definitely going to kill you. Oh, yeah. I really don't think that Remix minds that much, though. Definitely is obviously going to be more comfortable with both of his characters in play. Look at this. What Oof. the heck is going on? Oof. Oh, my Lord. It's so much damage every time Icy's hit you, too. This might be the this might be the most unique matchups I've seen since, like, the launch of this oh, game. Oh, no. <gasps> Not we're a, good, Okay. Good. Great save. I was scared. He said, no, we're going to talk mm. this out. <laughs> you're oh, you're going to be here definitely for this. dead to that, yep. Doesn't really matter if you time it super well in them coming out of that freeze because you have two of smashes back to back. Do <laughs> you think that dare was intentional or do you think Nana just like went AWOL? I think it actually ended up being intentional because it looked like it was good spacing to recover the ledge without getting messed with very hard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Scared me, though. I definitely thought Nana was just like abort mission self <laughs> <Right. laughs> She was like, I need to go to bed now. Also, this is also one of those colors where it's really hard for me to tell the difference between Nana and Popo. Because the only thing that's really different is their gloves and, like, their bangs. <laughs> the only way that. I know is when one of them dies if the other one's still there. Nana. Exactly. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, Nana's... Yeah, it is Nana. Okay, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't really call it either. But, I mean, that's to the player's benefit, too. Like, when you see um, a Pyro Mithra and they're rocking one of those colors, like, they're exactly the same as like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Morning now we first. have two stocks on Remix to six for the other team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is a tall order, but he's looking pretty clean. Yeah, I mean, Remix the has the scariest results I've seen tonight to so scoff far. At, yeah. Which is, I'm sorry. The results you mentioned are nothing to scoff at at all. No. If anyone's going to make this comeback, it's someone with results like that. Oh my gosh. 25th at another juice box out of 512. Second out of 70 at a back throw online. Yeah, Remix definitely. You know what? To be an online Wi Fi ICs god, that's insane. Mm-hmm. That is a level of dedication that I'm not ready for. I mean, if you play on Wi-Fi primarily, then you're just going to have those Wi-Fi timings down. The problem becomes when you're switching back and forth. Mm-hmm. But it looks like he's versed in both, apparently. So Yeah. Like, navigating lag is annoying, but, like, a character that's as, like, precise and technical as Icy's, that's that's just tough. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many things. There's so many windows you have to take into account of. Like, oh, I want to do this while this is buffering. I want to have this ready when they come out of this. And I want to get this punished once they, like, break out of the ice. And, like, all that stuff just... It's already hard. So. Right. Yeah, shout outs to Ferb, too. You, you know, our, uh, the ices we see in our state. That's always really good. Mm-hmm. I feel like I don't see Ferb. I never see Ferb in a lot of brackets. No, he doesn't really that. compete. It's like a mental thing right now. He says he will soon. Okay. But it looks like we have confirmation that Davey is coming in, the Pyre and Mithra player. I don't know if we've seen Davey play yet today. I think we have. I remember. We've I think seen we a couple said, different Mithras. Yeah. We've seen a lot of Pyramithers. I'm trying to figure out which Pyramithers. I think that we've seen Davey before. I don't think that he's the one that was swinging for the finish. That's, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say without saying. I'm like, if it's uh-huh. that Pyramithers, we're gonna know. But that team didn't win, right? No. No. Okay, yeah, no. So Icy's versus Pyramithers. They can actually do okay. I feel like that's a character that does have to interact with Ice Climber Shield a lot. 
Yeah, and um, Foresight is going to come into play with Mithra a lot because, you know, Icy is just, just like constant hitboxes coming at you. Mm-hmm. And if you just spam air dodge, you're going to Foresight out of a lot of those situations. Yeah, and um, I mean, it's really hard to tell which of their combos are true and aren't, so I guess mm-hmm. Foresight is going to be the determining factor. But then on the other hand, Icy down tilt i think it is is a move that sends it an atrocious angle oh, it's like down yeah. and down like mithra is not recovering from that yeah ice's down tilt is an angle i haven't seen since brawl minus which is a game designed to be broken yeah <laughs> so like if i had to guess they're gonna try and go for that anytime the pithra is off stage mm-hmm. understandably so because it's gonna spell certain death yeah pithra at this point is just in that smash Four cloud territory where like everybody has like an easy answer to like their recovery mm-hmm. but everything else is a problem <laughs> well, I guess they didn't really say go, but it is what it is. No, I think that the uh, Remix just needed to re-coordinate the two characters. They were de-synced a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, you never want to let her, like, Uh-oh. fully... Oh. I thought we were about to see some DeBuzz puppeteer stuff there. Yeah, I did too. And again, in that exchange, had they gotten the down tilt, I think Mithra dies. It's crazy to me how Ices will just side be at you every single time. <laughs> and it's, like, a good idea. It's, it's yes. the optimal idea. For you them. take so much when you get hit by it. Man. But it's like every combo star is just like, run at you with side B. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's too good. Even if you parry, there's so many hits. It's hard to know when it ends, whether they're together or they're desynced. And it's it's just a tough, it's honestly a tougher move to deal with than people think. Nana getting bullied a little bit right now, though, since her shield isn't lined up quite with Popo's. Risky like, landing. Nana really is not too many hits away from dying. And oh, that shield's so getting fun. low. And Nana's taking her sweet, sweet yes. time to make it back to the battlefield. All right, they're back. Are they getting punished? No. Really scary stuff. Also, I didn't really think about it, but them having, like, different shield health is also really important because, like, Pyra's moves are really big. They do a lot of shield damage, but also they're really, really, really Oh, wow. Looking for a big roll read that did not quite pan out. I respect it. Hey, sometimes people like to roll behind you in that situation. Yeah. Plus, if nothing else, like, they have a... Arlington has a ton of stocks left, too. Yeah. I think he... Oh, Oh, my God. I'm going for another huge read. There's the foresight we were mentioning. There it is. Nana's survivability has been really good right now. Yeah. She's, everything's yeah. just sending her off the top. I think it's the recovery part where she like starts to die really early. He was trying to stay Pyro to go for the kill and realized it wasn't really panning out, so he switched back to Mithra, but then he realized that wasn't really working <laughs> out, so now we're back to Pyro. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's doing a terrible job, though, you know. Uh-oh. Ooh. Scary. Yeah. You can't really waste time when you have one of the ICs in a grab because the other one's going to hit you for it, but there goes Down Nana. Tilt. There's the attempt. You were, you were right, though. That's definitely the optimal game plan uh, for stopping Pyro and Mithra is going to be that down tilt. Mm. He didn't have time to uh, run off and try to save her. Uh-oh. But going for the Kimble is a good idea, too. This neutral B is very scary. Obviously, it lingers forever. Mm. He has very little lag. Oh, man. Here we are. Ribbon's down final to his final stock. stock. Arizona State has one stock left to take against, uh, I think, five right now. So yeah. this is just going to be super stressful. Even if Remix takes this... And they make it to the next match. That means they have to take three stocks with a character that is drastically different if something happens to them. Mm-hmm. With one of their own. Definitely going to be tough, but Remix is not giving up. Ooh, Uh-oh. Stop. That's death. Okay. It's crazy how many options Ices has to kill you there, too, because in my head, I saw it playing out with a spike before it, mm-hmm. you know, but then they're like, actually, we'll just do F Smash instead. Yeah, F Smash is one of those things. Like, Spike is like, it might work, but F Smash, like, will work mm-hmm. at that percent. And Dady's doing a good job of running to the end of where side B is going to be and just punishing them for it there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, not even bothering to get hit by it, just running away. Remix, honestly, coming out of that situation, squeaky. Ooh! He even got the parry that time. That F smash would have been devastating if they faced it the right direction. Look at the shield damage Blizzard really oh, yeah. puts out. See, part of the reason I had my IC's tinfoil hide on so early in the game was just like. I shielded Blizzard once. I was like, oh. Oh, there goes Santa Nana again. Oh, man. The All entire right. team resting on a Sopo against the best character in the game. What a That's tough probably day. Be it. Oh, not quite. Oh, little greedy. I don't know how that missed. Yeah, definitely have the, the idea right with that forward smash. If you're Remix, this is so scary, though. You really don't even have an up B left. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a recovery option. You don't. <gasps> oh, my God, but he got it, though. Wow. Goated Sopo. Calling out that jump. I don't even think that he went for a jump read in that position in the past. He really saved it for when he needed it there at the very end. Hanging on by a thread. Literally. He did so much conditioning, like, because he did, like, two or three side bees on the ground. So mm-hmm. I think Remix's whole plan is, like, I need her to just make one bad jump. Wow. Now is Remix going to make a three-stock comeback here with one of his own? Man. I think Ices might be 
one of the hardest characters to make a three-star comeback with because there's so many things that, like, if you had Nana, sure, it's doable, but, like, if that element's gone, a three-stock Sobo comeback, a two-stock Sobo comeback mm-hmm. is hard. But the one-stock Sobo comeback was an upset just yes. now. But what are the odds, though, that this last person coming in knows the Icy's matchup, you know? Oh, At least they only need to know one stock of it, but shoot, mm-hmm. just don't get rolled over for three. Man, yeah. And and you could tell that he was like, uh, that Davey was like learning, like as you said, he was running to the end of side B. Mm-hmm. He was being a little bit uh, egregious with some of those reads, trying to get like these uh, roll read F smashes. I respect twice. it though. I mean, he did get the parry the one time and literally just misread the drift because Ices has so much control over where they land mm-hmm. after that. He thought that he'd drift all the way through his shield to the right, but actually he just drifted back to the left. Mm-hmm. And as egregious as it was, it's not the worst idea because like they both have to stay safe from that. Mm-hmm. I mean, Pirate F smash has like 20 years of range going to kill you at any percent anyway i definitely respect going for that read mm-hmm. crazy active that move hitting a shield oh my god that's a whole marvel movie <laughs> like it's yeah. super active i'm definitely curious to see what this last matchup we're gonna see is i didn't even think it would get to this point honestly but remix the god yeah remix the god for real but i mean hey you know what this is the final oh. match of the day we want to be excited we want to see like how crazy down to the wire it can get so it's army Ollie. Oh, Army Ollie versus Remix. Okay. This should be really good. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I have never once seen the Icy's Olimar matchup. Not even once. <laughs> Just being honest. Not even once. Not even not even one time. Um. So yeah, Remix versus Army Ollie. This is actually a match I would expect to see in like a traditional singles bracket, actually. I'm wondering how does the tick damage work? Like if the Pikmin are attached to Nana, do you still tick the damage on i think they have separate percentages so like if you and look at the percent is like invisible right it's invisible because like if you look at a match you'll play like one three stock match with nana you're like how did i do 700 percent you're like or what i guess i see like, how to do that much damage like oh because they it's literally just double whatever mm-hmm. it was doing so that means an army alley's in he's gonna have to be more precise with where he's throwing his pikmin you can't just really let them rip you want them to be on popo most of the time yeah 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 that on the contra- or, excuse me, on the contrary though, um Remix is gonna be in a weird spot too, because like that's gonna probably throw off his desync timings if she's getting ticked by a Pikmin mm-hmm. here and there. And it yeah. takes a lot of precision to do that stuff. It does add a little bit of hit lag and makes it more difficult for your timings. hmm Whatever we see, it's gonna be weird. <laughs> I can confirm yeah. that. It's like we're about to start it up. But yeah, shout outs to CECC for just uh, of course, hosting the event, but also helping me get my caster knowledge up because D to D, Olimar, Ices, Pyra. I'm seeing so many matchups I've never seen before. We are learning day. some new matchups today. Yeah. It's been a very interesting spectator experience. Mm-hmm. Almost none of the matchups were two top tiers. I think there was like right. one Poly Wolf or, like, or something. And I was like, okay. I think it's Pyra Wolf, actually. Don't even try and put a label on Ices on the tier list because in three years it'll be totally wrong. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In, in whatever direction. But all right, so here Remix is against Army Ollie, another pretty decorated player uh, coming through here, and only one stock against three Olimar. Uh, I think Army Ollie's just going to want to stay away at all costs, because if you get in, you're getting wrecked. Yeah, they're definitely just trying to stay away from those side Bs and just throw out uh, F smashes. All right, so yeah, they're, the Pikmin are getting stuck. Um, there might actually be a little bit more time for Army Ollie to react because they both have to choose Look, an option. Okay, he knows the a... matchup. Right there, if you see somebody chase Nana after they're separated, that means they know the matchup mm-hmm, because the mm-hmm. key is separating them, knocking Nana as far away as possible, and hoping she doesn't get saved. Yeah, you actually don't really have to worry about edge guarding Nana herself. You just need to make sure that the partner is busy. Right. So it's literally like a very similar philosophy of two doubles. What's going on? This is scary. Oh, man. The ice is here. And we have no idea what Nana's percent is either. Right. I wonder if it could be like drastically lower than Popo's by that logic too. Who knows? Oh, oh. got the grab and it didn't matter because the other climber. <gasps> is he really going to do this? Oh my gosh. Remix took one more stock. Definitely going to do the VIP of um, Arizona State. Does he have two more Ooh, in him? Oh no. Nana's gone. Oh, now we're in Sopo territory. This yeah. just got exponentially harder. This is this is what I mean. Like, you know, you can, like, if it was like a Polly or like a Wolf or something, like, yeah, she can make a three stock comeback. Whatever, I think. But, like, now Sopo? I can- definitely say this is going to be an Olimar's favorite matchup wise because oh, he's yeah. just going to zone you forever he's going to sit there and throw his pikmin out and stay out of your range and you have like no recovery against a character that's pretty underrated when it comes to edge guarding mm-hmm. 
long lingering hitboxes, you can just throw out purple and red, honestly. Okay, good read on the get up attack. You know, Rimmick's still getting some damage, showing some signs of life, but the shield is at half, so one oh, risky he decision. He had to read scouted there. All right, the shield should be back online. Should still be kind of okay, but this is this is just an insanely hard ask for Rimmick to, Rimmick to do this. Army Ali is totally fine to just sit back and wait for him to come to him. Mm -hmm. Even even taking these side Bs, the percent is going up so gradually, it still doesn't seem that threatening. Mm -hmm. Even if he loses a stock, it really doesn't matter because soon blue up throw is going to be online as a kill option. That's true. He's got purple, blue, red. I think that's a pretty good lineup right now to get the stock. Remix, however, playing some of the best Sopo I've ever seen. Just really just make, making this character look so much more threatening. Just uh -oh, very careful spacing. That's, oh, that might Is he going to be it. able to make it back? Oh. Uh, uh, wow, just barely makes it back. Army, once again, going for that signature uh -oh. runoff dare, and Remix punishes the roll read with an up smash. I refuse to believe that he can do this. At 167? Do How do you not get grabbed? This is such a deficit. Literally, I would just be fishing for blue up there right now. Yeah, literally. Because it's going to take 50 side Bs for it to matter. Mm -hmm. But he's got all the time in the world right now to get the lineup that he wants. We could be seeing potentially one of the greatest comebacks in Smash history i'm not even joking if remix is able to do this this becomes That's oh like, there it is there it is yeah yeah i mean honestly remix made a very 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 valiant attempt to get that down but it's just such a hard hurdle to overcome yeah honestly i would say remix played that i think the best you possibly could have yeah i mean once you lose nana it just becomes so much harder and even still he was undeterred trying his best you know, flourishing, honestly. <laughs> no, honestly, yeah. And some characters, it might not be that bad. Like, you know, it might be somebody you can, like, all right, maybe this down tilt to, like, gimp them or something like that. But, like, Olimar, you're not going to run off and gimp them with Sopo. It's right. just not going to happen. Um, the neutral, it's not really going to be that much in your favor either. Olimar's neutral is definitely going to body Sopo. Like, I mean, it's just tough. Yes, Arizona State lost that one, but they still have the loser's bracket. I would not be surprised to see them coming back in loser's finals, maybe even make it back to grand. Oh, yeah. Honestly, if the, if uh, if everyone else in Arizona State can play, you know, three quarters as well as Remix was just now, yeah. they can I mean, be in grand. If they just adjust the order, they send their players out a little bit, you know, or just counterpick a little bit harder, I could see things going their way next time easily. But, uh, yeah, that aside, congratulations to UT. Um, I mean – I think we're going to get a double UT winner's finals now, right? Yeah, it looks like it's UT versus UT. Yeah. Arlington versus... I uh, keep forgetting. Austin? Keep, Austin. Thank you, Arlington thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so that's actually going to wrap it up for us today. We're going to be back tomorrow on Sunday for our winners, losers, and grand finals. But before we get out of here, we are going to cut away to Pauly in just a moment. Before we leave, I do want to do this. Uh, if you liked, enjoyed, or hated anything that you saw today, feel free to follow me on Twitter at PBOK And Cadence Pika over here. Of course. And uh, I will go ahead. I also, if you're an anime nerd, I don't live here, but if you're an anime nerd, you have any interest in like anime, Marvel, DC, or anything like that, I also do have a podcast called Shonen Chumps. S-H-O-U-N-E-N Chumps. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the podcast drops episodes twice a month on apple Podcasts, spotify anywhere you get a podcast uh so feel free to check that out too if you're that kind of nerd and if you're in the ohio area towards the end of march and want to come to a really awesome regional southern ohio smash 7 is march 26th it's going to be awesome we've got top level players like uh, leon puppe doorstop uh, uh, Hysterica, toast. Hysterica. Toast. it's going to be a very great event even if you can't make it out tune in on twitch other uh, either pblk push block gaming or dragon squad esports it's going to be a very very great event i'm excited to run it but either way that's all for today until we get to winners losers and grants tomorrow so we'll toss it over to poly hype yeah thanks for tuning in guys Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CECC Southwest Invitational. That was the conclusion of Valorant. We saw just some amazing action. I think that was the best set of competitive Valorant we have seen across any CECC tournament so far this year. It was Houston going against Grand Canyon University. They had seen each other in the Grand Finals, and it was all the way to map three, neck and neck, back and forth, each winning the opposite uh, school's map pick. But it was 
Houston that came out as your winners. They are going to advance to our grand final event in May. That was some spectacular stuff. We obviously heard from Eric, uh, their controller player, earlier in that interview. But well done once again to Houston as they are going to be joining us for our grand event. After this, however, we do have more action to come with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And we have some uh, fun little bracket here for Su Super Smash Brothers Ultimate as we are going to start in the winner's finals. It's going to be the number one seed, UT uh, Austin, taking on the number two seed, UT Arlington. Uh, and we have number seven seed, which is a little bit of a Cinderella story. Dixie State in that seven seed awaiting the uh, in the lower half of that bracket to possibly make it back in to the championship bracket. So without further ado, I would love to throw it over to our casters, Cy and Cadence Pika, for the call. Over to you guys. All right, looking forward to seeing some great matches today. We're down to the top three, top of the pack. What do you think, Cy? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So we got to see a lot of really great stuff yesterday from UT Arlington and uh, UT Austin, both respectively. Uh, I think it's really dope that our winner's finals is the exact one and two seed to the bracket. But I'm not going to sleep on Dixie State because they had an incredible match yesterday. Uh against uh, Arlington and they only lost the whole crew battle by like one stop. So it was definitely down to the wire. So, but I do remember saying yesterday, and I think you said the same thing that it would not be surprising at all to see Dixie state call all the way back to uh top three losers finals. That's exactly where they ended up. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'm super pumped. And now that we've seen them and done even a little bit of extra research uh, on them, like the, every player left in this bracket is like really, really talented. Uh, with UT Austin, we saw Rusky Nerd starting off. He was playing Ness, and we I think we saw him get a nine stop. Yes, he soloed an entire crew by himself. Yeah, he ate the whole he ate the whole team uh, by himself. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got really strong results. Uh, LSOE the Rob main is really good too. He's got like local wins, like first out of thirty two at Cityscape. So like they're definitely the team to beat. But um, I can't pick a winner out of this just yet. Uh, just because I think the skill level on all three of these teams is, like, relatively close. Yeah, I mean, Dixie State kind of got a little bit of a rough draw to start fighting the two seed in the first round of the event, but they were undeterred, clearly made a crazy losers run to get all the way back to losers finals. It'll be very interesting to see how they end up stacking up here. If they fall to third or if they're able to claw their way back up to grands, that would be insane to see. Yeah, I think the number one thing we got to do from this point on, of course, you're in top three, so there's no room to sleep on anybody, but you really can't underestimate anybody. Um, on the UT Arlington team, um, who we're about to see come up as well for this match, it's going to be Arlington versus uh, Austin. Is U they're all UTA, yeah. so it's just hard to, <laughs> it's hard for me to like compartmentalize them in my head. But uh, Arlington, we saw, um, they had been starting their matches out with Curry, who was a really talented Incineroar player. Um, I'm guessing both Arlington and Austin are relatively close to uh, a lot of locals, but Arlington players, they tend to go to the Freaks local, and I see their results posted on Twitter all the time. I see Cheeks does really well there. I'll see, um, I want to say Grayson. There's a, I think there's a Bayo down there too. But there's a lot of really prominent Texas players that appear they're local, and with that said, uh, Curry has top aided a few of them um, with, again, you know, Incineroar, who everyone considers a low tier, but... Yeah. Um, He's really smart. We saw him make tons of great plays. He's really good about his conditioning. So if this ends up starting off with um, Rusky and Curry, or if they have to play at all, I'm just really excited to see that. I imagine that they will start with that matchup because yesterday we saw them both teams lead with uh, Rusky, the Ness, and Curry, the Incineroar, every time we saw them play. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine they'll be switching things up. Probably uh, Incineroar versus Ness will be the first matchup we see today. And, you know, in center with that bad recovery, and we've seen Rusky is a huge fan of doing those smash attacks at ledge. Yeah. They are brutal, very devastating. And we have also seen that um, Rusky had some unfortunate SDs throughout the day yesterday. I mean, not Rusky. Um, Curry. Sorry, Curry. Curry had some unfortunate SDs throughout the day yesterday. Uh, it definitely looked like Incineroar's recovery was, like, the main thing holding him back. And on the inverse, we saw Rusky destroying good recoveries. Right. Uh, so... That's the one thing I think that Curry's certainly going to have to be careful of in this matchup. Another thing we saw, though, Rusky really likes to throw out those PK fires that take up a lot of space, and Curry is not afraid to pull the trigger on that downbeat revenge, no. and that will be a very good move to revenge. Break out, get a little bit of armor, maybe even get a follow-up afterwards. But let's see how it shakes out. 
Yeah, and Ness has a ton of really strong moves to get revenge to. Like Nair and Bear would be really powerful. Um, PK Thunder too, which he's not afraid of using on stage. As we we saw see, that. He's using three PK fire, four PK fires now in the first ten seconds of the match. I think that and Smash Attacks are his favorite moves, seriously. Yeah, that and yeah, up and down Smash specifically. But all right, we're getting a nice combo at the beginning, a uh, double fair. Um, some Ness players will try to turn that down throw fair into like a double jump magnet cancel dare. I think Ooh. if they're like at the right position at the ledge, but Rusky was still pretty close to the center. So you saw him kind of just pull back and not go for it. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, the first revenge. Oh gosh. Curry really having to pick his moments here because Ness is a little bit of a mashy character Ooh. can just kind of use his frame data and options to oppress you here. Really weaving in and out. But every hit is so much damage that it really doesn't matter if you only get a hit here and there, you know, because the percentages are relatively even right now. Oh, my God. I cannot believe that grab whiffed. He was right in his face. Curry really likes this Incineroar up smash. I've seen him land a ton of these. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's mad strong. Like, I'm really surprised. Even though Rescue is only, like, 80-something, I'm actually kind of surprised he lived it. Like, I just, I don't see playing move ever. Curry looking pretty strong right now. I'd say he's in the lead, honestly. Yeah, he's actually taking a play out of Rusky's book, and he was pressuring him... Uh, with down tilt trying to catch that two frame. And it's in Roar, if he gets down tilt at the ledge, it's kind of like the bad version of Politanus, but he gets Nair, he gets um, nice. Bear if he's really on the ball, up smash if he gets a read. But that's the up kill. throw, oh yeah, that's super going to kill. Uh, up throw is actually going to be the first stock that he takes. Yeah, the landing aerials Ooh. are giving a lot of mileage to Curry right now. He's just waiting for Rusky to push his buttons and then coming in with a landing fair, landing Nair, and then he's getting that lariat afterwards. He's also like... He's playing a spacing battle with Ness as a character you wouldn't think would be able to deal with it, but he's handling it really well. Uh-oh, that's oh, going to hurt, gonna though. Yeah, PK fire and up smash, tried and true. Um, not giving Rusky any time, or not giving Curry any time to even revenge mm. anything. That Lariat is such a strong option. Just a great get off me. Lots of knockback to push him off stage and set up a ledge trap situation. Going to let Rusky slip by and reset neutral, though. All right, here we go. What are we getting out of this? Going to go for the PK fire again, but Curry's done a pretty good job of just, like, staying out of the range of that. Again, the grab whiffing straight in his face. I guess he needs to run just, like, an inch further because he's getting these reads. He's running up on his shield and grabbing, and it's just whiffing still. Yeah, I think he's pulling the trigger on the grab itself too soon. Here we go. Okay, Curry survives yeah. the yo-yo. Looks like just the hitbox is going to clank with that, but back throw is still going to seal it out anyway, and despite a rough start for Rusky, he has clawed his way back into the lead here. Yeah, and Rusky, he's he's going to take those stocks. The least stocks we saw him take yesterday was five. Oh, so. going for the hard read on the roll again. Not going to give it to him there, Rusky's saying. Not me. I'm Ooh. Not gonna get that. Speaking of right read at the wrong time, Curry did catch that roll read, or rather he predicted the roll, but he just pulled the trigger a little bit too fast. Just like the... Ooh. Ooh. Can I land on me with a hitbox right now? Because my hitbox is going to be much stronger and take your stock. Yeah, really. Like, you take, what, two for Magnet or something for a stop? Yeah, Great there's the revenge on the side B we were talking about. Yeah, I think Rusty's going to have to be really careful to not PK fire. I know it's controlling a lot of the neutral for him, but, like, if he gets a revenge out of that, even at 36, it could be disastrous. Ooh, oh, that's option. pretty big. Uh -oh. This could kill. This could it's kill. It's not going to kill, but it's going to be a lot of damage. That was that's 70%. That's like 70% from one move, yeah. Oh, my God. Just barely off on that down tilt two frame, looking for a panic roll. Once again, not going to give it to him. I think that Curry's going to start recalibrating his reads at the ledge. Oh, dash, wow. dash, 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 does it. He All right. He did it. Dashed in and out for a couple seconds, and he was like, uh, I'm not pushing the button. Where am I? That's got to be a little discouraging on Rusky's side because, like, he died at 120. He got side B at 39 and went from 39 to 100. So, mm -hmm. like, most of that stock was one interaction. Yeah. And he barely lived that one interaction uh, on top of all that, too. And, I mean, we've seen that Rusky has been a very, very strong player for this team. He's been taking a lot, a lot of stocks. So it's going to be a big boon to have him out right away. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So uh, so Arlington is going to take a slight lead with just one stock. Um, Curry's really strong. My guess is that I think the safest person you could send in to take a stock quickly is from a heavy or – it's probably LSOE. Mm -hmm. um, again, he's a really talented rock player. He had a lot of really cool... Um, he was really consistent with his uh, gyro combos. Yes, he had his touch of death pretty down with gyro. Yeah, he really had those ready. Like, even when we were playing in between downtime, Jake was like, I'm just going to keep trying this. Right. <laughs> like, he's, it's inspiring. Yeah, he was my inspiration yesterday in our friendlies. Yeah, so shout-outs to LSOE. Um, so... 
that's my guess for who they're going to send in. They do still have Studs, who's a Yoshi main, and they have Tubic, who is a Steve Pac-Man. Did we see Tubic yesterday? I believe he... We did see Tubic. I think he fought the Ice Climbers player, didn't he? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a very, very close match. That Ices was putting in work. And that Ices is... Um, is he was, still in the event? Was he on Dixie State's team? Mm, I don't think so. I remember... It was Captain Remix, so mm. I'll probably check in a moment. Yeah. But, um... Either way, very curious to see who this team is send in next. Yeah, me too. But that's a really good start to the match. A lot of what um, UT Austin has done to remain the first seed and keep these Ws is send in Rusky and have him literally wipe out half the crew. Just mop the floor with down smash and up smash at ledge. <laughs> yeah. But Curry says, I have a hitbox on my upbeat to contest that. I'll come from an upper angle to where I'm not having to deal with it from below. And then I'll just revenge your PK fires and not care. Right, and like Rusky was very committed to doing the PK fires too. Mm-hmm. Um, again, winners and losers finals will be the best of one. Grands is when it gets to two out of three territory, so these stocks are still extremely, extremely important. Yeah. Um, is there enough time? Let's say hypothetically. So they say it. Let's say they send an LSOE, and he's going against Curry. Is there enough time for Incineroar to get a revenge out in the middle of those combos? You think? Um, if it's true, it's true. But okay. if you're really not quite frame tight with the rob combos then he will be able to eke out a revenge but honestly i don't know if it's even worth it to go for it at that point you just want to air dodge and get out of there yeah you want to really make sure you leave and he does, i mean he does have the option of uh the armor from up b2 just to like straight up evacuate mm-hmm. so who knows but again this is another this whole crew battle we've seen all these crazy not uh like knowledge checks we've seen you know incineroar being like a major threat We've seen Ices be a threat, Deity, Olimar. We've seen a lot of characters that you don't see regularly in the meta really coming through. It looks like we have confirmation on who's coming in. It's going to be Shulker, another Steve player. Shulker's a Steve player. I don't think we got to see Shulker play yesterday, did we? I don't think we did, actually. Uh, unless maybe that's two bigs of a name. And they just have no, I don't think so. I don't know. Well, I don't think I saw this person play, so I'm excited. It's always interesting to see Steve. It's like I see him do something new every single time every I see day. Steve play. Every, every day. time. I think Steve players play Steve as much as they were playing Minecraft. Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah. why their meta is so <laughs> crazy involved. But if there's really one character that can keep Incineroar away, Steve has got that, you know. Breaking through that wall is going to be quite tough. You can't really reason or zone him in return because mm-hmm. you have no projectiles. Like I said yesterday, Incineroar's projectile is fear. Exactly. Oh, he started mining. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to restart. Every Steve has that darn habit. They just want to mine right when they start the game. It's hard to not. It's right there. It's It's a crew battle, people. Yeah, you can't just, you can't have Curry throw away two socks. You're like, oh, I got diamond, gold, I got red. I built a house. There's TNT (laughs) over here. already drew an L for you. (laughs) There's a UFO I've summoned. (laughs) put items on like no you can't do all that you gotta chill yeah all these trigger happy steves hopefully this time he remembers wait until two stocks are gone and then start mining your stuff but yeah i mean technically most of steve's damage does come from being like in your face Mm -hmm. but and i think that those combos will be pretty revengeable because i don't really think that the steve up tilt strings or jab strings or f tilt strings all those moves look the same i don't think that it's exactly true true combo but it's so hard to get out of unless you have a quick option like revenge which Mm -hmm. is gonna counter and give a quick little hitbox right also we saw curry comboing off the revenge hitbox often yesterday Mm -hmm. and i say often because i've seen it never before right i saw it twice in one day so in three years that is often (laughs) Um, definitely be dangerous for the Steve player here. All right. Steve, do not press B. <laughs> yeah. Be please. strong. Have that Hold little your power. Fire. Set the controller down. Here. Yeah. Do some taunting, maybe. You know, just gas yourself up a little bit. All right, he did a taunt. Okay, he's taunting. He's waving. He knows. He knows. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, go. All right, cool. <laughs> cool he's got the jerky he's solid all right so of course um uta austin <laughs> has the lead uh by this one stock um it's an order does kill quickly so i i really don't have strong predictions for this this is also yet another matchup i don't think i've ever seen before mm-hmm. oh my lord always big damage from that side b even without the revenge boost 
used. Mm -hmm. I like him throwing out the minecart just to like keep him at bay. Like he's not even going for like the the knockback of being in it. He's just throwing it out just mm -hmm. to get away from him. Oh, God. okay. I don't think Curry's gonna go down lying down. He's trying to take a stock before he leaves. Maybe even two. Can we talk about Curry's uh -oh. brain? Right? Oh, he's dead. That's he's super it. dead. Let's, Let's talk about Curry. Curry's brain. So Shulker builds a wall and is just like, hey, if you come over here, there's like a thousand different things I can do. And Curry's just like, oh, no. what if I just spin? That was 70% for him whiffing a revenge just about. That was so much damage off that combo. My God. And he was also just at Wood Tools. He does need to make sure he gets back to that card and mine something pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, that was a really strong start. If he had been able to finish with the up smash, it would have been stopped too. But still, got him at 97%. Definitely playing really, really careful. Don't want this lead to get any worse than it is because they are up two stocks now. Yeah, 97 is really... Not quite kill percent for Incineroar yet. I still think he can put a lot of work in. Getting the tech off that block there going to save him from being in a terrible position. Yeah, that's. I think that's the main thing that throws people off when they're fighting Steve. Is just like there's so many like situations where you can just tech at random, like mm -hmm. center stage that you're just not ready for. Very smart of uh, Curry to counter that minecart coming, and that's a really tough option for a lot of people to deal with. But revenge is just going to make it not matter at all. I don't care that it's a command grab. I'll just counter the hitbox and deal with it later. Yeah, Revenge finally going offline. Oh, oh my! There. I don't think it would have killed, but man, it would have hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is again. That Not game kills kill Sparks at 40%. Rage is a scary thing. Oh, yeah. Curry is doing such a good job of just melting these stocks out of nowhere. Which is, I mean, I guess exactly what you need for a crew battle. Yeah. Neutral, yeah. never heard of it. Give me the stock. Looks like Shulker is going to be able to have a diamond online soon when he can get to his mining cart or mining Oh, there it is! Another up smash. Arlington now up so many stocks, and this is what I've this is what I was thinking about earlier. Like all of Steve's best tools, you do have to kill from Incineroar's range, and Curry is just really, really comfortable yeah. being in somebody's face. Curry putting in an insane amount of work right now, and there, it there goes. it is. <laughs> My goodness, Shulker finally able to take that first stock, and he was in a really good spot. Like, like he put like ninety on him. And then Curry was like, none of this matters to me. Like, I'm taking another stock. If you're Curry, you can't really be mad about that. Five stocks to start out the match is a, such a good way to be ahead. Oh, yeah. Curry put in phenomenal work right there, which is what I expected because I was really pleased uh, with what he was doing yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Arlington still is going to be coming into this with a two-stock lead over uh, Austin. That puts us at 6-4. to four. And let's look at who else. Arlington... Um, might send in. So, oh, they have they have two really two other really strong players. They have Army Ollie, who's a really talented Olimar player. Uh, and looking at his results, he's got like twenty fifth out of one eighty two at. And this is the name of this tournament. <laughs> Kukus in the milkshake machine. Oh wow! Yeah, I know. Uh, also <laughs> got third out of fifty one at Call to Sack Clash. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen this person's clips on Twitter. Uh, he's really talented. And there's also Davey. Uh, who goes to the Freaks events. He's won a couple of the Freaks events, and if he doesn't win, he normally lands a top eight. But we saw Davey yesterday. He was the Pokemon trainer player. Oh, that's right. That's right. He and was the one that didn't really like using Squirtle, right? He used Squirtle the least, mm -hmm. for sure. We saw him. He was in a situation where he only had to take one stop, and he used all three Pokemon to take that one oh, wait, stop. Oh, no, uh, wait, Looks like Davey is a Pyramithra player, actually. Davey's a Pyramithra player? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I must have had the wrong Davey. Uh, hmm. I saw a really prominent uh, Pokemon trainer. Yes. Maybe I got my names wrong. I'm not sure. There was a very good PT, but I also remember seeing some super clean Pithra play coming out from Davey. Maybe he fought the PT, because remember there was one point where it was Pithra PT. Maybe that's what it was. Okay, yeah. Well, if he's in winner's finals, that means he came out on top versus the extremely talented PT we were just talking about. So <laughs> yeah. This man must be even more talented. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, shout-outs to Curry. He really really put the team on his back. It would be very hard to see that team lose from here. Yeah, like, that's you're sitting team. pretty when you're up five stocks like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God, that was just the first person he threw in. Like, that's mm -hmm. so intimidating. <laughs> no one knows what the heck Incineroar does. These quote-unquote low tiers can get a lot of mileage from just matchup checking you. Right, and especially if there's Incineroar that's, like, grinding with, like, top-level talent down mm -hmm. there in Texas. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen the rest of Arlington's team is very talented as well. Between Yoshi, I believe Tubic the Steve might even be on their team as well. So he probably knows the Incineroar, the Incineroar Steve matchup quite well already. He probably does. And like, how many people have that matchup out, period, Not on me. either side, you know? Right. Um, 
But it definitely looked like he did because, like, as soon as he was trapped in that box with Steve, he just did um, he just did Larry, and it's like, yeah, this would actually beat everything Steve would do. Mm-hmm. He would try to like pressure you with mine card or up tilt or any of those things because like you're literally trapped in such a small space, like there's nowhere to run from it. He's yeah. like, oh, I won't run from it. I will just be invincible through it. And, and honestly, set this up. Incineroar's slow ground speed doesn't really matter that much against a character like Steve that isn't exactly fast himself. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't see Steve zooming around the stage like he's Sonic or Mithra. No, no, no. Like Thank that. God. Yeah, Can you he imagine? sits over there in the corner. Can you imagine if Steve thing. was as fast as Mithra? I don't want to imagine that. Top way. one. <laughs> Easily. You would never catch that guy. Um, and even still, he's still kind of gets some movement options out of mine card. It's just really committal, you know. But like his his innate movement options, they're just not that scary. Um, but either way, we should have this other player in here in just a moment. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Of course, we had a blast yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, today's gonna be even better because now we're at the top. We're only gonna see the best of the best left in this bracket. And uh, yeah, it is it, it is Davy coming in as the uh, Pyromyth player. Looks like. We're being told Davy plays both, so I guess he does have a PT as well as a Pyromithra. He just likes to switch characters in the middle of a match, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, thank God. I'm not crazy. Okay. Because <laughs> I found, like, a lot of results for a PT. Right. I, yeah. just, I just assume. If your character has a down B that switches you to a different character, he will play them. Yes. He plays five people by playing two people. <laughs> Shout-outs to Davy. Davy's always playing Cruz. All right. Here we go. So starting off Mithra against Steve definitely makes a lot of sense. Not going to give him any space whatsoever to set up, um, which is the main thing. Like Pyra, sure, she can do a lot of damage. She can disrupt neutral a lot with that side B, but just being in that zone with just moves that are faster than Steve, which doesn't happen to Steve often, definitely going to Oh, is my dead? God. What was that? What a read. He said, down here, I'm not going to go for what's true. I'm just going to run in and read your air dodge with one of the strongest death smashes in the game. So that lasted all of about 20 seconds. I think Rex was on screen as long as Steve was. Just yeah. <laughs> like... uh, well, UT Austin not going to be able to get a lead going here at all. They're down now, I believe, six stocks. Is that right? Uh, It's six to three now. Okay, so they're on their last player. Yeah, they're on their last player. And wow, that was... I didn't even have enough time to theorize why that was going to work no i mean we know traditionally big swords hurt steve you know sephiroth cloud who's got a big sword pyro who's fast mithra you want to be fast switch to her you need to kill switch to pyro and that's exactly what he did yeah she literally exploits the two biggest weaknesses in him by herself Mm -hmm. that's insane i'm gonna ask a silly question there is no sour spot on that forward smash, right? I don't think so. Because he I was like in her body, it. and it looked just as devastating. Uh, it's like a football field length move, and it is sweet spot the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> DNOC. 599. We 599. paid for that character, but they paid for Steve, too, you know? That's so. true. Steve Steve, Steve is not an honest man. Put some respect but on it's... Steven's name. Right. Very good point. Uh... So I'll be curious to see who UT Austin's anchor is here. They've got a tall order ahead of them, taking six stocks from a couple of very proficient players. Yeah, they got to fight a really talented Pyramithra. And then if they are able to beat that person, um, they also have to fight like that really good Rob, too. Mm-hmm. So. If that's who Arlington even elects to send in, who knows? It might be someone different. Yeah, I think they had a couple players in the roster they can go with. I think they had a couple extras just hanging out. Because I believe they had the Yoshi play. As well, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah, definitely gonna be a tough day for them. I mean, it's, I don't even have time to, like, break down that stock. It was right. like what seconds. analysis was there to be had that didn't last long enough for me to get a sentence out of my mouth? <laughs> God, I... That was a vine. UT Arlington <laughs> like, did not come to play. No. no, they didn't. That was a vine. I don't... Good luck. They said, we are the one seed. This is why. Let me show you. And it's against the two seed. It's not even like, it's not even like pools are really early in or anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. Rusky's really good. Like, okay, the last player coming in for Austin is going to be Studs, the Yoshi player. Just the Yoshi if player. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that Arlington also had a Yoshi on their roster, right? So this is going to be matchup knowledge that they have now. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm going to have that wrong. But yeah, so Yoshi versus Pyramithra. Ah. Uh, 
Uh, Yoshi struggles with swords <laughs> traditionally uh, since 64, I believe, right? Yeah. And his weight doesn't really change much of what Pyro's going to do. Mm-mm. I mean, you're and- going to have to get super lucky to like use your double jump armor and survive a hit. Yoshi can jump out of a lot of you know multi-hits and stuff before finishers arrive, but really the only multi-hit that character has is Nair. And Pyro's isn't even, you know? Right. I was going to say, I don't... I don't even count that as a... That's not a multi-hit. It's just Mithra active, Nair right? sure is. Mithra, but I mean Pyro. Mm-hmm. No, definitely not. It's no. just act. Yeah. It looks like a multi-hit, but it's just like... It's just one hit that is just really lingering. I mean, Yoshi has to hit you with his foot or his snout to get anything going, you know? And Mithra's mm-hmm. just going to say, no, I'm over here. No. I really don't know what he's going to do in neutral. I'm really trying to think about it. Because, like... His aerial approaches, they can be good. You know, he can come in with, like, Nair, Egg if he's really feeling himself. But, like, so much of that loses to just Pyra literally jumping in place and doing yeah. dare and back air. Um, I mean, he's really going to have to rely on his air mobility, you know, to just weave in and out of the hitboxes and hope for the best and land stray hits when he can. Yeah, I... I I'm Maybe sure. we'll see an answer. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm really sure curious. that since Studs is their anchor, that he's a very talented player, but you definitely don't want to be staring down the barrel of this matchup to end it all. You no, know? no. And then a robot after that. You know, Potentially, it, yeah. Potentially. If we can even get there. But yeah, it definitely looks like they are pretty confident, pr- pretty confidently going to be walking into uh, grand finals, mm-hmm. I would say. UTL Arlington definitely sitting pretty right now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure studs will be entering the arena <laughs> any minute now. <laughs> yeah. Any minute now. Any there minute. there we go. Okay. All right. Perfect. The, when you're waiting for something, you just have to get more and more passive aggressive. We manifested it. Yes. You just, we were like, send them in. Now I see that Pikachu avatar, but I don't think it's going to be a Pikachu. No. That'd be interesting. That would be like a great choice. So it looks like the stage we're going to go to is PS2, though, so at least studs will have a lot of room to work with, and it won't be a small stage where Pithra's up in your face the entire time, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that'll at least come to his benefit a bit. Hopefully you can find something like take advantage of like the platform layout, too, because, um, I mean, if you get dared near a platform by Pyra, you just should die. Oh, okay, Sora. Okay, it's not Yoshi, it looks like. Going to Sora instead. Okay, you played this matchup in East right? Uh, uh, this is uh, definitely a losing matchup for Sora still. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sora doesn't really like quick frame data. Does not like people all up in his face. He needs kind of a second to set up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mithra, not going to give that to him at all. Can we talk about that side be getting canceled immediately? Right. <laughs> like the first frame, she didn't even get to say, or whatever it is she says. She just, nope. Even though this is a losing matchup for Sora, I still would probably say it's a better matchup than Pithra Yoshi. Absolutely. So I really don't blame him for picking Sora instead. Yeah, much better matchup. See, you see Studs cr- trying to create space right now. Does not want um, Davy to be all up in his face. Mm-hmm. And Davy's doing a good job of just kind of weaving in and out of the mid range, just like waiting for Sora to commit to one of those mm-hmm. moves. Because he really does have the ground speed to Ooh. just react. Got good reads here on the air dodge coming in. Oh, that could have been huge. And of course, the one spot that Studs is going to have a big advantage is off stage. That's Pithra's one weakness, right? Is their bad recovery. Mm-hmm. And Sora can go for about as long as he wants to off stage. Stall with every single move. Got a huge double jump, up B, and then side B afterwards. He has every option to take care of you off stage. He definitely looks like he's comfortable in this matchup, though. He's getting mm-hmm. a lot of really solid punishes. He didn't take the bait on Davy's uh, neutral B. Like he, he looks like he's more than ready. That was nice on Davy there to foresight through the fireball to just get him in closer. Good zone breaking option. Oh, wow. wow that angle was awful. Uh, Studs just barely surviving. Looking for him to roll into the up tilt there. Studs not going to give it to Davy though. Now, Studs can, he can hang out on stage for a while, but like if Davy does oh, find that dare, he, he doesn't ran into it. his shield and he said, I know you're going to jump straight up here. Let me put a key there. Yeah, he's definitely playing this really calculated right now. All right, forcing her off stage. She doesn't have a double jump. Oh, but that dare. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought up air was going to It wasn't come. quite true, but still going to get it on the landing there. Yeah, I think that's definitely the play to just, like, slowly, slowly kind of close the gap and just kind of force it to the ledge. Yeah. Like, that's 
definitely going to be like his time to shine. And three has a lot of situations too where she wants to put you in a tech chase and then use her incredibly fast ground speed to react where you're going to go. But of course, that's going to get screwed up a little bit by Wi Fi. We already saw there he had got a dash attack to put studs into a tech chase and couldn't quite react to his option, but still covering with some good damage here with a multi jab. Oh, nice. Actually getting the down to the, looking for like a big commitment from studs, but studs, yeah. studs seems to be making mostly pretty, pretty good decisions here. Both players are just kind of putting the other on notice a little bit because it's like they're going for hit one of a combo and then letting the player air dodge and looking for a punish on the air dodge, but not quite getting it. So I'm sure that we'll see some of these reads pay off here in the next minute or two. Yeah. Even right there, he went for the second jab and was trying to find an answer from Davey to see what he's going to do, but he just got punished instead. Uh, now we got Pyre in a ledge trap situation. Just going to get up attack to alleviate that pressure. Oh, oh nice dash attack is going to come through. Strong dash attack covers a lot of space very quickly. Well, here it is. UT Austin has one last stock for this crew battle. Things are even on this stock, but uh, Arlington still has a whole other player. Wings. This is just looking awesome for uh, for Houston, but I don't know. Let's let's see what let's see what they got. Yeah, Stud's looking for a lot of up out of shield. I don't blame him. It is a quick option, but going to be scary if you're not able to get it off. I know you have side B to land afterwards, but that still is definitely punishable. Ooh, getting a little bit egregious with that dash grab. It looked like it was hard. almost a hurt box shift because he down tilted and it kind of pulled Mithra back a little bit. I think mm. the grab would have hit otherwise. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, Davey successfully got the foresight, but um, Sora's double jump height is just so crazy. He wasn't able to get anything from it. He was able to just kind of get out of there and leave. I like the way that Davey is playing Mithra in neutral and then switching the Pyra just when he's got studs off stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good idea. He also does use the color where Pyra and Mithra are backwards. Like, oh, oh, strong counter there. Man, countering a Pyra anything is definitely going to be a stop. Yeah, studs going to throw him off stage here. Obviously, you want to put Mithra in an edge guard situation. Mm, if he had been able to react to that high up, it could have been oh. it. He Went for a looking, crazy read. He was looking for him to tech on the platform there. It didn't quite pan out. Oh, this is super close. Uh-oh. Is he okay? No, he's fine. Oh, almost got down. Oh! And there's the up tilt on the roll that he was looking for in the first couple of stocks. Davey said, I'm just going to keep putting this out. Eventually, you will be forced to roll into it. And going to clean up, head into grand finals off of that. Yeah, I think that Studs was panicking a little bit. Because he did go, he did only just barely make it back to that ledge. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a scary position. I'm pretty sure that was Aaron on his end. I don't think he wanted to end up down there, especially when there is a huge spike looming directly above you. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, it was a really well-played game. Uh, they might even want to start him off. They might even want to start Studs in the next battle. I, I think he played really well. But, um, yeah, they're just going to have to see what they can figure out, and they're going to have to take it over against Dixie State. Yeah. Um, that should be another really good match. Of course, Dixie State... Really talented players. We're going to see them in just a moment. But while we're getting that arena set up and everything else, we're going to cut away to a short break. We'll be back with some more uh, CECC Smash action in just a moment. Whoa. Hey, welcome back to some more CECC action. Uh, I think we're actually going to cut immediately into the match here. So now we have our losers finals. We have Dixie State versus UT Austin. And it looks like they're starting off with... Um, Poob and LSOE. Yes, Poob and LSOE. Um, now, we were talking about uh, LSOE a lot earlier. Uh, really talented Rob player, has a lot of zero deaths. However, Poob on the DS uh, on the Dixie Sports team, who, by the way, the 7 seed... Oh, my God. Oh, my Just Jesus. <laughs> with the taunt, too. <laughs> uh, before I can even say it, really strong D2D player. We saw him putting in a ton of work yesterday. And uh, killing Rob at 75, I mean, that's a play out of his yeah. book, honestly. I was going to say, it is not very often that you see Rob dying at 70. And this inhale is putting in a lot of work for Poob already. He's just inhaling the gyro every single time and saying, no, you don't get one of your best neutral tools right now. Yeah, he's being really great at 70. It. Yeah, and honestly, percent-wise, he's still in a decent spot. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, playing... 84 is really not kill percent for one of the heaviest characters in the game, you know. And I guess I could have said that about Rob, too, but then he died at 70. So what <laughs> right. we know? Yeah, LSOE is looking shook right now. He's like, all right, I died really early. My projectiles aren't working. What are we going to do about it? I don't it? think he's going to get a kill here. Yeah, especially with only one hit of up tilt connecting. Probably down throw will be a kill option now, though, either with up tilt up air or maybe even up smash. Oh, just going for the up smash raw. I don't blame him. Honestly, Gyro was on the other side. He was probably looking for like some kind of reaction. I don't blame him. 
Honestly, as playing this matchup from the Rob in before, it can be a little weird to navigate because, like I said, inhale Ooh. can really mess with your projectile game, and you don't. Oh, know. definitely didn't want that side B. I think he was just trying to up B to recover there. Of course, I have been a victim to that misinput myself. Yeah, you very rarely see a Rob SD, but that's gonna give Dixie stock two stocks or Dixie State two stocks. I'm so, I'm so sorry. It's gonna give Dixie State two stocks. Um, again. Super uphill battle they fought. You know, they, they started off fighting against the second seed, uh, lost by one stock, and clawed all the way back from round one into loser finals. So. I mean, LSOE looking undeterred, though. He's still trying to run it with these nares, maybe get a sandwich between the gyro and down tilts there. Looks like he's trying to find some answer. He's able to stop the Gordos with his projectiles. Mm -hmm. So as long as he doesn't have his projectile out first and is responding to poops, then it looks like he can get something done. Oh, scary position to be in there about DDD with that big up air he has. Wow, that did a lot of shield damage. Oh, no, no way. No, no, He was going for a huge read. That would have broken shield. Oh, yeah. Anytime I see Jet, Hummer, Jet Hammer come out, I'm terrified. He's going to set up a ledge trap here. Let's see if Poop can avoid it. Just going to wait out the gyro. Yeah, he just said, I'm going to do nothing. This might be the weekend of DDD because I've seen so many Twitter clips this weekend uh, from a, up smash there. Yep. From an East Coast major. DDD just going crazy. Oh, he just tried to kill him again at 70. Ooh, These God, are some haymaker dash attacks that Poob are going for, but they've worked out so far. Yeah, Poob definitely in a pretty good spot to take this. He's only he's not even at I wouldn't even call this mid percent yet. Uh, he's one good read away. LSOE is playing really, really carefully. Uh oh. Oh, that's big. Yeah, could have maybe gotten a kill there if he. Oh! oh! Wow, that is not the way I expected that game to end. He killed him at 70 in return. Good stuff to LSOE there, placing that back air exactly where it needed to go. Even a character as thick as DDD is still dying at the ledge from that back air. And that wasn't even like a, I'm chasing you out in the blast zone. It was just a ledge jump read back air. Like, mm -hmm. my goodness, that move is really, really, really good. I was going to comment that Poop was making really good use of his multiple jumps there to kind of mix up LSOE on when he would land and where and with what move, but then the multiple jumps kind of bit him in the butt there at the end, getting back here just for jumping. Well, Dixie State once again fighting an uphill battle, but only really just barely. You know, they're only down like the one stock. And let's take a look at some of the other players on the Dixie State team. I Sorry, believe this is a run back because it was the two versus seven seed in the first round, and now it's the two versus seven seed in losers finals. I believe so. This mm -hmm. crew have already faced each other in the past. You might be right, actually. I'm so sorry. Just pull the notes up. And they definitely did not have LSOE versus Poob to start out last time. I believe we saw Poob fight Army Ali. Remember? Right. Yeah, that was what we saw, and we were seeing. We were. Um, relishing in how crazy he, his neutral against Omar was. Yeah. He was just being really creative. He was inhaling the Pikmin and spitting them back out at him. It's getting weird. The yeah. whole time, Poob has been very impressive with his uh, competence in the top-tier matchups. You know, DDD not known for having good top-tier matchups, but he is really finessing and making it work still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He really is. And we saw D3 Will pulling off some crazy stuff this weekend over at Glitch. I think he ended up, I think he got 33rd out of like over 600. With crazy just result DDD. for a character like DDD. Yeah, that's outside of literally just Animus and uh, yeah, literally just Animus, at least in America. You never see that. So it'll be interesting to see who Dixie State puts in next to deal with this Rob. Of course, LSOE only has one stock, but we did see him take stocks in about three seconds flat yesterday. So oh, yeah. whoever they send in, they need to be really confident they're not going to hit get hit with some gyro shenanigans and die at zero. Yeah, they're definitely going to want to have to, like, zone as much as they possibly can. And mm -hmm. I say zone, I really kind of mean counter zone because Rob also can zone you too, like, if he right. decides to play that game. Rob is very content to be on the opposite side of the screen or be directly in your face, see dropping gyro. He does not mind either way. It's not really a stage position he's, like, bad in for real, mm -hmm. real. He lands on you better than most people, actually. Yes. Nair is minus three, I believe. You got to parry that stuff if you want to punish. Yeah. And you got to make sure you have a very fast punish post parry mm -hmm. too. So it's, it's just really hard. Extremely active move, extremely safe. And then Rob has, you know, he can spot dodge, he can roll afterwards, he can do down tilt. Another extremely, extremely fast depressing move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we could see them send in, they can send in Zarek, uh, who's a really good Pokemon trainer player. They can send in Gila, who's the, uh, I think Z Gila is the uh, Pyramithra player we saw. They're pretty good. They, um, they went all the way out to uh, main stage, competed there, and that was a pretty big major. So they definitely have some experienced players on their team. And 
uh, based on their result from this alone, no matter what happens, I'm sure the next time they're in like an, um, a collegiate event like this, I'm sure they're uh, I'm sure their seed is going to be definitely reflecting this. Oh yes, they've really upset so many players to get here. Dixie State sending some messages to us there. This is a psychological warfare. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it looks like we're getting the Pithra player coming in. I believe it's Gila. It is Gila. Right? Okay. And we did see some good stuff coming out from Gila yesterday. I remember I was very impressed with their Pithra play. And traditionally, this is not a good matchup for Rob, but like I said in the past, Rob has those quote-unquote bad matchups where they're bad, but he can still finesse his way into some zero to deaths. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, both... Pyra and Mithra are pretty susceptible to that. Mm -hmm. But all right, looks like we're going to be starting off uh, with Mithra instead, which of course makes sense. You want to close that gap against Rob. You don't want to have to like fight a zoning battle where you can't zone back. But also, Mithra is one of a few characters that actually has the frame data to like contest Rob. Like Rob is like a big character. Oh, He's yeah. not a slow character. His frame data is nuts. Now Rob does really have the off stage play on deck here too. He's going to be able to take advantage of that one weakness that Mithra has, but just as a matter of getting her into that position to be able to do so. Yeah, it definitely looks like Gila is extremely committed to holding center stage at all costs. Um, or at least trying to, because the risk of being tapped at the ledge with anything at low or mid percents can just very easily get you a stop. You definitely want to make sure you clean this up. You don't want the gap to be any wider, because Rob is just such a volatile character. There's just so Ooh. many ways he can he can take a stop without you even thinking about it. That F smash, he almost got the mid through the air dodging the ledge there, but he just didn't quite clip. LSOE looking really strong here. I think he's in a position to take at least a stock before he goes out. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of not overextending, too. Like, uh, Gila was in a lot of pressure on that platform. He's, like, forced to tech in place. There's projectiles all over the place. And he, when he saw the second fair wasn't going to connect, he just started reeling back and just went straight back to center and just trying to force her to panic even further yeah. without extending himself. LSO, he kind of letting these kill moves rip there for the past few seconds. He was doing some F smashes and up smashes. He knew Gyro was placed right in front of him, so Ooh, he can't really mess with it. Probably an up smash here. Or just an up air to still take the stock. That works, too. Yeah, I think LSOE was pretty keyed in that uh, Gila really needed to make sure... Uh, now, honestly, you're a kill person that. again if you're Gila right now. It's true. And Big Laser already kind of sent you halfway there. It's like that percent of 0 to 30, you're at kill percent, and then you're safe. Uh, kind of. <laughs> until kinda. about 80. <laughs> Rob definitely has no shortage of ways to seal stocks and... LSOE definitely content to just sit back and wait for his moments like these. LSOE is playing ridiculous. It's been like two and a half minutes. He's only taking 50% against freaking Pyra Mithra. Yeah, he's playing incredibly safe right now. Like oh. Pyra has whole strings to do 40, or uh, Mithra does. This might be a stock too, depending on how he does the ledge trap. Okay, not quite. Oh. F throw. No, going for the down throw instead. Ooh, okay. trying to go for a big read. Honestly, his percent was low enough where it was really no risk. All right, here this we go again. Kill. Oh, he is full charging those things, but... Luckily, Gila getting a good mash out of there. Yeah, he's really, really committed to mashing out. But that does tell LSOE to just kind of go for the up air instead. And that yeah. was what took the first stop. That's and that nair was crucial. Uh-oh. Almost got that down there. Yeah, LSOE is definitely setting up some very scary positions for Gila to be in. And there's Ooh. another stock. He's taking two. This is a very strong lead for, uh, is it? It's Austin. Austin, Austin yeah. Right. Oh, man. Now he's starting to cook with the uh, Z-drop into the Nairs. Um, he's in a really good position to take all three of these yeah, stocks. Back throw. Reset the offstage situation. Looking for a jump. Gila not going to give it to him. Gila has just connected so few hits. And he's been at a percent where, like, these dares will, will kill. But LSOE's defense is just insanely yes. good. He's doing very good at boxing and just keeping Gila away in the range he wants him to be in. Oh, not even going to get that throw either. It just looks like there's no way for him to seal this out. Didn't quite get the tech chase there. A little bit harder to react to online. Oh, oh. wow. Throw the gyro oh my at a gosh. disadvantage. Okay. Yep, definitely going to get punished super hard for that big read attempt. It almost landed, though. He had the tech chase. If he was just a little bit sooner, he might have been able to get that third stock out. But Gila going to hang on by a thread. I mean, we saw LSOE put in a lot of work with only one stock left. So maybe Gila is about to return the favor right now and do the same. Yeah, he's going to have to. And I think LSOE was looking for Gila to jump again because Gila had been throwing out a lot of those pirate dares, as you do. Mm -hmm. But uh, just was a little bit off on the read. He went for a lot of those fully charged up smashes. Yes. That was actually the only, like, notable thing that LSOE was doing that was, like, getting punished. Everything else is just, like, a really completely sound neutral. Just very solid. Just get the hits where he can and sit back when he can. 
But yeah, Arlington's got quite the lead right now. And again, uh, Pyramithra, that's a character that can get skimped really easily. It didn't come in, into that match, which is the more surprising thing that LSOE was able to take two stocks off without any like offstage or gimmick shenanigans, just mm-hmm. like really good neutral. Because um, Rob's a character that can bully them there. But oh, yeah. Um, who knows who they're going to send in? Uh, hopefully it's somebody else that has a solid game plan because Pyramithra, as much as we're talking about how fast Rob can take a stock, they're not too far behind. No, they just have the neutral to oppress you the whole stock until it's time to be at 80 or 90, and then you start fishing for down ears with Pyro, and the rest is history, right? Yeah, and even the word, even fishing is, um, fishing has more negative connotations than it deserves with Pyra, only because it's so unbelievably safe yeah. to look for those down airs. Very safe. A lot of people's neutral is just down air, down air, down air with Pyro. You just jump and do it over and over. Because even if you try to jump to get out of the way and don't get spiked, the sour spot of down air is going to kill you off the top. Right, sour spot, allegedly. Yeah, and I've seen so many conversions from that too. Like, of course, you can go straight into up smash. Sometimes people go straight into up air. But I've also seen people starting to switch it up and go for down air and then just go for like grounded up B as well. Especially if you're near a platform. So there's just a ton of ways that she gets to kill you from that. And it used to be you kind of had to look for like one option based on your percent. But now, with all three of those options in the game, it's, as long as she gets that down here, yeah. she's just going to kind of find it now. Now, this is interesting. They're sending in Rusky Nerd, the Ness, to deal with Pirate Mithra. Um, I don't put anything past Rusky because no. I've only seen him thoroughly beat bad matchups. He's, the only character he lost to was a good matchup. He's only played against bad matchups, essentially, aside from that Incineroar player, right? I think he only knows, well, not only knows, but he is a god in his bad matchups, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, as we saw with his uh, uh, down smash skills with the ledge, uh, this is a character that really is going to have a hard time navigating around that. Oh, yeah, you make one mistake as Pyramid throw off stage, and it's going to be curtains to either PK fire, smash attack at ledge, maybe even a down air if Rusky's feeling super bold. He can even harass with PK thunder pretty well off stage to you mess know with what? your options. Yeah, you're right. I don't think she actually has a way to... Like, if she loses her jump to that, I think she's just guaranteed dead, actually. Mm-hmm. And we know Rusky likes to take up a lot of space with these PK fires that are retreating here, just try and catch people dashing in towards him. But I think Foresight might be able to break out of those PK fires from the throw. Now, once again, uh, Gila confidently starting off with Mithra, which makes a lot of sense. You can out-frame beta this character while still doing a pretty good job of mostly outranging him. So it can make things really tough for Rusky in the neutral. But Rusky's showing us that he's still got those combos, too. Like He's not looking for, like, only PK Thunder and then getting it confirmed. He's got a lot of... Uh, we've seen him get a lot of, like, up-air chains. Mm. We've seen him sneak in a lot of, like... Does that? That would be a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. I think he realized, let me switch back to Mithra. I'm not quite getting in the kill percent yet. Yeah, he threw one Pyra side beat, almost got reflected. He said, we're just going to put yeah, that away. Let me think game. about that. Oh, switching back, though. I'm kind of surprised with how often he's switching between Pyra and Mithra. Most of the time, you see people hang on to Mithra until it's about 80, 90. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Pyra doesn't seem to be getting it done uh, for mm. him right now. Oh, Good no scout jump. on that air dodge. He's probably going <gasps> to kill him here. Oh. Yep. Oh wow. my god! Even missing the first thing he went for with the PK flash, he just knew I can run up and still catch this up smash regardless. Yeah, and that's that's just what we were talking about. Like, there's so mm-hmm. many different ways that Ness can bully her at the ledge, and Rusky's just really good at covering the ledge. Using PK flash, that wasn't something I thought about, but it's super smart, because she lingers so long if she doesn't, like, snap. She has to, like, yeah. do the shot. It after forces her. the air dodge, essentially, you know, and I think that if she had gone for the Pyrus, or the Mithra side B, rather, that that would have covered it as well. Yeah, I think she was just kind of screwed. Rusky, I mean, once again, just a god at his bad matchups. This man is untouched in minus twos. But like Ness loses to Paulatena and Pyramithra and Lucina and, Lucina, and, and Rusky's just like, I can't. What did you say? Yeah, Sidian. Not my Ness. Not this Ness. This Ness does not. So now. Dixie's sitting on their last person again, I mm-hmm. believe. Yeah, Dixie's at the, the, the end of the line for them. And uh, this is Luz's <laughs> final, so it's their final chance here. Uh, Zarek th- the Min Min, that's who's coming in. That's who it was. Now, maybe Rusky will add this to the list of bad matchups that he's a god at, because this is another bad matchup. People are just throwing the whole house at this man, and he does not care. He's had such a tough... Like, if I went on his Twitter, he'd be like, what? These haters praying on my downfall. Yes. <laughs> he was like, he has only fought every character you can think of that body's nest send a rosalina in there Forget right it. might as well might as well measure. a villager what whatever 
this is definitely going to be a tough one. I mean, Ness is known for having really good directional air dodge to get back to ledge. That thing's almost like a third jump for him. It really is. Min Min's extreme activity on her smash attacks, plus being able to angle them down toward Towards the edge like that is going to eat up those directional air dodges all day. Yeah. We haven't really seen a lot of people go off stage super hard to challenge Rusky, but Min, Min doesn't have to do so. She can challenge you super... Oh, uh, doesn't he have to take some stocks? Rusky didn't die. Oh, he didn't die no. once? Oh, mm -hmm. well, what am I thinking? He never died. Uh, yep, so as you can, <laughs> as you can see, straight into the right edge, in yeah. Uh, I think both these people can honestly exploit the other person's recovery pretty decently, I would imagine. Um, I'm... Not a thousand percent sure how well Yo Yo interacts with Tether, but I'm sure it's not bad. Uh oh, got the grab, which means the laser is going to be powered up on the dragon right now. Oh, strong things coming in. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Going to be able to harass Ness super hard off the edge. Shout out to Rusky, though, going for that aggressive PK Thunder 1. Really good idea. Oh, wow. Forced the air dodge from Min Min, and she was not able to get her up be out in time there. That's a stock for Rusky. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. He might have been at like a position where like maybe the upbeat wasn't sure if it should attack Ness or grab the ledge. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but either way, that's what Rusky needs for this. Oh my god, he just tried to end the second stock. Is Eric gonna let him drift back to the ledge there though and get safe? He's going for huge reads on tech chases right now. If Zarek had rolled in, that F smash would have killed. Wow, it really looks like um it really looks like Zarek is just having a tough time trying to pin the neutral. Oh no way! He went for a shield break right there. Rusky is teaching me some new stuff. I thought that was going to work. I was ready for the clip. Min Min there, super strong option. I like that Rusty's not afraid to uh -oh. box it a little bit, even with uh, F-Tilt as well. Uh, I think that's F-Tilt is mad strong. But yeah, here we are. Dixie State down to their Double final nice stock. Star. Rusky looking undefeatable. Look at that. Look look how far he really gets from that air dodge. Like, oh, that's yeah. insane. Like, it's oh, cool. there we go. Able to catch it with the dragon laser. Yeah, and the, and the big thing about that is that a lot of people can go off and interfere with Ness, and it's, like, a little risky because you don't want to get hit by PK Thunder 2, but nothing she throws out is, like, a detriment to her. It's all, like, full, legit disjoints. Yeah. So there's not really a trade if the move just doesn't have a hitbox to hit, you know? Mm -hmm. Or a hurtbox, rather. Okay, multi-jab going to push Ness into an all-stage situation here. Of course, going to go for those smash attacks. All right, definitely going to stay aware in tech. Doesn't want to get... Uh, caught with a PK fire, uh, or God help you, a down tilt. Ness has so many crazy jab lock punishes. Some of the best in the game. Here we go. I think jump might be That's burned, it. and there's another stock. Good stuff to Zarek right there. Knowing All right. When the options are taken, and scouting it out. All right. Well, Zarek, whole team's on your back right now. Right. I mean, if you do this, you Min Min is a pretty good character to three stock somebody. I, I can see it. We've seen Min Min kill at these percentages before. Oh, back throw F smash? Oh, yeah, you get <laughs> one option clipped off stage, be it your jump or your air dodge, and she's just going to keep punching you back out. Over. Mm -hmm. If she can recover herself, though, this is a scary position to be in. Rusky is firing Ooh. on all cylinders right now. Re oh! Read that super hard. I think he knew that uh, Zarek was scared of dealing with a smash attack at ledge and just wanted to get back on stage. He said, let me cover that with an F smash. Here. God. That was really freaking smart from Rusky. Shout outs to you, dude. That might be play of the game. That play, was the, pain play of the day, day I've seen. Because, like, Ness F Smash isn't even fast. No, it's not. <laughs> he had to cover that about three years early. I mean, taking a page out of Curry's book, right? We saw him using a lot mm -hmm. of Smash text to cover rolls earlier, and Rusky said, you know what? Let me try that. God damn. That, oof. Ah. I, really, I really thought it was going to come down to Yo Yo at the ledge, but right. we um, all did. Zarek thought so, too, so that's why he got hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, shout out to Rusky for showing us he is not a one-trick pony by any means. Right. has tons of great mix-ups. Sadly, the Cinderella story for Dixie State, the seventh seed, is going to end at third place, though, which you still can't be mad at. I mean, when you're seeded seventh to make it all the way to third, that is quite the upset you're causing. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, good stuff to them, but it looks like we're going to have our grand finals, and this is going to be a best of three and not a best of one. That's going to be between UT Arlington and UT Austin, and we'll be right back with some more action in just a few moments while we get things set up. So. Yeah, I imagine Rusky's going to shape up a little bit in this matchup, maybe bait out some of these revenges and focus a little bit more on the offstage play, but... Curry just going to bust in immediately with Valeria, 21% off of that single move. Sometimes you get punched on every side of your head at the same time, you know? Like, you think Rusky you know putting up a lot of pressure on that platform there, but uh, Curry just opted to drop shield and revenge, which was smart because it worked out for him there. Ton of damage off of that. 
Yeah, he only got him. He only revenged like what a piece of APK fire, right? It was an up air, I believe. It was an up air, which I mean, even more inconsequential. Right, actually, it's just a uh, leading hit to the multi hit. Yeah, it's one of like the eight sparkles. Mm. He's getting a lot of damage off these side piece right now. Yeah, Rusky is really struggling right now. Good patience. Ooh, that was really smart. Yeah. I like that he waited it out. He definitely threw uh, him off his timing, especially with that uh, PK fire he added onto that. That was really good. Honestly, with how dominant that Rusky has been for the Austin team, I'm a little surprised that they elected to start him out versus Curry again because Curry was the one person that we've seen be able to take it off of Rusky so far. That's actually a really good point. I kind of expected them to switch up the order of their roster a little bit, but you know, maybe they're confident in Rusky to make these adaptations. Oof. Not greatest DI on that back air. Going to take Curry's first stock there. He might have been holding out to just dash away. And got yeah. Out with poor DI. Yeah, I definitely don't think he was ready for that. Oh, man, that was a crucial air dodge. Curry was sniffing and just waiting for something from Rusky. And neutral air definitely would have killed. But uh, him mashing that air dodge immediately was really good. Seeing a ton of retreating PK fires right now. Literally, it's like the only thing he's doing. Uh-oh, okay. Good recovery, good recovery. Oh, but he is going to get down tilted. But he's surviving. He's surviving a situation where there were like two or three different ways he should have for that. Oh, going to come out of the corner aggressively with a fair into a PK fire. He is really, really looking for these PK fires right mm -hmm. now. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay, that, that was a little bit unfortunate right there. Yeah, maybe you got the muscle memory where like sometimes you drop from the ledge and do that uh, PK Thunder 1 just to like press your opponent and like resnap. But he was way too far down. He needed to you know recover traditionally. Yeah, so even the game again, two stocks to two. Just percentage is relatively even right now. I think Rusky's main uh, area that he's hanging out in. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. PK Fire was hitting Curry that entire time, but just the entire move has armor on it, so he did not care. I guess you kind of just break even for that, but it was it was a really good visual. Yeah. Yeah, Rusky's mostly just hanging out either right above or right below a platform and just kind of fighting uh, Curry from these diagonals that Incineroar can't really cover without committing. And that's a really good idea in neutral. But every hit Curry gets just even things up so fast. Oh, that back hit of up smash still going to hit Hit him into an up air, not really gonna good quite kill. Rusky <gasps> looking for a PK flash. I'm very surprised that didn't connect. Me too. I I'm actually really shocked that Curry was able to make it. Okay, good idea. Going for the vertical. Ooh, oh, very strong forward air. Yeah, definitely didn't see that coming. Curry once again has the lead here. Tried to jump into that with a revenge. Didn't quite time it though. I bet you a max rage fully charged Ness yo-yo might have killed. Oh, he was trying to end Rusky's life right there. He still is. And that's going to be a stock for Rusky. <laughs> Nest back throw, always a solid kill option. You see him look him in the eye for a second there, too? Just be like... Same situation there again. PK fire burning on Curry the whole time that he does side B and just does not care. Oh. oh. Able to revenge out of it. This is really scary for Rusky. He's honestly a kill percent, depending on what move Curry likes to burn this revenge on. Yeah, he's going to have to be really careful about these PK fires, because Curry's looking for something to scout out, either A to revenge or B to just, like, call him out for being too close when he does mm -hmm. it. And, of course, Revenge is something that stacks if he were to get another one, right? It'd become even stronger. Oh, yeah. God, look at that dash tag. That's that's such a scary move. And then he is looking for another Revenge, too. It looks like it's finally timed out, and he's just back to D-powered cat, man. Yeah, Rusky was absolutely committed to not approaching in that situation. It was oh, way yeah. too risky. He will just do retreating PK fires all day long. See, he's content to <laughs> run away and PK fire three times in a row. Yeah, he really is. Oh, scary position here. That up air would have killed. Down tilt two frame, not quite. A little late on it. Oh, but neutral air. That's going to send Rusky in a He's really rough spot. He has corner, to air dodge. Or is he going to go for another down tilt? Oh, <gasps> no. Uh oh. Ooh, oh, I think wow. he messed up on the side B input there. He, he did. He sent him out to the side to kill. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite Curry, though. Hopefully he can still seal out this stock. Yeah, Rusky is definitely playing on borrow time. One, from the botch recovery where he bounced off the ledge, but also from the botch punish. He's got to be extremely careful. Hopefully Curry doesn't get too nervous over that, too. That's one of those things that can definitely mess with you. The clock actually going down pretty low, which you've never seen a crew battle. We're actually down to just the last two minutes of the match now. And, ooh. There it is. That's yeah, going to kill. Throw. Oh, God. Four throw? Yeah, multiple kill options with throws for Incineroar at that point. I thought up throw was going to do it. He said, let me do forward throw instead. I've actually never seen his forward throw kill, but... It's just like Mario back throw in reverse, basically. <laughs> oh, really? I'm pretty... Yeah, he just does the spin and sends you forward. Well, what's his back throw? Is it also... Uh, back throw is the one where he, like, suplexes you. Oh! That's right. Okay, no, yeah. His back throw was crazy. Yeah, it's super strong. 
It's like actually we're looking at the two characters on the screen with the strongest back throws in the game. Right now. <laughs> yeah, revenge back throw is nuts. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Not even to mention all the damage it puts. Yeah. Well, another close shake from Rusky and Curry, but it looks like uh, Curry once again just narrowly going to keep the lead for Arlington and. Uh, honestly, the set is starting off almost the exact same way. Yeah, I have to wonder once again, should Austin have maybe kept Rusky in the wings and sent someone else to be on point to deal with the incinerator since we've already seen Curry come out on top in that matchup in the winner's finals? Yeah, and honestly, I understand having a game plan, but like if you have like one specific person that you might need to counterpick, especially a low tier, like just... Just do that. Counterpick like, the man that took five stocks from you the last set. Yes. Right? Maybe send in someone else that's able to deal with him first and then send your very strong nest player in for the rest of them. Yeah, even if you were coming in just second to clean up a stock, that's a better plan than, like, risking the player in your team that has done the most, like, statistically, I mean. I'm not mm. saying caring, but, like, he's statistically done the most against the only person he's lost to in the entire bracket. Exactly. I mean, we saw Curry had some pretty good conditioning coming in there at the end. You know, letting Rusky do those retreating PK fires. At one point, he just waited for it, literally jumped over it right when he did the PK fire and just did a landing forward air to push Ness into that offstage situation. Mm -hmm. Curry's, Curry's ability to condition his opponent is nuts. Honestly, He's really, really smart with that. You have to be a super smart player if you're playing a low tier. You can't just be like me and come in brainless with a low tier and mash your kill options because it's not going to work if you're playing a slow character like Incineroar. I have things to say, but they would make me name names and that would be rude. I need to be But there is a low tier things. that does exactly that. Oh, yes. But <laughs> that I digress. I'm not going to be messy for no reason. But... <laughs> To an exact counterpoint, there's one person that does that. But, um, yeah, either way, shout-outs to Curry. I really did not expect that double jump fair kill he got. I didn't see that coming at all. No, and I'm pretty sure that's why Rusky got hit by it. He must not have seen it coming either. You know? <laughs> he clearly didn't. Because they were, like, near the top bubble in Incineroar. He just got up there. I think his double jump has way more height than people think it does. So, last time we were in this position, I believe Austin sent in their pirate Mithra. Mm -hmm. that that's right? right. They sent I'm in wondering... uh, if that's who we're going to see come out again, or if they're going to take what I'm saying to heart and maybe switch up the roster. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Didn't Austin send in the Steve? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it Incineroar Steve? Oh, that's right. The Pyramithra came in uh, after the Steve died. Okay. But yeah, they sent in the Steve, and the Steve... Uh, did not go too hot. Did not go too well. Lost two socks. Um, and Curry showed us that he's really good at the Incineroar Steve matchup. Yes. What a sentence. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it looks like they're definitely really thinking it over, or if they are, or if they aren't, they're just, you know, taking the time. But, um, actually, I forgot. We're actually going to cut to, like, a one, maybe two-minute break while we wait on the other player. So, we're actually just going to cut away for a moment. I think that is not minute. I think that was between the games when it was best of three. I thought that was between. I think that was just for between the games. Or oh, never mind. I misheard. My bad. Just never mind. mistaken. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, anyway, yeah, we're still kind of waiting. But um, I would assume that they would not send the Steve back in. Granted, they've been really, really ironclad on their game plan of, like, who's going to go win. But I would hope they wouldn't send the Steve back in after he lost those two if Rusky also came in and lost those three. Yeah, I mean, one of the most important aspects of Cruz is counterpicking the person you're up against. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen clearly that... Curry is very versed in the Steve matchup, so I hope they take that into consideration right now. Perhaps that's why they're taking so long to send in their next player. They're pondering, okay, what the heck can we do to deal with this godlike Incineroar right now? Right. And I don't know. I, I think this Incineroar would be upsetting a lot of people. Because getting consistently getting top eight at uh, the Freaks Weekly, like that is that's a hard tournament. Like A lot of like really talented, occasionally even PGR-level players like pop up in that tournament. So, Curry's been in the grind. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see who they end up with here. And remind me, did Austin have a bigger roster than three, or are they only check. dealing with three players right now? Let me check, actually. So, do, 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 do. Austin. Oh my god, can you please scroll? I can't aim. You know what? Ask me another question. <laughs> How's your day? It's fine. Okay. Um, so Austin, uh, it looks like they have four. 
forward players. Yeah, two biggest player we haven't seen yet, and that is uh, a Steve Pacman. Um, I think it's just that they have. Is Studs Studs also a Steve, right? Oh, they're sending an LSOE the Rob. They're sending the Robin. Okay, good idea. Definitely a good idea. Have we seen Curry fight LSOE yet? No, and that's why I expected them to send against him this entire time to put on point. I believe we were speculating. Putting him on point would be yeah, that would have been perfect because like they've only started with Curry. There's no evidence that they shouldn't start with Curry, like Rusky, or I mean the other team. Mm-hmm. Like they have only started with Curry. Uh, Curry beat you know the player that's taking the most stocks for your team. You know what you got to counter. So yeah. yeah, so we are seeing LSOE versus Curry. Um, we saw LSOE come in and navigate some very solid defensive gameplay last time he was playing. Mm-hmm. So. You're going to need to do that again against the center over here. Pick and choose your moments with the projectiles very well because if you just sit Gyro out on the ground, Curry's very content to just walk up and revenge that. You know, you're going to have to definitely pick your moments with your projectiles here. Will LSOE shoot out the big laser or will he cheat? Does he? No. Nope, Looks he's like keeping he's big laser. Cheat. But you know what? Curry's fine with that. Right. Let, it, let it get revenge. Back to dash tag going to be a true combo there at zero and set up an hostage situation. Oh, the down tilt tripping. Yeah, that's really Ooh. important. Uh-oh. Yep. Well, LSOE is looking to kill him at zero here. If nothing else, LSOE did hold that laser long enough where it would have been big. So, you know, mm-hmm. NBD. Yeah, carefully kind of spacing around Rob's aerials, which is uh, way easier said than done. It looked like that revenge trigger just <gasps> at the last second on it. I thought it was going to be over with. Oh, and there it is. See exactly what I'm talking about. You oh, can call man. out your projectiles with revenge super easily. It's going to be very powered up from yeah, and Curry is very unafraid to chase you at the top of at the top of the Ooh, sky. Oh, very nice back here. Not gonna kill though. Surprising. Incineroar is a big boy. Wow, Rusky really threading the needle to find that recovery. Um, one just to make it back from that far in the blast zone. And oh, oh. Curry gonna die to that up smash there. Very good out of shield option for Rob. Scoops from both sides. We see it all the time. LSOE was a, honestly last time we saw him low key fishing for that option a lot, and mm-hmm. this time it worked out for. Yeah, um, and Curry was landing on top of him a lot, so it was a little bit overdue. But yeah, his positioning with back air was really smart. Like, he would very consistently have back air ready on Curry's shield, but also a gyro on the ground just to catch Curry for trying to react to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gyro plus back air is a very rough combination to deal with. It's like, where do you go? You jump away, you're getting back aired. You roll in or try to drop shield, you're getting gyroed. Yeah. Gyro's going to combo you into the back air, so it's a really tough spot for sure. Exactly. I was going to say, like, if the gyro touches you first, it's just a setup at that Mm -hmm. point. So, yeah. A lot of pressure. Very hard situation to deal with. A lot of people would have died the same way there. Yeah. I mean, well played by Curry. He just wasn't able to, like, find an answer really, really seal that stock out. He had some pretty good damage. He was pressuring him a lot uh, with those uh, double jump up airs he was looking for. While um, while LSOE was like kind of stalling and just like floating around with those right. back airs, but and yeah. now I mean we're in a much closer set than we saw in winners finals now because Curry wasn't able to come in and take an additional two stocks from the second player on Austin's team. Right, we do have a full on six and six uh, between Arlington and Austin. Um, and if you're just tuning in, uh, Arlington uh, was on the winner side, and so if Austin is able to beat them, they are going to do a reset for another best of one. Uh, just in case, but right now as it stands, totally even game. Yeah, six stocks to six, two players remaining on both sides. We know LSOE is coming in representing Austin. I'm curious to see what Arlington's answer to that will be, though. Let's look. Let's look at what Arlington... Hmm. Yeah, they can throw in Army Ollie again. That player was really solid. Uh, Davey, the Pokemon trainer slash Pithra, which, man, does that cover... Most matchups? Oh, definitely. That's a crazy dual main, actually. I feel like that actually would cover most matchups of the game. I think I'll probably send an army ollie, though. Just to, Well, honestly, I'm just curious, so I just kind of hope they send an army ollie, because I just want to see. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think that Rob beats Alamore, but Rob also beats Pokemon Trainer, so I guess the other option is Pithra. That's a definitely a losing matchup for Rob, so that might be their best bet. Uh Remains to be seen. Who knows? Who knows? It's definitely, and again, this is a really tough, you know, this is grand final. This is a mm. really tough decision to make. Yeah. A lot on the line here. I mean, this is for all the marbles, right? Mm-hmm. So um, definitely don't want to 
misclick your counter pick here because one mistake can really cost you the whole event. Yeah, and I mean, really, just just one SD, even not even like a, mm -hmm. not even necessarily just like throwing in like a bad match. Yeah, like, what stocks SD? are so crucial when it comes to crew battles. You know, you don't get a game two to come in and beat them again and hope for game three. It is literally each individual stock is so important. All and right, like I said, Pyre Mithra is who's going to come in. Yeah, I think with the matchups we had on hand, that's definitely the one that makes the most sense. Totally get it. And no stocks are going to need to be SD'd here to start, right? Just going to jump straight into the match. That's right. Totally even six and six. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Okay, and we did already see in losers finals, though, even though this is a, like I said, quote unquote bad matchup for Rob, LSOE was able to navigate it very well and have one stock and take three from the Pyre Mithra on DC State. So. <laughs> That's true. Now we saw Davey kind of oversitting just a little bit. Town and City, a really, really scary stage to fight Rob on. I mean, of course the shenanigans are going to work anywhere, but they're going to work especially well on a stage where the side blast was this close. Davey already trying to take his stock with down air off stage there. Yeah, good patience. He was waiting for him to float with that back air. Oh! <laughs> Another super strong read there. He just knew the tech chase was coming to the right. God, he's so good about that. You know, it's like we know that you know up air or up smash are like the two main things that we're afraid of. So if you just wait and react with like get an a, even harder smash, punish, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Good tomahawk right there into the up tilt. I'm guessing. Okay, gonna get a really good mash from Davy though. Maybe the fastest mash I've ever seen in my life. Actually, <laughs> that might have been the fastest mash I've yeah. ever seen. The problem with Rob down throw is if you go for the pummel, that gives them more time to start mashing. So a lot of the time, it's better to just immediate down throw without even doing any mm -hmm. pummels, so they don't have as much time to react. In there. Looking oh, for good a switch jump there. was LSOE, but Davy just going to switch instead to avoid that situation entirely. I like that from Davy coming back to the ledge with the aggressive Pyra side B just to cut off all of like Rob's oh. ledge trap game. Oh. oh, really, really good defensive gyro being tossed up. Going to stage spike Davy there and honestly steal a stock for him. Yeah, that was super smart. Nobody would have been ready to react to that, let alone tech. But LSOE in a really ugly spot here. Pyrus is such a strong ledge trapper, just going to reset that situation here. Oh god, here he comes. I know he can poke, poke and like stick his arms up with up air to like uh, catch a lot of people trying to punish him at the ledge, but I would not play that game with a pirate. No, here. speaking of sticking his arms up, he does that normally just when up being two, so he can make it really easy to catch a two frame on Rob. Oh, oh! The footstool! Fantastic setup there by Davey. God. Yeah, Davey's showing us he has a lot of pirate Mithra sauce. Yeah, a lot of players do go for that side B into the footstool and then don't really get anything off of it, but that was a very clean conversion. And then he's still piling on the damage right now, 40% climbing. Honestly, he's making it look easy because just like that F smash covers so much of the stage. And the first one we saw him land, not in this game, like the person was pretty much in his body and is still connected. So like you're really not even playing like a full 50-50 guess. Like you just cover a lot of space. And honestly, I think that LSOE is missing a couple opportunities here to go for jab locks because he's putting them in a tech chase situation and people are missing techs and he's just electing to pick up gyro rather than just jab lock them. Mm. So I'm wondering if maybe he could adjust that to go for a little bit more free damage when it's given to him, but right now he's just trying to land. Yeah, desperately trying to land right now. Mm, that lingering hitbox on the back here going to send Davey out, but resetting neutral here. Is this going to be an up tilt up air? Oh, just go straight for the up air. Yeah, he's aware of how fast the Davey's mashing, so good on him, but he was still just a little bit late with the push. Mm. Not quite going to kill. Town and City, very big stealing, but going to clean up anyway. Yeah, very sneaky up air. I mean, the up air already has like a lot of knockback, but because Rob can just chase you up into the top blast zone. Oh, like but that's it. Late. Down air, up air, classic. Yeah, and Rob's big body actually being a detriment uh, in that situation. I think that was like the very tip of that up air. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of like medium or smaller size characters would have actually been okay, but Rob was just big enough to make sure that connected. As they say, Rob is big. Yeah. Rob is big. Rob is big. Well, this is looking really good for Arlington. Does he have two stocks still? Or was that one? I think it was a one stock situation because okay. he was at one stock zero percent and i was thinking that he's a kill percent honestly but it didn't come out to fruition because he was able to get that clean down here to up air on lsoe so let's see so lsoe and rusty nerd definitely have been like 
what feels like to us the heart of Austin because like we saw Rusky take nine, we've seen LSOE take you know anywhere from five or six mm-hmm. in that range. Those two have definitely been doing the most damage. Um, but now it comes down to their you know they're already down. Um, and they're facing up against Davey, a really, really intelligent Pyromancer player. Mm-hmm. Like, not only is the character super good, of course, but, like, they're really good at their conditioning. They're really good at getting these reads. They're getting uh, surprise force matches. They're getting these, like, side Bs out of, like, these footstools out of side B. Like, yeah. they have, they really understand their character well. Um, but even on top of that, they still have Army Ollie waiting in the wings. And to me, what looks like the two strongest players on Austin are already out. So I don't know where they're gonna go from here i don't know what characters are gonna pick it's either. definitely dire straits but i mean you don't pick your third person to anchor very lightly you know and true you know that they're gonna be your last chance for your team to get the dub so i imagine that it's still gonna be a very strong player coming in next it just remains to be seen who that will be you think they'll send in Yoshi this time hmm, i definitely don't like that matchup wasn't it a sora player they sent in last oh no time? right they were playing sora that is right yeah it was sora i'm guessing That'll be who it is again. Yeah. So, was that the same order of their roster as last time? I think they really just committed to that exact same hmm. order. That's interesting. I definitely think it's more in your best interest to mix it up actively depending on who you're facing. You know, Honestly, Rusky at this point could have come in if they had sent LSOE first or their third player first, You know, and he could mm-hmm. be the one cleaning it up now. But it remains to be seen still. I mean, we did see Rusky as the anchor before because mm-hmm. uh, he cleaned up against Dixie State. But, I don't know. But, yeah, so it looks like we are, I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting Sora versus Pyramithra, which, I mean, could go either way. It looks like Davey's really committed to, like, these huge uh, Pyro Smash attacks, and... Okay, well, they're telling me Studs Yoshi, but I believe last time it was Studs Sora. Sora, So that's probably what it'll be again, unless he does opt to play Yoshi into this atrocious matchup this time. (laughs) But then, if he does win with Yoshi, it would be Yoshi Mm Olimar. And that's not... That might be okay, I think that Sora probably does pretty well against Alomar, too, if I had to guess, with how active his moves are at batting away the Pikmin. But do we know if Studs or Sora is at the same level as Yoshi? Because I don't think I've seen it as Yoshi yet. Mm, this is true. Well, I haven't seen it yet because, one, he hasn't had to play yet, except for tonight. Um, but right. before that, um, I mean, when I was looking at results, I'm pretty sure I was mostly seeing Yoshi and Sora, of course, being the newest character, even to logistically would probably not be as prepared as Yoshi, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, either way, I mean, it all comes down to this, right? Whoever whoever he decides to play, it's the whole team is on your back right now because there's no bracket reset for you unless you're able to clutch this. You know, you don't Mm -hmm. get a second shot without you getting the dub right here. But yeah, but hopefully we have them joining the arena in just a moment. Um, Yeah, it's kind of hard to call this. I, I would assume... I mean, Arlington's just in a really good spot. He's going to have to pop. He has to not lose a stock. At all. Yeah, it's only four stocks to three, which doesn't sound that bad. But like you're saying, if um, Davey is able to take one stock even before he goes, then you're in a really bad spot. Yeah, and all a lot of the stocks that Davey have taken have been really obscure, like weird ones. Like mm-hmm. down, down air to up air was like the only... Pyra Mithra stock we saw that was like, oh yeah, that's that's the one that makes sense. Right. He's foregoing combos that are true and lots of damage in favor of big reads that are gonna kill. Which mm-hmm. if you know you've got the read, then there's no reason not to go for it. Yeah, yeah. And that's gonna put even more pressure on studs too. Like studs has to studs has to be like, all right, am I DI for like the main combos or is he gonna look for like a huge read? Like he doesn't even really know. Yeah, just adding a lot more mix-ups into your game is always going to be beneficial to keep your opponent on their toes. I feel like I've seen Davey pop off way more with Pyre than Mithra. Uh, yeah, but I also, it's not like you're going to take crazy big kills with Pyre or with Mithra. Out. True. You have to switch to Pyre to get those explosive stocks. Right. I think the only thing Mithra is really going to kill you with is probably like a down smash read, but even that, you, you already know what to do. I want to see that Pikachu in Stud's avatar come out. I need to see him play some rap. <laughs> Hey, Rat will clean up a lot of matchups, actually. Yes. It cleans up this one. It's probably... What is Pikachu Omar? I don't like it. It's probably not the worst. It's probably I, just annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. I think Olimar does win, though. Or even. UTA saying, please enter the ring. Please enter the ring. Go easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Go easy on me. 
So it's probably selecting his character right now, flipping a coin and Sora. It is going to be decided. Sora. All right, we're getting Sora Pyramithra once more, and this is this is everything for Austin. It all hangs on his back right now. Sora is the protagonist, right? That's true. He is he is the main character. He's an expensive DLC character too. And those are some beautiful taunts. Honestly, they snapped on Sora's taunts a little bit. They really did. I wish those did things, but then I would be No, 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 no you I don't. don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. I take it. And back. ready, set, go. I don't want a hero. Okay. So, uh <laughs> now Sora doesn't necessarily have to worry about being outranged super bad against no. Mithra. I think their range is pretty similar. Yeah, Stud's main game plan here is gonna be to push Davy off stage as much as he physically can. Yes. You don't even want to give him the time to live to normal kill percent. You just want to get a Gimp and Edge Guard in this as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And he's choosing not to really interact right now. And oh, that foresight off smash is going to hurt. I had to be careful. He went for that dare uh, to land back to the ground. Thought he was comfortable. But Mithra's ground speed is insane. Even yes. if she is full screen, she can, she has the speed to come over and punish stuff like that. Jumping over the Thundaga there. Oh, Ooh. he's trying to end Davy's life. And then actually went into free fall. You don't really see Sora in free fall that often. Uh, a lot of damage being piled on here, though. It looks like Davy might end up taking at least a stock before he gets the road. Oh, this could be rough. I think he has. A oh, oh, wow! Just barely gonna survive that. Is he gonna survive this kill, one though. too? No. Nope. That kills. Davy successfully took that stock. He's only at eighty percent. It's not too bad. You know, center stage is on lock. He's not really being forced to ledge. Uh, he's kind of out maneuvering uh, stuff yeah. too. So now we're at four stocks to two here. Not looking good for Austin. Like you said, Davy really is not in a position where he's about to die anytime soon unless it's to a huge read. Just going to sit there and wait out that Thundaga. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not even going to take the chance to like, get tagged by that. Because Thundaga, as hard as it is to connect, it does have a ton of knockback. It, oh, yeah. it will surprise you. It, when the move actually works and is functional, it is functional. It's very scary. Ooh, I'm a little surprised he went for that side B there, but it worked out. Got a little bit of damage. Maybe he got confused with his colors and thought he was Pyro. Mm. Maybe he mixed himself. I feel like Studs had that landing directional air dodge scouted out with the pivot grab, but it was just slightly misspaced. Ooh. Um, I think he that Davy could have gotten quite a big punish off that if he were ready for it. I'm actually really surprised. Studs is playing really cautious, and of course I get it, but Pyra whiffed that side B hard, and Studs oh, just did not move. Really good pivot grab from Davy there. He is going for these down airs at the edge. Oh, yeah. And Davy is just really taking advantage of his superior ground speed, even as Pyra. To just make sure that... Wait, where did that down air go? He must have really tucked his body in. I'm just uh, very impressed by Davy's movement right now. No. Whoa! That was the sneakiest stock I've ever seen from Studs. Really smart to know that Thundog was just going to go through the entire stage like that and pop him off the top. That was super smart. I think the last time I saw something like that I know was, exactly uh, what you're talking about, Quid. Yep, uh, you already know what I was about to bring up. Yes. Uh, we saw Quid pull something off like that at Let's, uh, make, let's make Big, big moves. moves with uh, Ivysaur. Venusaur. Jesus Christ. <laughs> with Ivysaur. Um, I was just thinking about that earlier today, too. I don't know why, but any move like that that can just go through the stage to get a stock is a cheater move. <laughs> it's a cheater move. <laughs> yeah. I know Dave was just like, all right, you got me. Yeah, I think I it's funny that Davey, after getting mostly surprise kills, even the Side B was kind of edging towards sort of a surprise niche kill uh, to die to that thunder from under the stage. He's probably just like, you know what, I'm over I mean, it's very smart of studs. If you don't want to lose a stock, go down there where Pyramithra can't even dream of being. You know? How are they going to hit you from below the entire stage? Right. God, that was super smart. Yeah, definitely smart way to preserve his stock right there because the longer you're messing around the neutral on stage, the more likely you are to get smacked by a random fire aerial and mm -hmm, just die. Mm -hmm. So now probably Army Ali going to come yeah, in? Yeah, it's going to be Army Ali. I'm pretty sure it's going to come in. And we're going to see Sora Olimar once again. Another matchup <laughs> that like, most people haven't really seen. Right. I know that um, the interesting thing will be Sora's counter also reflects projectiles that come at it. So I don't really know how that will interact with the Pikmin being. Well, I think it like sends them behind him. Yeah, exactly. So I think if he throws one at it and he does that, it just, like, just like throws it off stage, I'm guessing. It'll definitely be an interesting interaction to see either way. Oh. Hmm. It's gonna, I feel like a lot of what we're going to see is just, oh, 
now I know how that works. Like I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. Plus just my theory crafting. I mean, Sora's nair is like a hitbox around his entire body. Pretty much, you know, I mean, you'll get hit with nair on Sora's butt somehow, even though it's the keyblade hitting you. So Man. I imagine that's going to be a very good option to get the Pikmin off of him. But at the same time, Sora's frame data is not that great. You know, if he's in the air jumping around there and get these Pikmin off of him, then army ally is just going to be content to smack him up while he's in the air hitting nothing. You know? Yeah. I will say that, I mean, he will have the range advantage. Like, if Ar Army Ollie is trying to run in with, like, a forward air and Sora pressed anything up there, it, the situation should lend itself to Sora. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think he can probably pressure Olimar's shield pretty decently. He likes to hit you from the top of your shield, and as we know, famously, Olimar's shield doesn't fully cover his head in the way that it's right. supposed to. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some, like, some interesting interactions where he's getting healed, he hit even though his shield is up. But then on the other hand, you know, Sora likes to go for those nair loops a lot, and those really only work super well on the bigger characters, and Olimar is going to be a very small frame, so those are going to be hard to connect, on top of the fact that Olimar has whistle armor to get through a lot of situations That's like true, that. yeah, whistle armor. You know, let's say that Studs is trying to kill him with an up off the top, he may even be able to whistle through something like that and get a punish of his own. But, I mean, hey, that's that's all the theory craft we can do. Right. <laughs> we won't really know until he hops in here. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Austin is going to start spamming the "Please enter the ring." That's what works. You have to. You have to press the "Please enter the ring" button, and they'll do yeah. it. Studs did say, "Go easy on me." <laughs> he did. Omar Sora. That's going to be really interesting. And here it is. Now, you know, so this is it. You know, two stocks to three. This decides it all. If Arlington is able to take this, and they win the entire tournament. If Austin makes a crazy comeback and takes three stocks with their two, then we do get a full uh, reset here. But who knows how it's going to go down. Mm, doing some fancy movement to SD here. I like that. <laughs> and All right, three, three two, two. Oh, get okay. I think they just both do a mutual taunt and just go yeah. for it. Now, I'm also curious to know which Pikmin are going to be the best against the worst kid. Purple's probably going to... I mean, Purple's consistently good against everybody, but I can see that being the main one that like throws studs off his game, especially if you get hit with that at like short hop range. Like yeah. that covers a lot of Sora's approaches. And interestingly enough, it looks like Thundago brought a lot of Pikmin ghosts out when it happened. I think that that might just be a very strong option to deal with Pikmin. Well, as we were saying earlier with the purples, uh, studs is committed to double purple right now. One of them is dead though. Uh, it looked like his strategy is going to try to focus purple as much as he can though, for sure. <laughs> Double purple and a red is a very scary lineup when you're at kill percent. Not so much for racking up damage, though. But I do know if double purple's online and you get a down smash on somebody's shield, oh, that thing man. is breaking. It's super broken, yeah. Oh, did not quite read the drift on Army Alley's directional air dodge there. Committed a little bit too hard with the F smash. Yeah, it's really the purple that's going to be doing all the damage. It looks like the purple Pikmin is able to actually go through the fireballs and even the Thundaga, so... That's the one that's throwing off his projectile neutral. Despite that, though, Studs, Studs, excuse me, Studs has been getting a ton of damage and gets the first stock, yeah. and now stocks are totally even. Blizz into up B is so hard to deal with because it's like, you know, if you're still in the icicle, you don't take knockback, but the up B lasts so long that you're bound to pop out before the end of it. You right, and you're like, do I want to try to mash early? Do I want to not? Like, what do I do? Oof. Ooh. And there we see what I was talking about before. Studs trying to use that Nair to get the white Pikmin off of him, but it just lasts so long that you Ali was just able to run in underneath and get a very strong up smash to take that stock. I like that Army Ali was in a spot where he could have got a punish, but the Pikmin looked like they were busy, so he just kind of backed off. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to risk it. We haven't really commented on this yet, but I think FD is going to be a stage that benefits Army Ali. For sure. Studs here. Nowhere to run from the Pikmin, you know? I like that Army Ali, even against a character that can live off stage as long as Sora, is still not afraid to run off there and try to get something done. We saw it earlier when he uh, he spiked Poog's DDD yesterday. Yeah. Who is a character you just never see get spiked. And the damage is slowly racking up on studs. Army Ollie's really content to hang back and just let the tick damage keep piling up. And like I said, it is piling up here. Studs getting pretty close to kill percent. But Sora not exactly a heavy boy. Yeah, the crew battle format is definitely working out in Army's favor because... A lot of characters, like, all right, you might be down a stock, but if the other character has to come scrap with you, it might not matter as much if you get two or three good reads. But because Olimar, who came into this with a stock lead, is able to just get so much free damage from those side Bs, now it's looking kind of disastrous. It was yeah. looking really close before, but 
just him playing this slow neutral, even if he lost his stock right now, is just really, really good and for the team. Ali's got a really good kill lineup right now. Purple for smash attacks. Red is a very strong option as well. Ooh. He'll probably try to get a blue online here soon for some kill throw action. Oh, oh gosh, wow. So the much shield damage. damage. That and does there it. it is. Blue kill throw, just like I said. All right. So it looks like Arlington is going to be our winner tonight after all. They were the one seed. They were acting like the one seed. Oh, wait, was Austin the one seed? Austin no, Arlington was the one seed. Did Arlington. not drop a set the whole event. It's true. They didn't. They did not drop one set. Um, again, well fought battle from Austin, um, which has. To, I, I'm kind of curious to know if UT Austin, UT Arlington have like a school rivalry. Right. The battle of the UTs, you know, it's like a crosstown shootout, I guess. Yeah, it might be for, for all we know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for our smash battles tonight, you guys. Arlington is going to take it. And we're going to go ahead and shut this arena down. Um, yeah. So, uh, with all that said, congratulations to Arlington for taking first place. Austin's going to finish at second. And Dixie State going to make a crazy run going to losers round one and fighting all the way back to third place as the seventh seed. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to cut to Polly in just a moment. But before we go, of course, as always, I have been at PBLK. You can follow me on Twitter there. If you like anime, like the anime shirt I'm wearing right now, which you can't see, I'm not going to get up. Uh, <laughs> it is a Mob Psycho shirt. Uh, if you like anime at all, I also have a really great anime podcast called Shonen Chumps. We're available on all streaming platforms. It's a lot of uh, really fun talks about anime and nerd in general, a lot of black and queer issues as well get thrown into the mix. So feel free to follow that uh, on Twitter, S H O U N E N Chumps. Um, going to pass to you. And yeah, I mean, big congratulations to Arlington. It's been super impressive seeing their run this whole event. Been looking very dominant. So big congratulations to them. I've been at Cadence Pico on Twitter. And if you feel like coming to Ohio for a big regional towards the end of March, we are hosting Southern Ohio Smash's seventh iteration on March 26th. And even if you can't make it all the way up here for that great event, you can tune in on Twitch at Dragon Squad Esports or push block gaming to see the crazy matches that are going to take place that day. Really looking forward to that, but this has been a lot of fun, very enjoyable matches all weekend. And we'll go ahead and throw it to Polly for the outro. Thanks Polly. Great. Thank you so much, Cadence and Sai. Some amazing uh, commentary there on the uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate portion of the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. This was the Southwest Invitational, and we saw just so so much amazing action here on Esports U2 between Valorant and now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's going to be UT Arlington that secure their spot. They do not drop a set an entire way through the bracket. They are the number one seed uh, by far crushing it and, and an amazing amazing set there to close out um that final set here of the day they will join us at our live event in may which will be our grand final event but that's going to do it here from everybody at the collegiate sports management group csmg and everyone in conjunction with esports you we are gonna enjoy this final day here and close it on out we'll be back again we still have some more regions for the collegiate esports commissioners cup don't go anywhere if you have not done so yet make sure to hit that follow button on our twitter as well as our two twitch channels my name is paulie hype it has been a pleasure to be your host for the weekend thank you so much to all our great and talented casters and all the players and schools competing in this weekend's cecc southwest invitational so without further ado i hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend what little time is left of it and we'll see you next time right here at the collegiate collegiate esports commissioner's cup